fuck it, I'm saying it. Saying it. Saying it. Everybody. I hope everyone's having a fantastic evening, fantastic afternoon, fantastic pre-noon, no matter where you are in the world of Masson Park and this is Austin Over Podcast coming to you live from another sunny banger of a day uh, in California, Los Angeles. Folks, we're live and alive, and I hope all the boys, girls, and MBs are having a fantastic one because today is 70 degrees and sunny here in Los Angeles, California. I'm live and alive, and I hope all the boys, girls, and MBs are having a fantastic one. I certainly am, and I'm gonna get to it in a, in a moment. I'm gonna get to it in a moment. I'm gonna get to why I'm having a fantastic time in a moment. But we're back, baby. We're back. We're live. We're alive. And I hope everyone's having a fan freaking tastic one. Now, why is this a uniquely awesome day? Is it because the weather is nice here in California? Is it finally no longer raining? Is that why I'm in a good mood? Is it because I hit 243 pounds and also simultaneously hit a, not PR necessarily, but at least like a good goal that I did not think I would achieve on my squats? Is that the reason? No, that's not the reason. Well, those are good reasons. The major reason as to why it's a beautiful day is because... Mufasa, hmm? you know we finally here, right? That's right. It's fucking Friday, it's baby. Friday, it's Saturday, Sunday, what? Ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's Freaky life, Friday. Sunday, it's Fuck a Fan's it's Mom life, Friday. It's Mufasa Friday. It's the freaking weekend, baby. Woo! It's the freaking weekend. It's the freaky weekend. That's right. This is the time where you can finally feel like a like a human being, like a man. Semblance of autonomy in your life. A moment of solace. A moment of Saul is brought to you by our forefathers who fought long and hard to ensure that we have frickin' weekends to begin with. The five-day work week. Now, of course, this is, unless you're, uh, you know, that was specific to the wage cucks that only wage slave away in white-collar jobs for the most part. If you're in the service sector, then you're cooked. Every day is a bit of a, every day is a bit like a weekend for you. If you, if you were... If you were to uh, think about it like that. Chat, did he react to Echoes yet? I have not reacted to Echoes yet, but I did react to it live. Well, I mean, I wasn't live, but I did see it on as a as a as a Lesler. I saw it on the 
I saw it on the Leslie Foosley broadcast. Uh, Twitch got banned in Turkey. I know I'm going to talk about the alt yazı yok mu? Ulan ne alt yazısı amına koyayım? Türkiye'de yok Twitch zaten. Bana gelip burada alt yazı mı alt yazı diyorsun abi. Hiç yok artık. Artık hiç yok alt yazı. Anyway, um, we're going to be talking about a lot. The Daily Wire's podcast, Morning Wire, used a clip of you in their show today, Lamau. You watched the Daily Wire's morning podcast? I didn't even know they had a morning podcast. And I literally, it is my job to pay attention to these things. And I didn't even know that. Meanwhile, you're out there signing in every day. That's wild. I mean, respect. Artık seni VPN ile izliyoruz, aga. Yeah, I mean, for the Turks, actually, uh, a site-wide ban is completely irrelevant because like any Turk any Turkish man especially that has ever wanted to masturbate knows how to use a VPN so let's be let's be for real here for a second it's like Türkler en azından her Türk erkeği abazadır her abazı Türk erkeği VPN kullanmayı bilir yoksa 31 çekemezsin yani bu kadar basit So every Turkish man knows how to use a VPN anyway, so it won't even touch him. He won't even shake him. Twitch'in LeBron James'i biziz aga. Kardeş biliyorum abi. Eskiden anlattım bunu. Amerikalılara anlattım daha önce. 31 çekmek için. O kadar abasaydım ki. O kadar abasaydım ki. Porno yokken zamanında. Kendim. Kendim çizdiğim şeyleri 31 çekerdim yani. Bu kadar. Yani o kadar, o kadar düştük. Ama Türkler unutmayın. Ben 12 yaşındayken, 13 yaşındayken, 14 yaşındayken kendi kendi çizdiğim şeylere 31 çeken adam 20'lerinde pornocularla bayağı bildiğin yani kız arkadaşım vardı. A hepsi arkadaşım. Eğer ben bunu yapabiliyorsam siz de yapabilirsiniz diyorum. İnanın kendinize. Yurtta sul, dünyada sul. <gülüyor> Alakası yok aslında bu dediğimle ama neyse. <gülüyor> Veriyorum gazı. Veriyorum. Kendine inanan Türk'ü kimse durduramaz. Suh değil sul. Doğru sul dedim lan. Suh demedim. Sul dedim. 32 31 ile bağdaştırmasaydım be abi. Yurtta gun, cihanda gun. <gülüyor> anyway. All right, we're going to talk about all this stuff. This is why people will stay racist. Is India Turkish? This is why people will stay racist. That's why. <laughs> um Okay, okay, okay, okay. Um this is part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal news and honestly a lot of good stuff is going on in my life in the world of Hasan Hasan Abi Piker, so I'm going to get into it. So, first and foremost, last night I ended the broadcast after another mini stream, a baby stream, a stream that only lasted like nine hours, which, you know, for all intents and purposes, it's like if you're doing a nine hour stream, you might as well be quiet quitting is if you're if that's your take, then you're right. You know what I mean? Because I am. I'm basically quiet quitting. I've only done like 11 hours twice this week. And I did a baby half day for nine hours yesterday, which is lame. I know. Rookie numbers. Sorry. Um, but regardless, uh, nine hours, then 11 hours. Yeah. Some 11 hours, some nine hours, some nine, 11 hours. Nine, 11 hours every day, though. You aren't unionized. Get to work. I know. So... As I was saying, what was I saying? Oh yeah, uh, I did a nine hour stream. Uh, Valkyrie and Fusli did a collaborative project alongside 100 Thieves and, and made a song. I, I watched the the review or, or like the release of the song last night. After that, I played a little bit of Yakuza and then I was bubble maxing. I was tub maxing, bubble maxing, you know, being a tub max, bubble maxing legend. Here, we'll watch it in a second. I, I low-key, or not even low-key, high-key, am very proud of them. 
Okay, I think that they did a phenomenal job. I think that they are, you know, it's like shocking how good they both were. And especially shocking for Ray because like she doesn't sing. This was not like, as far as I understand, not exactly like a, like a thing that she was taking seriously. Do you really need two pieces of nicotine gum and the Zins for a bath? It just depends on how long I want to stay in there, chatter. You never know. The hell snacks next to the Zins were iconic. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a second. Hold on. So anyway, I watched that. Uh, I was I was uh, overcome with emotion. Uh, I was very proud. Very proud to know so many cool people. And then and then afterwards, I was tub maxing. There it is. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this was me tub maxing. Okay, bubble maxing. I'm a tub maxing, bubble maxing legend, okay? I uh, I have run out of quitting, quitting what? No, I'm joking, man. It's a joke. Um, I ran out of my Lush because I had a bunch of like, every like holiday season, people give me like Lush bath bombs for some reason. I don't know why, but it's like one of the only types of gifts that i get that i end up actually using during the holiday season like shit that i get but i've run out officially so i did something so <laughs> i did something so hurt okay are you ready for this i did something so goddamn hurt um there's like a container that this lush shit comes in right i took the crumbs that were in the bottom and i dumped all of it in Which is like, no one that has, there are certain things that I do that like, I have never, uh, I've never grown past, let's say. Like earlier today, I'm lifting and my trainer's like, bro, your pocket has a hole in it. Like, it's time to get a new, it's time to get new pants. I was like, no, I love these pants. He's like, what do you, what do you mean? I'm like, no, I love these pants. I'm going to wear these pants when I'm lifting. And he's like, you're, you're too rich to just have like a hole in the pocket of your, of your sweatpants. And I was like, nope. He's just like, I was like, I don't have time. Like, I don't want to buy a new one. And he's like, I don't understand. Like, what do you mean? You could just ask Gymshark to send you new pants. If you wanted to, they would send it to you for free. You don't even have to pay for it. I'm like, no, nah. <laughs> I don't have any time to like hit him up. And he was like, you could hire someone to ask Jim shark to do that for you. You could ask someone to ask Jim shark on your behalf and they would do it. I was like, nah. And it's, I think because like you guys will see this. Um, it's not like I don't need to be frugal at all, but I think it's just like how I, grew up I guess or how I lived in my early adolescence that just stuck with me things like putting water in the bottom of uh your your soap like because you got to get it all out I I feel like those are the types of things that I do still and the lush thing is one of those uh, versions of that as well where like I have I was like oh well there's still some crumbs of fucking like multiple different lush bombs in the bottom of this is going to go to waste. You got to stretch it out is what I'm saying. And I still do that. I still do that. And you, you, you know, it's, it's, it's a good quality to have in my opinion. You got to stretch it out, bro. Sounded like my Indian mom. I hope your Indian mom instilled that upon you because I'm saying that it's a good value. It's a good quality to have. Okay. It's so funny because like this didn't come from my parents though. I don't think because my parents were, I mean, I, I grew up pretty affluent as I've talked about before. This was literally broke tendencies that I developed when I lived on my own and was broke because I don't think this is something that I got from my family at all. And the clothing thing is just comfort. The more holes that a t-shirt has for me, the more I've like worn it and therefore uh, the, the comfortable, the more comfortable it is. Same with socks and same with underwear. Like all my underwear have fucking holes in them. 
what? I don't have enough fucking money. I could just like buy it on Amazon. But regardless, it's just like when it has a hole in the underwear, that means I've been I've been wearing it so much that it's um it's just it's just comfortable. Hope you don't add water to your soap like my mom. Soap of my mom's is one ten soap, nine water. It's insane. No, I only add water at the end of it. Like when you and it's not like the soap I'm using is like fucking broke boy shit either. It's like Aesop soap. You know what I mean? That's the funniest part. But I guess it makes more sense to do it for Aesop soap than it is for Dove. You know, that's just like $50. It's like a fucking $50 bottle. What are you going to, you're not going to use the last, the last fucking crumb down there. That last crumb is like, what? Like $5? That's a crumb of soap. You just might as well throw the $5 on the ground and spit on it. Anyway, guys, invest in a sewing kit and learn to repair clothes, please, for the love of fuck. No, nah, it's too much work. But um, frugal maxing, I guess. Yeah, I was tub maxing, bubble maxing. I fucking bought this hand fan for myself, thinking because it gets like too hot in there sometimes. And it's like, I didn't know how to use it. I could not figure out how to use it. I still don't know how to use it. But yeah, I bubble maxed. I got my fucking zin in there. I wasn't even using it, but it's like good to have. Uh, also, uh, I never had an emo phase, as you guys know, uh, probably. This was like, a, I don't even think that this is emo enough. I just like did this one time, but... Tomorrow, I'm going to be entering my emo phase alongside Jake Weber and Johnny Gilbert. Uh, for those of you who don't know. So, uh, we're going to be doing that. March is not allowed to come. Even though I saw March earlier today. Yes, dude. Um, but yeah, the reason why I'm in a really good mood overall this morning is because... Um, the reason why I'm in a really good mood overall this morning is because I hit... Uh, 285 on the back squats this morning. March is in here too. He's in the background. Who are you barking at, lady? You better calm down. Quiet. Quiet. Um. Anyway. So, uh, I swapped... I, I used to be a low bar back squatter and I swapped it to a high bar. I swapped it to a high bar this past year, like a couple months ago, and I had to go down a lot in weight due to that shift, right? Um, for those of you who don't know, a high bar back squat is when you put it above your shoulders. A low bar back squat is when you put it in your rear delts. Uh, when you put the weight in your rear delts, basically, like right here, as opposed to up here. And, um, of course, power lifters do low bar back squatting because, like, it gives them more power because they can use their lower back. And it's actually pretty good. However, uh, high bar is better for my knees. We just call that a squat. It's just assumed to be a back squat. If you say squat, if you only specify for front, it's true. You're actually right about that. Um, the funny part about it is that, yeah, I do front squats sometimes. My trainers say back squat, and it's just, like, stuck with me. I, I used to never say back squatting. Like, I don't front squat that much. Anyway, but, yeah, uh, overall... It's good because you get more depth this way as well, as you can see. For like 285, 5x5, five five, pretty solid big boy weight here, you know? Uh, there's a little, it got a little janky towards the end there, but I'm really hitting the fucking, I'm really hitting the goddamn, uh, I'm, I'm hitting that, it's not ass to grass, obviously, but it's like 90 parallel, 90 degree parallel, as you can see. Not only is it 90 degree parallel, but it's even going like, I guess pretty, pretty goddamn good. Good depth. Anything beyond that is like probably going to cause you to have knee pain. Um, tried Zercher yet? 
I hate it. I hate Zerchers. Zerchers actually caused me to have like nerve damage. Uh, Zercher squats caused me to get nerve damage on my on my forearms for a while. Um, so yeah, 285 pounds obviously isn't super heavy, but 285 pounds is obviously not super heavy before everybody talks shit. I know that, especially for someone my weight, but you have to remember, I, uh, I have, no, no, I got nerve damage. Literally, I was numb for like months. Um, I'm tall with long femurs and I go ass the grass. No issue says knee chair, schnee hair. I have good mobility though. Yes. You have better mobility than me. Okay. Why'd you search That's for idiots. Yeah. I don't think search is good anyway. Okay. So as I was saying, 285 pounds is not a lot of weight, but if you recall earlier in this week, I was talking about how. I'm no longer in recomp and therefore I can't actually keep losing weight while simultaneously building muscle and also, um, you know, improving my strength. And I, I recognize that because on my chest, on my bench press, I was week over week. I was having a hard time hitting two plates five by five, which is not a lot of weight for someone of my size. Obviously I have like joint issues i've always had joint issues my shoulders always are busted i always have rotator cuff problems so i do a lot of like corrective work to specifically make sure that i'm strong enough uh, it took a lot of rehabilitation to basically solidify my back so i can uh, improve my my uh, bench press position i just am i've decided i'm cutting out the flat bench barbell bench press anyway um Regardless, it's just, it, it fucks me up. It always fucks me up. There's no reason for it. The dumbbells are perfectly fine. But regardless, um, I'm cutting, as you guys know. I'm not bulking, I'm cutting. And it's, it's almost impossible to cut while simultaneously also uh, improving your strength. Unless you already had that strength and you're doing recomp. So... For that reason, I was noticing that I was, uh, you know, I was having issues with all of that. I was having issues with improving my strength this past week. So getting up to 285, which is not very high, uh, obviously, but it's high for high bar backs, uh, high bar squatting. Um, for me, it was shocking to me. Like I, I started off real low. I was like, oh, I'll probably go up to like 265 or something. And then I did that. And I was like, oh my God, never mind. Um, I'm actually kind of cooking. So it made me feel good. Also, all right, buddy, it's after 12. Let's move on from the bro science. Still less cake than Lud. Stop being a misogynist towards Kaya, please. Ask the grass pal bro science. And run the top of the hour ad break. No, I'm not running it. It's 30 minutes in only. Yeah, March is back there working. Doing, I think, like, what is it? Reverse hypers? You can see them in the back. But yeah, so um so it was uh it was definitely good, especially the circumstances considering, right? I'm not like bulking, I'm not supposed to be like, you know, I'm supposed to be maintaining while simultaneously losing uh maintaining my muscle mass, maintaining my strength while simultaneously uh losing weight. However, this is one area where I've been able to still improve my uh lift, so that made me happy. I'm also officially at 243 pounds. I think it's the lightest I've been since my highest point during COVID. Peak of COVID, I was peaking in my weight. Um, I look good. I feel good. I'm achieving my goals overall. So that makes me feel very good. Um, yeah, just wanted to share that accomplishment. Why do you talk? Why do your talking IG stories not cut out before the end anymore? I don't know. You should try out Olympic shoes. They help my depth a lot. No, I don't want to. I know what you're talking about. I don't want to do that. You're talking about the lifts, right? Heel lifts. Where it just like positions your feet in a way 
so that uh, you can go down more. Like there's a there's a baby lift in the heel for squatting. They're just like squatting shoes. I don't really care about that kind of stuff. I I I personally don't think that I'm at a level where I need to improve. Like that's for people who have already accomplished a certain level of lift that they want to make sure that they can get like that extra uh that they need to get like that extra ankle mobility to improve the the bar path even further. I don't I don't think you need to do that. I'm fucking I've only barely gotten a 90 degree parallel perfectly. So Have you watched a new live action avatar that's on Netflix? No. Regular flat shoes are fine or even barefoot if it feels comfortable. I used to I used to uh squat and deadlift barefoot. Uh I have not watched the live action thing uh and I probably will not cuz I heard that it sucks. So It's me or the dog. That's so funny. That's a funny ass show. Um, it's definitely a big letdown from the original. Yeah, I'm not. How can I get lean? Do you have any tips? Yes. I always say this all the goddamn time. Eat less. That's it. There's no way around it. <laughs> like, if you're gaining weight currently, that means you need to eat less. You will never be able to outwork your diet. People go, go on walks, do this, do that. No, the thing you need to do is eat less. It's just the truth. Your body is a machine. And as a machine, it requires energy. Food is energy. Calories are energy. If you put more energy in your body than it actually uh, burns every day, then you will gain weight, which is a good thing if your goal is to gain weight. If your goal is to lose weight, then you have to put less energy than it actually is burning every day. This would be called being at a deficit, a caloric deficit. There is no way that you can outrun or out cardio or outwork your diet. Your diet is the most important thing. I tell you this. Health Harvard says, stop counting calories. I will never stop counting calories. I don't care. You can write a thousand different fucking articles on it. It literally doesn't matter. What I'm describing to you is not a motherfucking fad diet. Okay, what I'm describing to you is just basic principles. I don't care what fucking lame ass new theory that has been developed on how to to work out. I'm not saying starve yourself, of course. If you starve yourself, you will lose muscle mass. You will become less healthy. All of this stuff that they're describing here are true. Hasan Abi's anti-science. No, I'm not anti-science. Anyone that says calories in, calories out is not like the basic principle of, of like building a healthy diet is anti-science. Okay. Like you don't have to do like, you don't, don't, I don't ever, ever talk about fad diets. I never talk about like any of this dumb shit. Uh, Weight Watchers, Scarsdale, fucking OMAD even, and I've used these diets. I've done all of them. Some of them were very successful. Some of them weren't like getting into ketosis. All this shit is dumb as fuck. Ultimately, the foundational principles are always going to be the fucking same. Okay. The principle is your body is a fucking engine and the engine requires in order for your engine to operate, it requires a certain amount of calories. You have a resting metabolic rate. Okay. Like if you were just laying in bed, if you're just laying in fucking bed, incredibly sedentary. Your body is still burning shit. If your mind is working, 
it, it, to, to you know pump blood and feed your muscles. Your body still needs food. Your body needs a healthy balance of, of obviously macronutrients and micronutrients. Okay. But ultimately the most in the most reductive terms, because I can always go further into it and dive deeper into it and explain you the minutia. But overall, your body is a fucking engine and that engine requires food for energy. Okay. And your body automatically burns through a certain amount. This is not bro science. Please stop saying bro science. I'm losing my mind. Nothing I am mentioning is bro science. I am a bro and I am describing it in, in layman's terms. So it comes across as bro science-y, but what I'm describing is not bro science. Oh. Dudes will look at the law of thermodynamics and go, pro science? Hello? Anyway, every single thing that this article is writing is correct. You do have gut microbiomes. You do have a metabolism. You have the, the type of food you eat is also important. However, these are marginal differences that are still based on calories in, calories out. Because let, let's be real, okay? Regardless of your gut microbiome, regardless of that, if, you, if your body's resting metabolic rate, or if your body's like with the, with the lifestyle choices that you make, if you're like sedentary or not, you know what I mean? How active you are, how much walking you do, for example, how much you fidget. These are all ironically things that factor into like what your body needs, okay? How much you think, <laughs> And, and how much, how many calories you burn while eating for your body to fucking consume the food and break it down, that is burning calories. It's a machine. It's all, it's, none of this is bro science, by the way. Suck my dick if you say bro science to this. All of that factors in to the engine and how much fuel it requires. However, however, calories in, calories out is still the fucking foundational principle. Anyway, and obviously for everyone, it's going to be different. Some people like, here's a great example. Alex, six foot five, peeled to the gills, right? My friend, Alex, Australian, Alex, tall, Alex, not Alexa. Okay. He fidgets like a motherfucker that plays a role in him unironically burning more. His resting metabolic rate is way higher than mine. Okay? Like, even fidgeting plays a role. If you're constantly moving around, if you're constantly moving your body, if you can't stay in fucking place, he follows libs of TikTok. I, I, were, I was following libs of TikTok as well before she blocked me. What? Do you think one of my socialist friends who literally went to North Korea is like a secret reactionary? There's no shot you did that. Yeah, dude. He's stayed with me for months and I never found out that he's like secretly transphobic actually. <laughs> that's that's always funny. Um, it's called NEAT or non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Yeah, that's nerd shit. Okay, I'm not gonna talk about that. Um, point is, uh, ultimately, a girl we gotta blast off. Oh yeah, I didn't even blast off today. Good call. Been 44 minutes. I got perma stuck on this silliness. I'll, I'll blast off. I got it, Oni Spumoni. Don't worry. I got your. I got your meme. We're gonna do CPAC hogwash today. CPAC hogwash is back. Turkey bans Twitch. Send me your best. CPAG hogs. 
Turkey bans Twitch. Alabama is cursed. And more. Yo, these grandmas making a transphobic rap is insane. Okay, hold on. What? I don't want to watch an Instagram reel, man. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Nathan. Yahoo. Should I play Yakuza 0 or Kiwami first? Yakuza 0. Oh, this was my best Instagram story. Here comes Commander Biden. Yeah. <laughs> 24 kills in combat, dude. <laughs> Fucking legendary. Uh, br br br br br br br I also have another collab opportunity. Hasanabi Turkey Glaze in the comments. I love that. Okay. I love glazing up turkey. Yes, I saw China saying Palestine has a right to use violent means to liberate themselves because it's correct. CPAC Hogwatch is back. Send me your best CPAC Hogs. Turkey bans Twitch. Alabama is cursed. Netanyahu, Gaza plans, and more. It's Friday. So we're having fun. Get in now. You are fat because you have weak Greek genetics. Yeah, I'm so fat, dude. Now your haters would really, really for you to go back to Turkey now. Trump statement on Alabama IVF decision if you're covering that first. Oh, he actually posted about this? That's crazy. That makes sense, though. Because it's so dumb. Um, the IVF decision, I mean. All right, let's blast off, and I'm going to get back to the last... I'm going to wrap up the workout situation. Shouldn't we execute the fat shamer? No, I don't care. I'm feel. I'm in a good mood. Bro, I'm I, I've I am the lightest I've been. I I'm literally the lowest weight I've been since like the peak of the pandemic. I don't give a shit. I, you know, I'm, I I have my days. I have my days when I feel fat, and if you come in and you call me fat when I feel fat, I'm gonna be like, "Fuck you. You look fat as fuck." <laughs> yeah, I got a fat cock. Some days I feel bloated or if I'm like working really hard and I'm not achieving the goals that I've set out for myself, if I don't feel very lean and you come in at that point and you fucking hit me with that, I'm going to, I'm going to ban you, right? This chat has bloodlust just to get another chatter banner over nothing. I don't think it's, it's nothing. I don't think you should, people always discount chatter etiquette. Like, as a chatter, you shouldn't be allowed to say whatever the fuck you want. You shouldn't be, like, trying to make the streamer upset. That seems insane. The way I see it is, like, this is supposed to be a positive. This is supposed to be a, a positive interaction with an entire, with a massive community full of people. It's like a stadium. Why would you go in there and try to fuck up the vibes, right? Some Twitch streamers don't mind it. I, I do, especially because I have a lot of back and forth with my community, with my chat. So. Seriously, respect. Big tall guys like you that lift. I'm 5'6", 200 pounds, and even though I can squat 400, your lift is far more impressive because of how long your legs are. Thank you for recognizing that and admitting that. People literally don't. I mean, I have I have my advantages, obviously. I have a lot more space to fill up. So there's more... Uh, room to grow as far as strength. Someone think of the poor tall guy. Uh, I feel like you started the stream so happy and now Chaz being horrible. I'm so sorry. No, it's fine.
Um, I did see the January 6th pinball machine, yeah. Um, so, where was I? Um, okay. Uh, as far as, like, calories and calories out goes and stuff like that, like I said, um, feeling pretty good. I swapped something and it finally clicked. Um, I was, uh, a chatter asked if you've struggled with binge eating and they've been depressed about for about four years they're wondering what to use as motivation um yeah that's why i did omad the last time i like lost all the weight and kept it off but now i don't do that i still work out fasted a liberal YouTuber called Lucy Hayes did a two and a half hour episode on you about you hating Eastern Europe. It's so dumb. That's awesome. Where do you guys find this stuff? And I, I, <laughs> I just don't get it. I don't understand it because it's like. I feel like people that are in the Balkans that constantly get mad at me and say like, oh, dude, you hate Eastern Europe are just like America dick riders for the most part. If that makes sense, like they just want to be America so bad and they don't understand that like most of the Western world thinks that they are slavish dogs. You know what I mean? Like they don't most of the Western world literally despises them. I don't. You know what I mean? I don't. Like, it's always odd to me when, like, an Eastern European person will come at me for being, like, anti-America or some shit. You know what I mean? And it's like, dog, I want your... I, I have your best interest in mind. It's just, like, you think this allegiance implies that they see you as a full human being and not just, like a stopgap measure between you and Russia or uh, between like the actual places that America does kind of care about. And even then not that much and Russia, like people legitimately think that um, NATO, for example, is there to protect them and not uh, only protected because uh, it, it, it, it is a way for America to reinforce its hegemonic power. Anyway, don't watch these fucking dumbass videos. Ugh. It has 13 views law. Oh my God. This channel, YouTube channel made a three hour video oh, about you worth the watch. Alive and alive. Here in an undisclosed location far. <laughs> this is so sick. That's that's my this is exactly the type of three hour video that I, I fuck with. Anyway. I think motherfuckers in here have Google alerts with your name. I don't think they have Google alerts. I think they get fed it by the algo and think and don't even think about it. Don't think about the implications of like hyping up a 12 viewer video, even in a stream like this, when you do that, you're basically bringing that to the attention of like many more haters. You're giving that person clout for no reason. You know what I mean? Anyway, we're moving on from that. I don't think I need to be a, a male feminist to be able to attract women. Okay. God damn, these fan cams are nutty. Look, look, let's be real. Yeah, that's always funny when people are be, like, uh, uh, people are like, you're just a feminist to get pussy. It's like, no, dude, I could get pussy as a misogynist, okay? I was significantly more misogynistic when I was younger, I would say. Something I've learned from, something I've like uh, definitely grown on, and uh, it, that didn't change shit.
Him in the tank and the tux makes me turn into a feral animal in ways that would concern the average person. Anyway, they're going to make a live action Naruto. Uh, it's going to suck. I'm done. Don't do that. Oh, this is apparently uh, glazing up Turkish music, is uh, arabesque music specifically, which is ironic because it's like <laughs> arabesque is not exactly Turkish music, but um, here it is. American music could never produce such euphonious, soul-ascending, heart-crunching, angelic spirits stirring motherfucking tunes. I levitated to heaven and back. This genre of music is literally called arabesque. Arab, Persian, Turkish, Pakistani, and Hindi music had the most beautiful tunes. Your soul transcends to another realm. That song is using Western harmony, Lema Feyal. This sounds like a Uzi beat. <laughs> this is Arab erasure if you claim this is Turkish. I mean, it's a huge. This sounds like a Turkish drama OST that comes out every two minutes throughout the drama. And, it, and it's always bang. Got me feeling like I'm in a Turkish series. Dude, I love the fucking, I love cultural imperialism, okay? It's so solid. Or if you want to be normal about it, not cultural imperialism, but like just making content that is captivating for people, okay? Turkish content is just done so much for Turkey. It's so much, so much soft power for Turkey. How does this feel seeing others live your dream? What? Anyway. Elongated harmonics with arpeggios is very arabesque, but its roots are across Asia. I saw this already. We watched this on stream. Tub maxing. Oh my God, no way. Oh my God, dude, more proof. Uh, a lot of people talk about Matt Chrisman, Cushman, Cushbaum, and his takes like, and how prescient those takes are and yada, yada, yada on politics and history. I think the greatest Matt Chrisman take is when he said bears are guys. Some animals are guys. And honestly, Bears or guys is the greatest take that Matt Chrisman ever had. All bears are just guys. They just hang. I don't know how else to describe it other than just look at this fucking video. That's just a guy. Like that's, that's me. I'm, I'm this thing. This is me. I, I do this. This is what I do. This is exactly like down to the wire exactly what i would do okay oh my god this is just kaya this is just Kaya. It's not even a joke. This is, I'm every day, 
every day I I am reinforced in my firmly held consistent belief that has been unfortunately chastised by many because they're cowards that I could befriend a bear. Every single day, there is more evidence that proves over and over and over again that I could befriend a bear. I love bears so much. What's stopping you? Um, living in Los Angeles, California. Like, the, the area that I live in, the area that I live in, bears mean something entirely different. If you know what I'm saying. I live in West Hollywood. <laughs> fellas, fellas. I'm always talking about how I... Have you heard of this? Have you heard of this? I'm always talking about how I can befriend a bear. Okay? <laughs> Living in West Hollywood, California. The only type of bear you can befriend is at the bear bars. Very different type of bear. That's right. <laughs> anyway. I don't believe in Russiagate except that bear TikTok is a psyop to trick us befriending them as pets. Uh, yeah, that was my shitty ass Jay Leno. Okay, okay, okay, okay, okay. Um, we're we're moving on from all this. Uh, what is the video game that all of the the EU streamers and the Spanish streamers are playing? Is it Kebab Shop? I think Lyric is now playing it too. He said Kebab Mart, but that's like a different game. He's playing Supermarket Simulator. All the EU Andes are playing a game, and I want to play that as well. So, no, no, no. That's what Lyric is playing. Lyric is playing Supermarket Simulator, but that's not the actual game. It's Kebab Chefs, right? I thought it was this one, which uh, I have lined up here. I can't remember if this is the actual one, but apparently this is a co-op game, so I'm trying to put this together. I'm trying to put a team together. I'm trying to put a team together with uh, maybe Northern Lion and two other people. I asked uh, Quackity as well, and he said he'd be down. So I was thinking about like, I literally was thinking about doing it with like a Turkish streamer. Uh, Quackity potentially. I mean, we'll see. I'm thinking like if I were to put like a, a crew in the top of mind, I think I would make it with like, I would make it with. Basically, Quackity, Selbit, and maybe Northern Lion. Something like that. <laughs> Turkish, Latin, and bald. All the demographics are covered. Yeah. So we'll see. My wife would die if you played games with Northern Lion. Trust me. I'm always trying to play games with Northern Lion, but the only games he keeps playing are with my heart. New Bill Skarsgård movie, Boy Kills World. Yeah, I saw that. Um, the Skarsgård family is known for two things. Being absolutely fucking peeled, looking really weird, but also hot in a weird way. And the third thing is being like the autistic silent killer in every fucking movie. In every movie... They just sit around, barely fucking speak, and do murders. And they look hot while doing it, even though they kind of look alien-like. The entire family is awesome at doing that. He's mute and, uh, and deaf uh, in this uh, movie, by the way. I love it because, uh, not a friend of the show, but friend of other friends of the show is uh, playing a very prominent role in this movie.
Let's do this. Recognize this was that never no, a great city. Recognize that voice, but boys. It was ours. Are you with me? Always. Until Hilda Vandercoy took it from us. This is how she keeps Brett Gelman? What? Gross. What the fuck? No, dude. The opposite of Brett Gelman. An actually cool person who is like a lefty and uh and and friends of at least my uncle, my real uncle, Sam Cedar. We're talking H. John Benjamin, dude. Keeps control. They call it the calling. They're all gonna watch and cheer as you die. That's me. Facing televised execution by breakfast cereal mascots. Not my happiest day. But let me take you back to an even worse one. The day the Vandercoys killed my- H. John is a lefty. H. John Benjamin frequently goes on Sam Cedar's majority report. Okay. He literally voiced Saddam Hussein in the blowback podcast. Created by uh, uh, Brendan James and Noah Culwin, as you guys know. And on top of that, he has quite literally done pieces with the Gravel Institute. Talking specifically about how shitty capitalism is. <laughs> H. John Benjamin is the GOAT. As a matter of fact, the one fucking... I would say that the one stream or show that he hasn't been on that is like a, a socialist show is mine family and left me deaf and mute so i made a three-step plan step one give myself an inner voice i took the last one i remembered from this video game player one wins step two get stronger a lot stronger and step three, join a team. Welcome to the resistance. Yeah, go, go team. The mission is simple. Make the Vandercoys pay for what they have done. Insert crazy action montage. You fall in love. I think, um, I think this is going to be a good movie, by the way. And not just because of H. John Benjamin, but also, and also because of a scars guard. Uh, fuck Brett Gelman. We don't care about him. Uh, who gives a fuck? But I do think that, like, this gives me hope. Sam Raimi. Evil you Dead. Don't you. Breathe the Grudge. This movie's gonna own, yeah, for sure. You know how hard it is to get a serial company to sponsor mass murder. Wow. You ring the bell. time. Like the only lame thing I saw in this entire trailer, other than fucking that ultra Zionist freak Brett Gelman's ugly ass face, was uh the the classic beat for beat shot trailer cliche that they do all the time now. Like baby driver, post baby driver, pretty much every fucking movie trailer does this now, which is lame as hell, but who gives a fuck? Whatever. I don't like this plan. You have reached your final destination. I love... information i'm gonna help you nobody wasn't gonna help us definitely sounded like he was gonna help us anyway optics gaming cod video editing in my opinion all trailers are terrible across the board since like 2018 isn't that suspiciously when megaphonics started making trailers hmm hmm Something to consider here. Hmm. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's.
What is this president? What? You can okay, okay, okay, okay, okay, okay. Well, well, dude, I can't wait for fucking CPAC, baby. We're gonna be doing a live react to President Trump, my king, my goat. It is the year after Baby Driver dropped, though. I'm making a joke because can't have shit in this stream. I was making a joke about Megaphonics because he makes music for uh, movie trailers. Um. Anyway, anyway, anyway, anyway. H. John Benjamin is the GOAT. Very excited for him. Uh, maybe we'll have him on the stream one day. Who knows? Are you excited for Dune 2? I'm excited for uh, <laughs> Dune to your mom, which she Dune to me. <laughs> Sixty nining is what I'm talking about. I feel like we'll get H. John Benjamin before we get uh Northern Lion, probably. Um burr, burr, burr, burr, burr. okay. Oh, here, this is the other thing I was gonna show you guys. I need your opinion on this. Dude, I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw. Don't even fucking show me that shit, okay? Don't do it to me. Don't do it to me. Don't do it to me. Biden, 81, says the key to his marriage is good sex, according to the Daily Mail US. Wow, dude. That's cool. Yeah, this this certainly, this certainly will defeat the uh the he's not doing well up here allegations. Like I mean, to be honest. This is something I do believe, okay? I, I do believe it. I do believe it. Because we know we know the dick game of the Bidens, okay? I've seen Hunter's cock. I've seen Joe Biden's brother's cock. I'm making an assumption here that Joe Biden probably also has a thick eight, okay? That's fine. It's fine to admit. Considering the cock game of the rest of the Bidens, this honestly seems believable. We do hogwash of different sorts. Dude is blown up his dick as much as he's blown up Gaza. If the blood goes to the dick, there's no way he survives. What? Get ready for 15K, buddy? What does that mean? I mean, that'd be weird if this guy was a... Fucking hate watcher who's been sub for 16 months. Am I about to get, am I about to get hosted or something? What does he mean? The people leaving Lamau. Wait, what? Why? Oh, because I tweeted that, uh, because I tweeted that Biden has a thick one. It's just the truth. I'll be honest with you. If telling the truth, which includes Biden's hog, most likely being a thick one, if that causes people to leave, then I'm sorry. Okay? I'm sorry. But I'm going to keep saying the fucking truth. By the way, one of the worst things I could ever do is like have someone on the stream because all of my fucking mentally ill... <laughs> That's awesome. All of my mentally ill hate watchers like have swarmed this dude's fucking uh, swarmed this dude's uh, entire life now. He's getting obliterated on Twitter. Most people, if you actually have friends in Ukraine you care about, you would simply not try to speak for Ukrainians and appear on a sandpiker and dismiss the real tragedy of Ukraine's surrendering territory to a genocidal Russia. If you have family in Ukraine you care about, you would agree with me. Clearly, you either do not have family there or do not care about them. Are you trying to imply that 
my wife's family is not family, you piece of shit, or what they or I should think about Russian aggression against them, fuck all the way off. Um, most online psychoanalysis is garbage, but I really believe it's a strong sign that something is wrong when people can't recognize their own behavior being mirrored back at them. The online Ukrainian flag people have gotten unhinged lately. It's because we're, we have officially entered the second anniversary. Okay. Um, so as it enters its second year, as the invasion of Ukraine enters its second year, obviously a lot of people, um, a lot of people are, are, are very agitated about it. Many people have like dropped their support of Ukraine because they feel like it's a dead ender because most of them are not like really into it or really invested, or maybe they were, but they're not invested for one reason or the other, maybe because they're demoralized. Okay. And, um, of course, this is something I was going to talk about as well. This is the anniversary. We passed the anniversary of my uh, greatest tweet of all time. The most go-to tweet. One of my biggest misses, one of my biggest, most publicized misses that was literally attached to one of my biggest and most, ironically, not publicized, correct assessments. The Putin is bad, not mad. He would never be able to permanently annex a, a, a country with 44 million people whose national project is not being a part of Russia. This is a hill I will die on. Putin will not invade Ukraine. It's so funny because, like, I was so right on the permanent annexation and how devastating that would be for all parties involved and so wrong on Putin not being a fucking madman who would do that. Your next bad take is that Russia isn't going to win. There is no winning in that situation. There is no, like... Hegemonic world peace just comes in here and says things like doesn't have any fucking real uh, opinion at all. Like nothing I hear from him is is real. Everything we said would happen to Ukraine is happening. They're being hollowed out by privatization schemes, massive casualties on the front line, and the U.S. abandoned them when it became politically inconvenient. Both you and I literally predicted this exact train of events. Yes, but make no mistake. Uh, I was wrong when I said uh, Russia won't invade Ukraine because that would be fucking nutty for Russia to do. It would be insane. Uh, I was wrong on that. So, of course, people will always uh, fucking hit the Hassan is pro-Putin line uh, no matter what. Anyway, my uncle is still stuck in Ukraine because of martial law and he's at risk of being drafted at any given moment because he's still young enough to serve. Mid-50s is so fucked. Entire towns have been emptied of young men. The average age of conscript is late 30s, early 40s now. Yeah. Um, things are not good. They're not looking good at all. Uh, they're not looking great at all. I mean, people, people are engaging in maximal, maximum amounts of copium on both sides of the equation on the Ukraine defender side, the Ukraine flag, uh, guys have gotten way more fucking angry as of late because they feel like the more Russia makes like marginal gains, the worse the outcomes look for Ukraine. They obviously don't give a shit about the Ukrainian people for the most part. It seems like anytime I hear anything about Ukraine, it's always from a, either a Western person who's like, I'm the foremost authority on Ukraine because I uh, talk to Ukrainian people on the ground or something, or it's like a Ukrainian NGO, like a Western focused NGO that's there to be like, you are literally a Putin dick rider. And Overall, I feel like, um, you know, it, it's just, it's just a devastating set of circumstances. It's really, really bad. And it's looking, it's seemingly looking worse every fucking day because we trickled in our weapons into Ukraine and the weapons that trickled in came too late. 
Ukraine definitely put up a, a phenomenal defense that actually was able to... Uh, your take on Ukraine is dog shit, not gonna lie. You sound like a centrist right now. There is no centrism on the morality of the issue. One side is in the wrong and the other side is in the right. Ukrainians are right. Ukrainians are correct in wanting emancipation from a Russian invasion. The Russian military is in the wrong. There is no both sides on that situation at all. This is something I've been saying since day one. I know that people think I'm simply saying that for some other secret nefarious reason because I'm like secretly a Vladimir Putin dick rider, defender, or whatever, but no. Vladimir Putin is not some communist revolutionary. He is engaging in irredentist actions in Ukraine. Vladimir Putin is a capitalist, an oligarch uh, that, that manages a kleptocracy. Of course, his actions in Ukraine are completely unjustifiable. Ridiculous to defend it at all. I make fun of the people who are pushing Z all the time as well that say things like, you don't understand, dumbass. Uh, Vladimir Putin is actually doing big brain 7D chess stuff every day. He took over another fucking village now and, and completely leveled it to the goddamn ground. <laughs> That's, it's so sick. <laughs> the entire area that uh, he invaded to, to, to basically protect Donbass caused a shit ton more casualties on the Russian side, just as well as on the Ukrainian side, which was an excellent 5D chess move. It's like, no, it's dumb as fuck. Yeah, Putin also made NATO impossible to disband for another 50 years. Yeah, 100%. Um, uh, Avdivka and Bakhmut are strategically important, to be honest. But strategically important for what? Strategically important for what? Like, at what cost is the question you have to ask? If your overarching goal is, if your overarching goal is to dominate Ukrainian politics, okay, soft power is significantly better if your goal is that. You are missing a huge part of what, what this war has demonstrated. It is revealed that for the world war, for the world that one, brutal Western sanctions can be overcome with the right pivoting, and two, the Western industrial apparatus is rotted and weak. Also, even our media before the invasion highlighted the brutality of Azov was committing in eastern Ukraine. Yeah, but the solution to the brutality in eastern Ukraine by Azov is not infinitely more brutality by the same people and also now the Russian military as well. What the fuck are we talking about? That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. I do not believe even for a fucking singular second that Vladimir Putin legitimately is interested in the well-being of like ethnic Russians living in eastern Ukraine. Look at his actions. That's crazy to me. Okay? I also don't believe that he was ever remotely interested in denazifying Ukraine. That's a bullshit fucking excuse. It's bullshit. This does not mean that there aren't like hyper nationalistic people in Ukraine, specifically Nazis in the Ukrainian military. I covered the Azov guys far before the Russian invasion. Okay. And I covered them after the Russian invasion started as well, which is part of the reason why plenty of people kept saying I'm a Russian propagandist. This is the reason. Hassan is a fan of Putin. One, Hassan loves horses. So does Putin. Two, Hassan is bald. So is Putin. Three, Hassan loves public execution. So does Putin. Four, Hassan loves top of the hour ad break. This is one of the first instances where someone actually debated me with something that I thought was going to be productive and funny. Like, 
Normally, it's someone who's like coming at me to anger me. This is not one of those moments. This is an instance where someone came at me to be funny and you cooked. Uh, I got fucking destroyed. Anyway, here's the Thurman ad break now. If you no longer want to see those ads and you don't have access to anti-air uh, missiles uh, over the shoulder, anti-air shit, then you're going to need to subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Owen Gila, thank you for the five gifted subs. Please tell me you don't love horses. Please, please. I am a horse girl, but not in the way that, uh, you know, you understand how some people love horses. I think that loving horses that way is gross and weird. Uh, I, on the other hand, treat horses like big dogs. I love dogs, and I think horses are very close to dogs in the way that they operate, in the way that they are. Horses scare me. They're awesome. They're very smart. Anyway. Not to try to start shit, but you spend more time defending your Ukraine position than explaining it to us. What do you mean? My defense of the Ukraine position is an explanation for what's going on in Ukraine, though. That's such a weird way to approach the subject matter. Every single time that I defend my position, I'm basically giving you still facts about the situation on the ground. Anyway, um, those cities are important because they're in mortar distance to a paramount train track. Currently, Russia can't use it and is forced to move material and troops via streets and planes, logistics, win wars, and with the train tracks, Russia will gain more land. No, I understand all of that. And also, Avdika, Avdika is, uh, you know... Uh, higher elevated and yada yada yada captain a cap badge thank you for the five get the subs and um now they don't have that uh they don't have that position to keep fucking bombing into uh russian positions that are firmly mounted in eastern ukraine got it i understand that that doesn't spell victory if that victory is a is a peer is a pyrrhic or pyrrhic victory not real victory if your overarching goal is to undermine Western influence in Ukraine and the and the way that you... Pyrrhic victory. I always say Pyrrhic. Okay, Pyrrhic victory. Your overarching goal is to undermine Western involvement in Ukraine and ensure that they never... Ensure that they never join NATO, which you know is not going to fucking happen anyway. Then you already have pressure points through your economic cooperation with other NATO countries in the form of like oil and gas. That trade is really valuable. Obviously that, that the influence that you have through that trade is really valuable. And then as far as like not allowing Ukraine to join NATO or enforcing some kind of, um, uh, enforcing some kind of, of red line, you already do that. You already have Crimea. And it's not going to happen anyway. So. Let's say Ukraine agrees to leave Donbass and Crimea to Russia. What stops Russia from regrouping and attacking it in the future? Ukraine tried to freeze the conflict in mid 2010s, but Russia invaded again. Agreeing to peace terms as beneficial to Russia might just postpone another war in the future might just postpone for another war in the future well another war in the future that has like a steady period of of uh cessation of hostilities unironically is better than continuing the war and and allowing it to be a slow churn that still slowly but surely increases the conscription age in ukraine as they run out of men you know what i mean that's the, that's the problem, I think. The Ukraine war will never be a victory for Russia because the costs at all levels were already too high, but the defeat of the West is entirely possible. And if Ukraine cedes large areas, it will be viewed as such. In Russia in particular, this would be seen as a victor. Yeah. Yeah.
the risk of Russia not following through on the conditions of a uh, peace, fire, uh, peace negotiation or a ceasefire negotiation is a permanent issue with every cessation of hostilities. Anytime you have a treaty, because that is how wars end, regardless of the victorious position you have, uh, or, or regardless of the enemies having a victorious position, no matter what happens, that's how every fucking war ends, technically. And there's always a, a situation where the, the one party could technically um, violate those terms and conditions. So if that is the if that is the realistic outcome, let's say operating on the pure hypothetical that they will do this again doesn't change the reality that you have to give it a shot in my opinion. Like Israel has every opportunity to if there is a permanent ceasefire Israel's every opportunity to violate that they have done it in the past right but that won't stop me from saying that fucking Israel has to do a ceasefire D does that make sense like it's it's almost identical to my position in Gaza in the immediate in the immediate a cessation of hostilities is an absolute necessity that's it those are way different situations. No, they're... What do you mean those are way different situations? No, the fuck they're not. I mean, Israel is worse, for sure. But those are not different situations at all. Israel's entire existence relies on uh, uh, 75 years of, of occupation and death and destruction uh, in comparison to the Russian invasion that is a... is is. Uh, is, is a relatively new phenomena. However, it's still the same as far as the basics and the morality of it. Russia's actions as far as like occupying or invading Ukraine are, uh, are, are awful and immoral and violent, just like Israel's actions are awful and immoral and violent. Anyway. What is this? This war has cost the West peanuts. That's so fucking not true. That that part is ridiculous, dude. First of all, it's... I hate that. I hate that take so much. Like, w w this assessment is so gross and sociopathic. I'm sorry. I don't know if you intended it for it to be that way. One, it's incorrect. It's 5% of the military budget billions of dollars and every fucking singular dollar that goes back into the military industrial complex is a singular dollar that could have gone to building fucking bricks and making homes and rebuilding our roads, rebuilding our healthcare infrastructure. So that's ridiculous to say, Oh dude, it's a couple billion dollars here and there. Just fucking write it off. That is before we get to the actual human cost. The actual human cost of that on top of that for the Ukrainians as they as the American and the Western forces say, they goad them into being like, no, no, no, we're going to set up an unrealistic proposal. We're going to keep feeding you weapons. Don't worry. Don't worry. The weapons are coming. The weapons are coming. And then they don't come in the timely manner that it's supposed to, in the way that uh, Zelensky has asked for them since the, um, since the beginning, allowing them to get fucking brutalized in the meat grinder. And what are they supposed to do? They can't do anything. They can't say anything. What are, they, what are the Ukrainians supposed to do? It's the same position with the Kurds every single time. This was my analysis from the jump. Every single time, America goes, oh yeah, no, we'll help you out. And then they fuck off inevitably when they're bored or when it becomes uh, no longer politically viable or there's another shiny toy and they say, I don't want to play with you no more. Here. And they leave out our allies to the fucking dogs, to the wolves. My generation had their future leveraged against the cost of Afghanistan and Iraq. It feels like a lot less. That is such a weird way to look at it. It's a weird way to approach the subject, my friend. You make it seem like it is an inevitability. And under, obviously, socialist terms, it is an inevitability. Imperialism is a necessity under capitalism. It is the final state of capitalism. So technically, it is an inevitability, but there is an alternative way, especially when we're talking about it 
in a community such as this one. You don't have to say, no, dude, this is like way cheaper than Afghanistan. You know what I mean? <laughs> like your goal should be, especially in a circle like this, to talk about ways of dismantling the military industrial complex, to make an argument as to why we have to dismantle the military industrial complex and not, well, it's going to happen no matter what. So at least it's like lower. It's a lower cost, a lower burden. At least we don't have our own veterans getting fucking uh, thrown into hellfire. Ah. So. So I um I don't know what else to say about it other than it's bad it's not good. Palestine segment on CPAC live now. I mean it's kind of mid. Talk to me when it, when we're when we get to Trump. You know what I mean? The West is sending their aging arsenal that they would have to spend millions if not billions decommissioning anyways. The Ukrainians can at least use these weapons while they're still a match for Russia's current military capacity. Russia's losing these assets now reduces our need for a continued military industrial complex. You are on an, an enormous amount of copium. If you think that this reduces our military industrial complex, what? You have to hand it to dude. Listen, I know I'm bested in the marketplace of ideas when I got people trying to make anti-capitalist arguments as to why the military industrial complex will be dismantled by funding the military industrial complex. Okay. That is, that's phenomenal. This is the reason why the left is completely lost. Okay. Across the board, globally, around the planet. Wow. Wow. That was really good. You fucked me up. Like, I know the liberal talking points. Ukraine is gay. Russia is anti-gay. You know? Like, that's a liberal talking point, right? Like, I'm familiar with that. That one I know. That one I know is like, bullshit. I know how to deal with that. I've never heard... This kind of argument, I've never heard like this is actually undermining the military industrial complex. There is no reason for the CIA to operate ever. There's no, there's no fucking uh, COINTEL Pro that is ever a necessity. We have people doing it for free in these communities. That's why I think it's always funny whenever people, that's why I always think it's funny whenever people talk about, um, you know, whether a YouTuber or a podcaster is like CIA, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, That chatter statement is so stupid. The CIA even wouldn't bother to use it for propaganda. Yeah. Okay. Um. You do that with Johnny Harris, though. I mean, I'm mostly memeing, but Johnny Harris might actually have interned it. <laughs> That's a little different. I think Johnny Harris operates in a different level. Uh. Like. The guy most notable for having horse porn folders in his fucking computer is not on the CIA payroll in the same way that like a dude who worked at Vox and won an Emmy last year might potentially be. You know what I mean? His influence is far more vast than the horse porn guy. So I don't think the horse porn guy is CIA. Whereas like the guy who actually interned for NATO and, uh, and think tanks might be, but it's still a joke. It's humorous regardless. Uh, also, let's not forget he is Mormon. 
formerly Mormon, Johnny Harris, I mean, which is, uh, you know, that's it. All Mormons are CIA. Um, anyway, no, I don't want to watch Nigel Farage. All right. As far as Kiev, Ukraine, uh, Ukraine failed to safely evacuate all of its troops from the eastern city of, of Divka during its disorderly retreat over the weekend, despite claims from its new top military commander that the move was designed to save lives and avoid encirclement by the advancing Russians. At least six wounded troops from the 110th Brigade became trapped behind Russian lines, where they appeared to have later been executed, the brigade said in a statement posted on Facebook. Members of the military who participated in the operation said they were unsure how many others had also been left behind, but any number of casualties is sure to further deteriorate morale on the front line as Ukrainian troops, already outgunned and outnumbered, struggle to replenish their ranks and await further assistance from the West. So, yes, on that front, Ukraine is facing two problems. Problem number one, They're running out of people. It's the major problem, the biggest problem that they're facing. Problem number two, they're running out of bullets. Now, you can fix problem number two. You can, you know, send in shipments of weapons and all that stuff, but you can't really fix problem number one. And that's a big issue. Unless, and I mean this with all sincerity, we start conscripting everyone on Reddit. If you've ever posted on World News, if you've ever uh, talked about how Ukraine needs to fight till the last Ukrainian and you live in the West, I think we should conscript you. I want to do a one-to-one -one program. Every Ukrainian male that is, at, that is potentially at risk of being conscripted, I want to do a one-to-one -one swap. It doesn't matter what age you are. If you live in the West and you are championing uh, the Ukrainians fighting, you will take the role of a person who does not want to be conscripted in Ukraine. I think this is a moral thing to do. I think it's a just thing to do. Make a one-to-one -one swap. If you're a YouTube guy, okay? If you're a YouTube guy and you make YouTube videos all the time about this, one-to-one -one swap. If you always are advocating to continue sending Ukrainians to the meat grinder, it is a moral cause. It is a just cause. You have to go there and you have to fight. Because technically, if, if Putin, -poo is, Putin is, is Hitler, okay, if he's Putler, what are you doing? You got to fight Putler. You have to. How can you make the same argument that is used against you in other conflicts you defend? Bad take, in my opinion. Really? Because I often have the exact same opinion on other conflicts as well, which is an end to the conflict. I've said the exact same thing about Israel-Palestine, too. I want, I want Israel to stop fucking bombing Palestine. I want Israel to stop bombing Gaza. Don't go hard, please. Just friendly advice. This is, no, it's not friendly advice. You have completely misunderstood my position, I think. If I was pushing for Russia to fucking bomb Ukraine harder, and you were like, why don't you go conscript in the Russian military, asshole? You would be right. If I was making that argument, you'd be right. But that's not the argument I'm making at all. Making the exact opposite of that argument. And the same goes for any kind of war that is occurring anywhere around the world. Does it go both ways now? So then the Ukrainians need to browse Reddit and make YouTube videos? Sure. 
I mean, I've I've been a big time advocate for Ukrainians coming into the United States of America. I don't give a shit. Uh, yeah, that that position is also consistent. It's a consistently held position that I've always had, which is that people that don't want to be conscripted, people that are escaping war, our home should be open to them. And that is something that I said since day fucking one. That is something that I stressed when we were raising money for Ukrainian charities. So, yeah. What the fuck? Murata just fucking giving me a FaceTime call out of nowhere, brother. What the hell is going on? What the hell? Ah. Um. Yeah, members of the military participating in the operation said they were unsure how many others had also been left behind, but any number of casualties is sure to further deteriorate morale on the front lines. Russia's captor of Avdivka, a strategic and now almost completely destroyed city located about 50 miles from the Russian-occupied region, regional capital of Donetsk, was Moscow's most significant territorial victory since it seized Bakhmut last May. Diverging accounts have emerged in the days since Ukraine's retreat, including some that support Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's assertions that many more Russians were killed or wounded fighting for the city than the Ukrainians. That is, again, maximalist copium. Three U.S. officials said Wednesday that they were told by Ukrainian officials that dozens of Ukrainian soldiers left behind enemy lines as their units withdrew. The officials speaking on the condition of anonymity because of the sensitivity of the issue said earlier reports that up to 1,000 Ukrainians are missing or captured appear to be exaggerated, but they acknowledge the situation is still severe with many left behind. One senior, no, he he called and then uh, and then turned it off. Shut the fuck up, chatters. Please stop trying to manage my relationship with my brother, okay? Oh my God. Where are we at with parasocialism? It has now reached a maximum level. Uh, how are people confused on your stance? You've been morally correct because this is in day one or people just discuss details and small facts you got right or wrong. It's just drama. That's what it is. All right, let's continue. The number will be closer to 100. The Ukrainians later acknowledged to U.S. officials. In the 110th Brigade statement, it said constant attacks from Russian aircraft, artillery, and drones made it impossible to evacuate several seriously wounded and dead servicemen. After Russian forces surrounded some of the troops, Ukraine tried to make contact with Russia through intermediaries and requested the wounded be treated and taken prisoner. The brigade said Russia agreed, but later posted footage showing that three of the soldiers were already dead. Ukraine separately confirmed that two of the other wounded soldiers were also killed, the brigade said, and is still seeking information about a sixth. Yeah, I saw we got another big balloon. The footage is circulated on Ukrainian social media and the Ukrainian media outlets reported that family members confirmed the deaths of their relatives seen in the video. Other members of Ukraine's military who were familiar with the final weeks of fighting in Avdivka and Ukraine's rapid withdrawal from the city said the situation was chaotic and poorly planned. The account suggests that the retreat ordered by Colonel General Oleksandr Sirsky, who was named as Ukraine's top commander by Zelensky this month, was a grim and dangerous operation and hardly the orderly pullback to a more advantageous position that the Ukrainian military officials claimed at the time. One soldier who spoke on the condition of anonymity because they were not authorized to discuss the situation said some troops were ordered to take positions that were either already lost or destroyed. Constant Russian attacks made the task impossible. With Russian forces outnumbering Ukrainians seven to one. Russia constantly bombarded the area, launching as many as 60 guided aviation bombs per day, which Ukraine could not repel because of a lack of anti-craft defenses. Notice how there, the two issues that I mentioned that we cannot solve are very apparent here. Thank you, by the way, for the 10 give the subs. Las Canarias. Russia outnumbers the Ukrainian military seven to fucking one. Russia has more bodies to throw into the fucking meat grinder than Ukraine does. And also, Ukraine doesn't have ammunition either. A ceasefire now or a ceasefire one year ago would have given Ukraine a favorable leveraging position. A ceasefire now will still give Ukraine a favorable leveraging position in comparison to a ceasefire six months from now. Do you guys understand? This is what I've been stressing. And yet people 
have been consistently talking about how Ukraine is actually winning the war and how they will continue winning the war and how that's the reason why they need to keep pushing and push harder and push harder and push harder and push harder. And push harder. Every day that goes by where Russia advances on a new position is a worse form of leverage for Ukraine. How do you plan on achieving a ceasefire? Russia is winning. Why would they accept a ceasefire? Great question. Russia has said that they would. I think ultimately, it is not favorable for Russia to also continue battling. Okay? It's not. So you grease the wheels and you say economic cooperation can come back. And Russia isn't winning either. Russia is simply not getting fucking owned. That's it. Huh. <sighs> People believe in the miracle of the Ukrainian victory. After all, this is exactly the fairy tale that Ukraine told us. No, this is not a fairy tale that Ukraine told us. This is a fairy tale that the West lied to Ukraine about. I don't think... I mean, this has been bad intelligence on either side of the equation. Okay? Russia had bad intelligence, thinking that they could absolutely decapitate the Ukrainian leadership immediately and start fucking uh, having air superiority over the entirety of Ukraine the Ukrainian airspace, that was a failure. That didn't fucking work. That actually greatly reduced um, the, the, uh, the impact and, and ferocity of the, of the Russian invasion. They had to go back to the eastern positions and dig in, right? On the Ukrainian front, it wasn't the Ukrainians that were lying. It was the American military that knew better and the American generals that knew better that in my opinion, serve them lies. And I don't think America has bad intelligence. I think America operates on their own. America operates on their own uh, framework on, on how, uh, what, whatever is supposed to be beneficial to them. And I think if you're operating on that, if you're operating on whatever is beneficial to you and your military industrial complex is, is, uh, you know, using older supplies, sending it in the fucking Ukraine, turning around and then uh, having to uh, re-up their supply because now they're depleted and they're getting all those, uh, they're getting bigger budgets that they can justify. The stock market is doing well for defense. Then why the fuck wouldn't they continue this war? The one thing I will say here is that I think I think is Russian imperialism purely motivated by capital interests? Yes. Yes. It is. Um the one thing I will say is that Russia also would benefit from a ceasefire, at least if that ceasefire came with economic cooperation and, and favorable conditions for uh, their continued collaboration with the Western world. Like, people always forget that ceasefire negotiations or all matter of negotiations do not only occur on the basis of who has more physical leverage, like how you can push someone uh, to engage in actions that they don't want to engage in. Like it's not just the negative reinforcement. There is also positive reinforcements that you can also, um, you can also push for. This would of course require America to take a bit of an L when it comes to the American oil and gas industry making up for the the uh for making up for i guess like some of the gas that russia sends into europe it would cut into their profit margins and they will never do that so it's considered uh you know majorly beneficial for 
the oil and gas sector in the United States of America to continue doing this war, to continue uh, uh, severing, forcibly trying to sever Russia's economic relations with European countries. That's it. I don't know what to think of the economic cooperation. Sure, it had damaged the USA's grip on Europe, but I can't imagine it happening so long as Putin is in power. It was already happening. A ceasefire would mean that the West accepts forcefully moving borders through military power, a new age. Yeah, dude. That surely has never happened. Like, that's why Golan Heights is actually technically Israel and not Syria. That just kind of happened. A new age in the sense that... A new age in the sense that someone who isn't sanctioned by the West is able to do this. No, it's not another scale at all. You're wrong. The only thing new about this process is that this would be an outward openly hostile foreign adversary that is able to do this that is outside of the sphere of influence of the west that's able to do this and that still happens by the way you just don't hear about it because it's not something that's like you know talked about in the media anyway this is a, I think, byproduct of, of America's grip of power waning in the global stage. I think that definitely is a, is a very real thing. We've entered a new era of history on that front, I will admit. Okay, my man said Golan Heights question mark. <laughs> Golan Heights is, is annexed Israeli territory that Israel took by force and never gave up. It's actually Syrian land. Azerbaijan with Armenia is one example of this. Eh, not necessarily because Azerbaijan was uh, uh, an Azerbaijan was aligned with Israel, and Azerbaijan also supplies Israel with oil and gas through Turkey, by the way. And Azerbaijan was armed with Israeli arms, so they were allowed to do that. So it's still technically within the Western sphere of influence. If anything, you could say that like the Azerbaijan-Armenia situation only came to that conclusion or came to be because of Russia leaving it alone. Because Russia as a regional actor, Russia as the regional superpower there was always keeping that situation in check to a certain degree. So, you have to remember that. I agree with you on Putin's military intel lacking, which is why he made the mistake of going to Kiev itself. But the Baltic pipeline construction began in 2020 and would have heavily undermined the Nord Stream pipelines and likely weakened Russia's ability to dismantle Germany and France from NATO economically. No. Yes, there are other, there are certainly uh, competing elements. I agree. But I think ultimately it would have just made it cheaper. But Russia still would have, uh, lowered its pricing, but w would have still engaged in economic cooperation. Why do you have such a hate boner for Russia? Do I fucking suck Putin's dick every day of the week, or do I have a hate boner for Russia? Which one is it, guys? Yes, both. Whichever is more favorable to me in this particular moment where I can trigger you and anger you. Somehow both. Pick one, chat. Pick one and go along with it. You're too anti-Putin? Yeah, of course I'm anti-Putin. Why wouldn't I be anti-Putin? He is like, I'm anti-Erdogan as well. The fuck? Yes, dude. I don't like Vladimir Putin, who is a fucking counter-revolutionary, anti-socialist, anti-communist, fascist piece of shit. Why wouldn't I be fucking 
against him. Like, I don't understand. People literally think like he's... Do you still think that he is like uh, some kind of socialist hero or something? The EFF is an anti-Putin. Yes, I know that I know why other factions in the global south especially don't have um uh don't have that same opinion, but I think that's a strategic one. It's for leverage, if that makes sense. Uh oh. Putin's coming after me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh no. Oh no. Mini F. Putin sends his regards. Pooty poo. I lied. I love you. I'm so sorry. Please don't, please don't fucking destroy my channel. Oh no. <laughs> okay, we're back. Thank God. Oh my God, I was scared. Putin hit me with a fucking EMP. Uh, second thought, I believe, made a video on this. What happens when evil wins? And I think we should talk about that. Putin almost annexed my ass, dude. Brought to you by the generous support of my patrons on Patreon. Get some cool perks and help support the show by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash second thought. I also recently launched a new channel dedicated to the nuts and bolts of making a living as a creative. If that sounds like something you'd enjoy, you can check it out at the link below. Alright, I'm back with the lo-fi setup again. This is, this is one of those topics where I don't want to be a professional presenter. I just want to talk to you as a human being who's been watching the worst images I've seen in my life over the past few months and try to work through some of it. On October 7th, 2023, the Palestinian resistance took the fight to the Israeli occupation and knocked the wind out of them a little bit. For those who somehow aren't aware of the situation in Gaza, the Palestinian people have been subjected- Wait, what happened in Gaza? To a brutal and genocidal occupation for three quarters of a century. It's a long story, and if you'd like to hear more of it, we put out a First Thought Analysis episode a while back that covers the history of Israel and the beginning of their ethnic cleansing campaign. We also did a deprogram episode with the wonderful people who run DecolonizePalestine.com, uh, and another good resource is Ilan Pape's book, The Ethnic Cleansing of Palestine. Pape is an Israeli historian, so before you go accusing me of only suggesting pro-Palestine sources, maybe give that one a read. You can find all these things linked in the description. For those who can't be bothered, here's a very short summary of what led up to this point. As anti-Semitism flared up in Europe in the midst of the world wars, we also saw the development of the political Zionist movement, which was basically a push to establish a Jewish ethnostate somewhere in the world. That should have been the first red flag. Ethnostates aren't generally a good thing. You might be surprised to learn that Palestine was not the only option on the list. There were multiple other locations considered, on different continents. And all of those places were already occupied. As the evil of fascism threatened Jewish people in Europe, and to a lesser extent, the rest of the world, political Zionism won a certain amount of perceived legitimacy, especially among the British elite. In 1948, with the violent support of the British military, the State of Israel was founded on stolen Palestinian land. And it's important to note here that stolen land doesn't mean unoccupied space. It's not like the locals were going, ooh, you stole my empty patch of dirt. No. The European invaders forcibly seized critical Do you have an explanation why criticism of Israel is much stronger in the USA than in Europe, although Europe is generally less hawkish than the USA still due to the Second War? Um, is it? I mean, I don't, I don't think so. I think, like, it's relatively the same. There's a shit ton of people criticizing it. Um, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. I feel like this is anecdotal. People are criticizing the shit out of Israel and Europe, too. Unless you're talking about Germany, and we don't talk about Germany on this broadcast, okay? I'm done. I'm done with Germany. Me and Germany, we severed ties, okay? Farmland, port cities, stretches of coastline, 
places that were occupied and served a vital role in Palestinian life. Of course, all of this was perfectly legal according to very official pieces of paper, so the colonists could wave off the atrocities they committed to claim the land. One of these documents, UN Resolution 181, gave the settlers 55% of the land, which is made even more absurd by the fact that the UN had no legal right to do so and did not consult with the Palestinian people before adopting the resolution. Unsurprisingly, they were pissed, and war broke out. What followed is today known as the Nakba, or Catastrophe. Between 1947 and 1949, some 750,000... One last thing about Germany, I have to pay a fine of 300 euro for making your we should arm Hamas like the IDF joke on Twitter? No way! You, in Germany, tried to do a fucking joke theft? And you got fucking fined? That's awesome! That's kind of lame. I'm sorry that that happened to you, Chatter. That's hilarious, though. That is pretty fucking funny. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yes, I got fucked in the ass. Holy shit. That sucks. Hassan no longer allowed in Germany. I can say whatever the fuck I want. I'm a goddamn American, okay? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Well, as long as my internet is still working, holy shit, I keep getting hit with EMPs left and right. Little baby F's happening. Wheezy F baby. Um, yeah, I don't think people understand. That's not how this goes, baby. That's not how this goes at all. Do you know where I'm from? Do you know how things work? Because let me tell you, I'm from the land of the free. I'm from the home of the brave. I'm a goddamn American citizen. You think those fucking krauts who ate lead and sucked shit during World War motherfucking two that now have to say, please, sir, I will jump for you, but with a Germane accent. You think those goddamn krauts have anything to tell me? You think that I do not have the passport that says I do whatever the fuck I want. I'm a goddamn American. I defend the goddamn world. I fund the military of the entire Western world, soldier. Do you understand what that means? That means I go to any goddamn country and do whatever the fuck I want. I get drunk, I get loud, and I get proud for the United States of America. Think a goddamn germ is gonna tell me I can't say whatever the fuck I want? Don't make me don't make me rebuild Israel on top of your goddamn house, Germany. Because if I willed it as a goddamn American, I could. And I probably should have. Okay. Don't make me bring managed democracy to Germany, okay? Thousand Palestinians were expelled from their ancestral home. The Zionists seized 78% of historic Palestine, ethnically cleansed and bulldozed over 500 villages and cities, and killed at least 15,000 Palestinians in the process. Today, settlers who were there at the time laugh about the atrocities they committed on camera.
‫היא עומד, עומדת כיתה של אה, אה, זה עם ידיים למעלה, ‫אז באותו יום הייתי רואה אותה, ‫הייתי קוצר את כולם עד כדי כך. ‫כמה אתה חושב אנשים הרגת ככה? <laughs> ‫לא ספרתי. <laughs> ‫אני לא יכול לדעת בחיי. ‫היה לי, היה לי מקלע עם 250 כדורים, <laughs> ‫ותראה, יריתי, נלחמתי כולם, <laughs> ‫אני לא יכול לספור. Years from now, students will write papers comparing the Holocaust and the Nakba, and the racial animus that drove both genocides. And a lot of liberals currently both sides in this genocide will nod very seriously and say, oh, we just didn't know how bad it was. Just like the good Germans did back in the 40s. It was bullshit then, and it's bullshit now. Yep. A lot of people think that the Nakba ended in 1948. It didn't. That was just the first major escalation of a campaign of complete extermination that continues to this day. When you see the Twitter posts saying things like, there was a ceasefire on October 6th, realize that the people saying those things are either ignorant, in which case you can help them by providing resources, or are actively trying to obfuscate the truth. We know Israel has an army of paid posters to disseminate propaganda and shut down criticism online. Since the day the first European colonists set foot in Palestine, there has been a non-stop stream of crimes committed in the name of the political Zionist project. Palestinian homes are regularly and illegally demolished. Palestinians face arbitrary arrests and humiliating checkpoints just getting to school and back. Entire villages are ethnically cleansed specifically for recently migrated European and American Jews to build new settlements on Palestinian land. Again, these settlements are internationally recognized as illegal by international law. And this point is reiterated at every UN summit to no meaningful change. The Gaza Strip, populated by over 2 million people, I don't know what the fuck's going on. There's just like... Why is their stream going so weirdly? I don't know. I, I actually don't know what's happening. My, uh, like, there was a baby outage though. Bull in an area about the size of Detroit is entirely- It's been like this all damn week? No, it hasn't. No, the, no, this entire week has not been like this at all. This is the first time I'm experiencing these like outages, these like minor outages. And I have no idea why it's happening. It's very annoying though. They cut off from the rest of the world. All entrances in and out of Gaza are controlled by the Israeli military. Imports and exports are heavily restricted. And employment opportunity- Why does it matter where the settlers come from Europe? Does that make them worse than Mizrahi settlers? Uh, I don't think so. I think, like, a lot of Americans try to understand this from the same framework of, like, white-black dynamics of white supremacy. That's probably what it is. I think that's why they keep talking about, like, Ashkenazi Jews. But, uh, but when he's, when, when, uh, JT's talking about it, he's basically talking about it from the perspective of history. These are essentially non-existent. Nearly all water he resources are undrinkable that. by design and civilian infrastructure is regularly targeted by Israeli airstrikes. Permits are routinely denied for the building of homes, civilian infrastructure, roads, sewage systems, and schools. Call it what it is, a concentration camp. If you force a population into an- Mizrahis are effectively white in the same way Sicilians are, be for fucking real? No. They're Arab in the same way that, like, Arabs are white. If that's what you're talking about, then- like, Mizrahis are Arab, dog. That's, like, it's crazy. In an enclosed area, you control the food, the water, electricity, fuel, medicine, literally everything that goes in or out. If you put a high-tech fence around it with facial recognition and automated guns, if you routinely kill the people inside to further your goal of an ethnostate, what separates you from the Nazis? It's hard not to get angry when you're talking about this stuff, because it's... It's so incredibly obvious who the bad guys are. And yet Israel dumps massive sums of money into pretending they're the victims. I don't know about you, but I've never seen a victim who can shut off their oppressor's food, water, power, and ability to move freely on a whim. So now I'm going to have to make an assumption, because I'm not going to waste my time trying to win over people who still think Israel is in the right, when they've seen all the same footage that I've seen. Either you're a decent person, or you're not. 
So the assumption I'm going to make is that if you're still watching this video, you're one of those decent people. We're on the same page. What's happening in Gaza is the most blatant example of genocide in modern history. For the rest of the video, I want to talk about we need to be careful about comparisons to the Holocaust, but I don't know what other context you can put something like this in. I mean, there's like plenty of other genocides that you can point to, but like the Holocaust is the most, uh, the Holocaust is the most visible one that everyone knows of. Like if you talk about like what the Belgians did in the Congo, people don't fucking know or give a shit about it. You know what I mean? Or even the, the uh, Armenian genocide, as a matter of fact. But I think like a big part of the reason why um, people bring up the Holocaust because Israel brings up Holocaust. Like defenders of Israel bring up the Holocaust all the fucking time. A big part of the reason for Israel's existence and then the violent ways that it exists unironically is as a defense of a potential future Holocaust. That's what they say, which is why I think people go, what do you mean the Holocaust, brother? You are doing something comparable now obviously not to the same severity but still if there is a mechanized machine of death here against a marginalized population that it is uh unjustifiably destroying then you're closer to the nazis and the holocaust analogy no matter how hard you try to fucking claim that like every palestinian baby has like mind control powers or whatever and that's uh, to and they are like the most rabid anti-Semites or some shit. What that means. What does it tell us when a country like Israel can commit these monstrous acts and face zero consequences? When it can be condemned by the vast majority of the world, including institutions like the UN, and get away with it? When we see this on Twitter, and the Western press still says that this is all Palestine's fault, it takes 34 seconds of scrolling just to get to the names of children one year old. To put the scale of Israel's crimes against children in perspective, in the final years of the war, when Germany was really ramping up their extermination campaign, the Nazis killed 127 children per day. Have you ever covered in-depth Plan Dalit on your channel? It's basically in writing what the Zionists wanted to do? Yes, of course I have. Yes, of course. Day in Auschwitz. Israeli occupation forces are now killing 139 children per day. At time of writing, Israel has killed over 27,000 Palestinians in four months. Compare that to the 15,000 killed over a two-year period during the Nakba. And yet, despite those numbers, despite the massive rallies for Palestine around the world, despite politicians getting shoes thrown at them and trade being disrupted, we still hear nothing from the corporate media. And we can't seem to budge the leaders of the Western world. Why? The easy answer is that Israel serves the interest of the United States. Here's Joe Biden back in the 1980s. There's no apology to be made. None. It is the best $3 billion investment we make. Were there not an Israel, the United States of America would have to invent an Israel to protect her interest in the region. He's pretty wild how big of a, like, he is unironically one of the biggest dick riders of Israel and has been for so long. What do you think Ethan would say about this? Since he thinks JT's a thing. I don't care, dude. Like that's such a silly way to approach internet content. Okay. I said, I said back then that I like JT and that I think that it would be better for him to defend his positions I'm not trash talking Ethan at all, by the way, uh, like for people who try to fucking consistently uh, turn this into like drama farming. Ethan is my friend. We may have disagreements every now and then, but I have maintained the position that he, his heart is always in the right place. And he's on a journey of learning. And as far as second thought goes, I think that if they had a conversation, it would be, um, he could, he could describe his position better and clarify his perspective. I also do despise like this attitude in this community. Um, of like the long-term community members 
who just didn't fucking like leftovers, who are so rabid. Like, you guys did absolutely contribute. Just so you know, you did. You did. Y'all are rabid as fuck. You do not know how to behave tactfully. You do not know how to behave strategically. You do not know how to behave in general. You think it's like moral consistency and you personally think that it's like you're doing something revolutionary. You're not. Yeah. This community wonders why people are afraid of collaborating with you. Yeah. My, my, my long-term community members and subscribers, I love you all for your support over the course of many, many years, but you do sometimes have a tendency to behave in a rabid manner and operate in the most like, purity-focused ways possible. Nobody ever thinks about the impact of certain things. Nobody ever thinks about the impact of having a show like Leftovers that goes to a much broader audience. You know who thinks about that, though? People who fucking despise my commentary. They think about it all the time. They hated it for that very same reason. And that's precisely the reason why they worked very hard, tirelessly, to fucking end it. So, it's uh, odd to see... Uh, you know, the handshake emoji happened from my most rabid and longest supporters and my most rabid and longest haters in terms of, you know, taking out another opportunity for a much larger audience to see in a positive way, in a positive way, what uh, a broader audience of normies could see Leftist commentary and an introduction to leftist commentary. Anyway. The United States would have to go out and invent an Israel. The U.S. and its vassal states depend on having strategic footholds all over the world. Israel is crucial in that regard, serving as a destabilizing force in the region, a useful intelligence outpost, a hub for Western personnel, and of course, a lucrative trade partner, especially when it comes to weapons of war. But still, when the backlash is this intense, when politicians are being harassed wherever they go, when activists are shutting down weapons plants, blocking ships bound for Israel, when Biden's approval rating is the lowest of any modern president, wouldn't it just be easier to give some concessions? To give Israel a slap on the wrist and make them stop the worst of their atrocities for at least a little while. This is how normal people think. This is not how world leaders, fascists, and oligarchs think. Joe Biden, as mentally unfit as he is for the job, is still the president of the United States. He is the most powerful man in the world. Things like civilian casualties are nothing more than one of many pieces of paper that cross his desk on any given day. People hating him is part of the job. International crises are part of the job. He, like every other president, sees the rest of us as NPCs. Little sims running around his country. We're insignificant. If we have a little red angry face over us, he can pull some levers and distract the majority of people with war over Ukraine, or Taiwan, or even just ignore them for a few months. And this isn't to rag on the average person. Most people are busy. We don't have the time to get to the bottom of every geopolitical issue. It's just to say that when you are in a position of power, you have options to make your problems go away. And sometimes you don't even need to do anything at all, and the noisy troublemakers will eventually get bored and move on. What recourse do we have in a situation like that? It's easy to say, oh, we just need to dismantle capitalism and destroy the perverse incentives that enable this genocide. But that's not a realistic solution in the short term. I'm talking specifically about the U.S. here. I think it's still underestimated how severe an impact Henry Kissinger's realpolitik philosophy has run rampant in every single White House since Nixon. It's going to be studied and talked about for centuries from now. Eh. I don't think that. Uh, I don't think that we operate on the on. I mean, we we don't ever collaborate with foreign adversaries as openly as Henry Kissinger did, though. I think we're we're way more aggro. I saw you know what I you know what I saw 
this morning when I first woke up. Barack Obama talking about whether he would negotiate with foreign adversaries. Does anyone have that video? Maybe it showed up on your Twitter feed as well, since our Twitter feeds are mostly aligned for the most part. You might have seen that as well. I forget who posted it. I love everyone going, I don't use Twitter. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's what a strong nation does. It was during the primaries in 2008. Yep. Barack Obama was asked during the primaries in 2008 and very, very solidly and in a very charismatic way, planted his feet, 10 toes down, and said, of course I would negotiate with our foreign adversaries. That's crazy. And then he did the most charismatic Barack Obama thing you can do which was to turn around and say that if you like watching the three-minute ad break at the top of the hour, you can keep it. But if you don't want to watch it, then guess what? You can subscribe for $5 or for free. And pussy too. You can also get gifted a sub. Call that universal health care. No, this is not it. Let us never fear to negotiate Obama quoting Kennedy at, to in, at, to, at Institute of Dedication. That's not the one. Your Obama impersonation is, is terrible. That's because I'm not racist, dog. That's why. I can't, I can't impersonate a black man. That's what it is. <laughs> Uh, we killed some folks. Stop, you U.S. wannabe leftism. <laughs> uh, yes, my wannabe leftism, my wannabe U.S. leftism. A little bit more vocal fry on the uh, uh, and pussy too, and pussy too. See my fucking name? Yes, dude. Anarcho Syndicalist 1312. Ooh. He's going to toss a Molotov cocktail at a cop car, okay? The real left is here, guys. A 14 year old who still doesn't know how to read. The perfect anarchist. I love that Cine Marxism is. Also an anarchist, but yet he doesn't he doesn't claim he is. He doesn't uh, he, he he acts like he's not, and even has his own emote that's anti anarchist. He is right about Nithya, though. To be fair, and the fucking council members that are like pro Israel. Which I hate to admit. Just hate to admit it, but, you know, not wrong. I'm third gen socialist. You are TYT shit. <laughs> Inexcusable. Thank you for mentioning that, bro. Yeah, he's I fucking hate to admit that, but he's right about that. I miss it in Marxism and surprisingly it doesn't smell bad. Yeah, of course it doesn't smell bad. What the fuck? If he was that crusty of an anarchist, I would not work with him. Okay. If he was that crusty of an anarchist, he wouldn't work. First of all. <laughs> My man said, I'm third gen socialist. Like he, it's been passed down genetically. Socialism is in his genes, dude. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Okay, dude. I I'm glad to know that your grandpappy didn't take showers either, okay? <laughs> you 
He's like, my grandfather never showered. My dad also didn't shower. And I am continuing the tradition of not showering. Hey, Achilles, thank you for the 10 gift subs, allowing 10 people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. The unjustifiable hierarchy strikes once again. Um, anyway. Is this the Obama? Oh my God. This is literally 1P. Chad, this is how we used to see the television. And the reason is this, that the notion that somehow not talking to countries uh, is punishment to them, uh, which has been the guiding uh, diplomatic principle of this administration, is ridiculous. Now, Ronald Reagan and Democratic presidents like JFK constantly spoke to Soviet Union at a time when Ronald Reagan called them an evil, evil empire. And the reason is because they understood that we may not trust them, they may pose an extraordinary danger to this country, uh, but we have the obligation to find uh, areas where we can potentially move forward. Yeah, this was like, this was his position. And to a certain degree, he did hit that line. Where, what happened to the Anson 1312? I love, my granddad was in prison for helping socialists and Jews. My dad and mother sent money to Vietnam. What was your fascist family doing killing Kurds? Yeah. I love this chatter and I mean it unironically. I love him or them. I, I don't know. No, I, he's still talking about his family, dude. Like, what are you doing, brother? That's what... <laughs> You're going to turn him into a right-winger? Yeah, he's going to go from anarcho-syndicalism to Trotskyism to, to uh, being a Larishite and inevitably a neocon, okay? <laughs> it's going to happen. But I'm not even joking. I, I do love that guy. Like, it's not even a, it's not even a joke. And I don't think you guys should pile on him. I, I do love people like this. All jokes aside, like, people like that do do a lot of, uh, uh, you know, they're the guys that have, like, they're the they're the dudes that have like uh you know that are always at the forefront of mutual aid things like that. I'm Antifa and I hate you guys, Vosh Desterny. <laughs> okay, this is the most fourteen year old anarchist I've ever seen though. Online anarchists do not do groundwork. They post gun GoFundMe's on Twitter. Okay, fair. Some of them. Is the kind of dude to show up to a DSA meeting with a water balloon? Yeah, no. Um, when you're when you're such a when you're such a puritanical anarchist that you believe the greatest enemy, what have you done but get rich? Great question. Um, there is a long, long list of things that I've done, but I think the greatest thing that I've done is fuck your mom, chatter. Like, I love that you went, my granddad was in prison for helping socialists and Jews and my dad and mother sent money to Vietnam. Like your dad and mother's bona fides are sending money to Vietnam and you're sitting here not even thinking a little bit about the amount of funds that I've raised, not only for labor unions, but also on top of that, um, direct victims of imperialism uh, in the third world. 
like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm kind of clearing your dad and mom right now pretty hard. If, if the, if the only thing they got is, is sending money to Vietnam. Okay. But the end all be all is like, you're roasting a child. Calm down. It's true. It's true. I shouldn't do that. Also, I don't know what he's done, but then again, it's because they're 14, so they have a long way to go. You are nothing but a creep online. <laughs> I still love you, Chatter. I think you're a little bit misguided. When you learn to read, things are going to get, things are going to look up for you. Okay, once you figure out reading, oh my God, dude. Life is going to change for you dramatically. I suggest Lennon. I suggest angles first an infantile disorder, and then you can pick up maybe, uh, you know, start off with Lenin, and oh my God, so you are a bigot. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, what? It, why am I a bigot? Okay, I'm enjoying this conversation way too much. I've read Lenin before you were born. You were not alive when I was born. And that is me being charitable to you because you cannot be this much of a meme, this much of like a extremely online wrecker anarchist. Oh God, I really don't want, no, you should not have admitted that. Truly an infantile disorder. At least you stay young. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. He is crusty as hell. Oh, no. There ain't no way Big Homie is 44 years old. I thought 14. I already, I already, uh, uh, ran the top of the hour, bro. If you're 44 years old and you're still talking about your parents' accomplishments, as far as like your left is bona fides, I'm going to be honest with you. You, <laughs> you got to get to work dog. <laughs> like you're a 44 year old anarchist. <clears throat> God damn, dude. Anarchists really don't want to work, huh? This is fucking allergic. <laughs> you are I'm Antifa. You are not good at this argument. Yeah, you're you're doing anti fascism here. Please ignore the hate comments. Come on. This is not a hate comment. We're just having fun. My granddad got beat up, but fun. <laughs> I, I love this guy. Okay, uh, let's get back to second thought. We don't have anywhere near the level of class consciousness needed to build a revolution. Not in a timely manner, at least. So we find ourselves in a position where it looks like evil has won. Where no matter what we do, Israel is still going to bomb Gaza, 
and the U.S. is still going to give them the bombs, and the media is still going to say that your eyes are lying to you, and that it's actually the Israelis who are the victims. That sounds pretty bleak. And it is. There's, there's no denying that this is a pretty grim timeline. The United States is a tremendous force for evil in the world. There's a reason it's the most hated country on Earth. And there's a reason most Americans aren't aware of that fact. But here's the thing, and this might sound a little flowery at first, but, but bear with me. Even though evil may seem like it's one, even though the U.S. and Israel may seem impossible to overcome, there will come a day when historians can look back and soberly assess the crimes of these regimes as past projects. The U.S. empire is on the decline. I made a video about that a little while back. It cannot sustain itself the way it has since the post-war years. The United States as we know it today will fade. It may not disappear completely, but its relevance will wane. Israel will go the way of Rhodesia and apartheid South Africa. As long as projects like these are reviled and opposed by the majority of working people, they will eventually succumb to the weight of their own contradictions. And there's a fine line to walk between this is inevitable and this cannot last forever. Assuming something is inevitable is not the correct approach. That leads to complacency. But recognizing that evil cannot stand against the determination of the masses forever, that's inspiring. That leads to people getting involved, joining organizations, actively working to prevent mm -hmm. things like what's happening in Gaza. Hope and determination is the right approach, not complacency. And certainly not doomerism. Yes, it's incredibly painful to watch the footage coming out of Palestine. Yes, it's normal to feel overwhelmed or helpless. But all you have to do is search the words Palestine march or rally, and you'll be reminded that millions and millions of ordinary people just like us are making a difference. We're helping get food and medicine to people who need it. We're educating our peers. And most importantly, we are scaring the criminals enabling this genocide, whether they admit it or not. Another thing to consider is that even though there are something like 40% of Americans who still support Israel, that number is dropping. Ugopnik made a fantastic video a few weeks ago about the era of war crime influencers, where he talked about this bizarre need the occupation forces seem to have to broadcast their hideous war crimes to the world. I'm sure you've heard the quote, never interrupt your enemy when they're making a mistake. The Israeli apartheid regime is making a mistake by not cracking down on their stormtroopers blasting their war crimes out on TikTok. No one on earth can watch these freaks cackling about blowing up homes and Okay. Back to the anarcho-syndicalist chatter. You love Destiny. I saw he was a bigot, which was a wild thing to say. I'm not scared of a US liberal. You support capitalism, May and did not pay your worker or spread your wealth, here we are with your Vosh-like cultist. I keep having to untime him out because Fossabot keeps clapping him. He did. He destroyed me. Am I wrong, little boy? Uh, yes. I don't even understand why this person thinks I like Destiny. That chatter has the most fucked up YouTube algo, I'm calling it. I don't understand how someone can be a 44-year-old person who's like this brain broken and this oblivious to like any of my positions, anything I've ever done, but yet this passionate about his anger. I think pretty much every single thing you've brought up so far, including really funny things like, like claiming that I like destiny who was probably my number one cyber stalker. And will most likely be my number one cyber stalker. 
I don't really know how you can get everything so wrong. Like everything you have thought about me, I'm almost certain is the exact opposite. Anarchists are so based. No, 100%. As a fan of H Bomber, etc., I was a fan of H Bomber, etc., and you online leftists are just here for YouTube money. I think this is your issue that you mistake. People that are doing propaganda for the left as anything but propagandists, and you think they're supposed to be revolutionary figures. I am genuinely enjoying this because he's like, he's like Jesse Lee uh, Peterson way. Uh, like he's out there in the same way that like Jesse Lee Peterson is. In the past, socialists at least had the decency to start hating anarchists after the revolution. Yes. I don't think this guy is trolling. I think he might genuinely be like a 44-year-old French anarchist or something. which is awesome. Danish anarchist. Okay. My love for you grows ever more. Every single new thing you type in the chat makes me like you even more. And I don't even mean that. Ironically, I'm not being I'm not saying this sarcastically. I'm I legitimately mean this. Denmark is a racist hellhole, but I try. You're definitely one of the better leftist propagandists in the U.S., no fucking doubt. I, I like to think so, but... Wait, you love this crusty motherfucker? Yeah, I love... I love anarchists. The fuck do you mean? I think, like, if you... If you spend enough time in this community, you probably recognize that like e almost every single joke I make about the left and the divisions within the extremely online left still ultimately comes from a place of love, unless we're talking about debate pedophiles, in which case there's no love there. But but for the most part, yeah, like, I mean, I, I make jokes about anarchists being crusty. I make jokes about uh, Marxist Leninists being uh, annoying and, and uh, also engaging in uh, oftentimes, maybe sometimes historical revisionism or fantasizing about uh, a, a, a existing real world of socialism that was actually perfect existing real socialism that was definitely infallible and perfect and that uh and that like we have to go back to that same era without any consideration for the current material conditions what whatsoever you know what i mean I want to know what gave them the impression that you're friends with D. I don't know, but I, I love him regardless. This is a good summary of this debate. My friend just showed me the scene from a German film last year, and now I need to see the full film. I'm a communist, and what are you? I'm an anarchist. Cool, we can be friends until the revolution. After that, it gets difficult. Yeah. Like, see? Look, look. I had a Palestina flag in my window since 2004, but I also have an LGBT flag and the Kurdish flag. Cool, man. I'm glad you're doing your part with your flags in Denmark. That's great.
What is this? Dude, he is standing next to Destiny. No, I dislike Pac-Man, but he is no Destiny. What? Is this the guy? No. How the fuck did you all find his Twitter account? <laughs> okay, we're done. I think that's why... I think that that is the reason why he thinks I'm friends with this fucking guy. Can we move on? Colorado is under attack from a Chinese spy balloon. Another Chinese spy balloon. God damn it. Finally, I did it after hours. Hey, Felix Biederman, first discovery. Let's go. Yeah, brother, let me tell you something, okay? Um, that image has led you astray. This is from a very long time ago. <laughs> I hope you understand. Denland. Bro, it's really funny how you have haters in every camp. You have a knack for drawing out people's insecurities. Joe, many liberals does it take to change a log by bulb? None. They're too busy. Their gender. I love that. Okay, stop posting your... Fucking additional information. <laughs> the left left is destroyed. Okay, okay, let's continue. Let's continue with this. I've I forgot where I was. I'm heading out to the in the subie with my rifle ain't letting no damn liberal Chinese commie balloon in this state. These mountains will stay free. Okay, stop voluntarily giving out your information in front of 20,000 people, anarcho-syndicalist chatter. That's ridiculous. You're being crazy. Murdering children without at least a little bit of cognitive dissonance. Even the staunchest supporters of Israel are squirming just a little bit. Except, of course, the ones paid handsomely not to squirm. Israel has shown the world what it represents. It stands for genocide, apartheid, ethno-nationalism, a fascistic desire to cleanse a land they believe belongs to them, and build pizza places and hotels on the graves of the indigenous population. No matter how hard the colonists try to erase the past by destroying mosques, universities, burial sites, entire villages, they can never convince anyone but themselves that they are indigenous to the land they are so callously destroying. Uprooting trees, salting the earth, poisoning the water. Native populations don't do that to the land they love. So let them show the world who they are and what they stand for. Every video posted to TikTok, every piece of propaganda debunked, it will all go in the history books when inevitably this genocidal regime is relegated to the dustbin of history. The only way to ensure a bright and peaceful future in the region is to reestablish Palestine as it was before the Zionist project. A multicultural, multi-faith community with roots reaching far back into history. A beautiful past that should be celebrated, not bulldozed and turned into a theme park, not ethnically cleansed and its history rewritten to fit some modern myth. As much as evil will try to win, its own inhumanity will be its destruction. The world sees Israel for what it really is, and one day, will remember Israel for what it really was. These days, it's pretty hard to find someone who will admit they supported Rhodesia or apartheid South Africa, but they're still around, pretending like they didn't act just like the supporters of Israel are acting today. So, what happens when evil wins? Evil doesn't win. At least... 
I don't agree with you on everything, but overall, you have very rational takes, and I appreciate your impact you've had on the commentary in the U.S. I hadn't even heard the perspective of the Palestinians before your coverage, and I'm sure there are a lot of other people who would say the same. Well, that's my goal. Um, what is this? I'm Antifa and fought Sargon. Come incels. Love TYT, so this is a scheme. There's no way you're still looking at this chatter. Brother, he is literally delivering. Okay? You love the gray wolves, he said. Yes. Bit me. A, a big, huge fan. Unironic, huge fan. Dude, listen, listen, listen. Listen. At a certain point, I don't want to be ableist. But, like, Maybe you need to recognize things about yourself as far as like not picking up on context uh, clues and like, and, and perhaps like you can't parse through me being sarcastic or joking and mocking something versus me being like an unironic fan of said things. Nice fallacy. No, it's not a fallacy. No, I'm I'm describing to I'm t trying to explain to you in really really nice ways in as nice as I physically humanly possibly can that you're you're wrong. Like you're just completely wrong in the funniest ways possible. I I made no fallacy or anything here. I don't even know what fallacy you think I I, I brought to the table, but you're, <laughs> if you think I'm a gray wolf, then I, I don't know what to tell you. I think you just probably saw jokes that I've made and took it seriously because there is not a single ultra nationalist gray wolf that unironically recognizes like seriously recognizes the Armenian genocide or even talks about uh, Turkish military actions in the Northern Syrian corridor against the Kurds. Like, uh, as a matter of fact, I am probably at risk if I were to go to Turkey, mostly by gray wolves. If I were to uh, go back to Turkey at all for the things that I've said, So he's referring to your reaction to this video. I mean, this video is a banger. Gray wolves are, um, gray wolves are the, the name for Turkish ultra nationalists. Um, in Panturanist and like Turkic mythology, the gray wolf is very important. Yeah, I mean, this is a banger, objectively. In real life, near a gray wolf. <laughs> I think Armenian genocide, I am instantly killed by a guy turning into a werewolf because I called it Armenian genocide and Armenian nothing. Yeah, geno lie. <laughs> I mean, they have. Was, it Wasn't it a gray wolf that killed uh, Hurant Dink? The Armenian, uh, the Armenian Turkish uh, journalist? Like, they, you would get, I would get literally fucking murked for, if I was doing this commentary, if I was doing the commentary that I do about Turkey in Turkey, one, I would go to jail, obviously. And then two, I would get stabbed and killed in jail by an ultranationalist. Abart. Abart değil bu. Ya o kadar da değil. Hem diyorsun Türkiye'ye gelsen ülkücüler seni siker. Ondan sonra diyorsun ki babanın dayının filan yaşadığı ülke kalmadı. Don't know, 
Hünkar dediler öldürür demediler to be fair. Çalara <gülüyor> yürü yürü yürü yürü yürü yolumuz uzun. Hasan, this is your chick is coming home to roost. Finally, we found the chatter that has no understanding of any sort of sarcasm and has consumed too much of your content. This is the final form of no jokes. Yeah. Uh, I have translated the lyrics as like super fucking ultra nationalist. Um, back in the day, I don't remember what the exact lyrics are. I'm not going to go through it again, but it's crazy. Like they're saying... Um, long live our race. Um, one Turk is like, or 40 Turks is worth the entirety of China. Um, it's like, it's like very racist, but it slaps. Which is so funny when you're like, when you're like talking about China as a Turkish guy. When you're talking about China as a Turkish guy, it's like, why, what? Like, he literally thinks that we're still like, you know, Genghis Khan. That's why it's funny. Yeah. Here. Yaşasın ırkımız, Çin'e bedel kırkımız. Long live our race. 40 of us are enough for China. Our ballad is sung from eras to eras. Our homeland is Turan. Our army is Atsız' youth. Atsız is um, Hüseyin Nihal Atsız, who's like a fascist Turkish guy. Um, Ulusun Kurdumuz, not a regular wolf, the wolf that has saved the Turkish people, which is mentioned in the epic of Bozkurt Asena. So, Panturanism and like uh, Turkic mythology is fucking sick. It's actually really sick it, in the sense that like, um, at least there's something there, you know what I mean? It's not like fake in the way that Germans tried to develop some kind of national mythos in in uh, fascist Germany. Like, you know how the Nazis tried to fucking act like they weren't living in mud huts as they got fucking owned by the Romans and then decided that they were like, sick? Is just Roman shit? No, but I, I feel the same way about Roman uh, mythology as well. I think it's awesome. It's just that you look at it as a story and it's like fun you don't take it seriously and think that this is your, you know, this is your, your, your real life in the same way that like Vikings are cool, but you're not a descendant of Vikings. Does that make sense? Like there is this, there is this line between recognizing uh, nationalist mythos as just a myth and a cool ballad or a song versus uh, versus looking at it and being like, no, this is real. Like, I literally am a descendant of a wolf. You know what I mean? Yeah, did you watch Norseman? Exactly. It Like, Norseman is dope. Fascists delude, delude themselves into supremacy based on myth. Exactly. It's a story though. Ciddili ciddili inanmıyoruz herhalde amana koyayım. Evet de. Uh, even if you don't take it literally. Uh, even if you don't take it literally. there This like still plays a role in your understanding of your culture or whatever. You know what I mean? Um. Valkyrie just posted pics from Milan Fashion Week while Hassan is here explaining Turkish nationalism songs to a random Danish anarchist. Yeah, we all thrive in our different ways, okay? As as streamers, we all have... Uh, for me, this is peak. The, what I'm doing right now is peak content that I make. I wouldn't change this for anything. This is, like, this is what I love. This is extremely my shit. Like 100%. Without turning back, hail our divine cause, nationalist Turkey, from Altai to Danube. It shall happen before the last fire dies. Our black banner shall spread from Turan to Turan. Forward, forward, forward. Our path is eternal on the mounds of the wolf. May the foes fade away. Forward, forward, forward, run. Our path is eternal. The gray wolf howl. May the foes fade away. I 
Ergenekon destanı anlatsana bunlara daha eritmesi versus. Yeah, there's like a lot of a lot of cool. This is what happens when you have like a long fucking history of being like nomadic tribes that ultimately create empires and shit like that. There is like a lot of deep lore that you can tap into. And I think it's all cool as long as you don't take it seriously and think that this means like that you are some kind of fucking supreme race. I feel the exact same way about Roman uh, mythology as well. Like all of it is sick. Greek mythology. It's all great. It's just lore that should be treated as lore and not uh, reflective of the, the, you know, contemporary existence of an entire race of people that's supposed to be like monolithically supreme and superior. Yeah, this is, this is what Valkyrie is doing while I'm, uh, while I'm doing uh, the, the Danish chatter. American mythology is my fave. Well, American mythology is is just capitalism, so it's like kind of weak. That's what I mean. I do think that the Western world, low key, like the Western world that we understand as the Western world, which is comprised of like OECD nations for the most part, lacks the serious mythology with obvious exceptions. America's mythology is white supremacy and uh, white supremacy and, and capitalism, right? Whereas, like, we, we don't, here in America, we just don't really have any of that. Like, we don't have enough history. Whereas, like, the cool stuff would be natives, uh, indigenous tribes, and how they came about. Or the cool stuff would be looking at Latin American countries and their own unique version of, of uh, their, their own national mythos the western world as we understand it rarely ever has like good shit in that on that front you like native lore but not germanic tribes no there's they're cool i mean they were able to fucking hold off the romans in the in the woods and shit i think that's cool the barbarian the barbarians American mythology. I'll leave Europe's Catholic persecution and leave my toothless wife and 16 children. Half of them will die before we make it, but that's a risk I'm willing to take. And once I land, I will start doing insane amounts of murder, like unimaginable amounts of, of epic murder with the hopes that I can like find maybe a little bit of gold in this new land that I found to be prosperous. Uh, Iraqi Syrians and Egyptians don't take Turkish history seriously at all. I mean, yeah, sure. Unless you get exploited by the Anglo-Saxons, in which case you couldn't do shit unless you wanted to die. American mythology is colonizers, fucking llamas, and single-handedly introducing the novel syphilis to Europe. Anyway. Have you seen the Japanese rap trap music video that's going viral? I have not, but this is also another one of my favorite types of... Uh, Genres. Let's move on from the Turkish arabesque trap that's ultra nationalist to the Japanese rap trap. Damn, they're sending location, dude. Team Tomoda, 
They can't even do like guns, handguns, because like they have no guns in Japan. I'm not gonna lie, this doesn't go as hard as I thought it was going to. I'll admit, it's good, but it's not as good as like the Chinese trap we saw a while back. Chinese drill goes way harder than this. I mean, this isn't drill anyway, this is trap. Does anyone have the Chinese one? This is the... This this goes harder, like I'll, I have to admit. Oh God. Tell me that doesn't fucking go hard. Yeah, they even have the fat guy, which equals strong, obviously. I can't wait for Saturday stream discussing the fallout of this. That was that's so sick. Platforming rappers that have murdered people more than likely. Wait, what? <laughs> murdered people you think this guy <laughs> 
Dude, come on. Look at these dudes, bro. <laughs> Anyway. Okay. God damn, that shit was fire. Holy fuck. Yeah, he murdered his homework. That's what he murdered. He got the highest placement in the in the Chinese tests. He making it out the village. <laughs> He's moving to a tier one city, boys. You know what I'm saying? Huh. Please keep the mask on. It's it's hard for me to breathe with the mask. With the with the shiesty. I can't. Like, I was going to try to put the glasses over it, and I was like, I can't do it. Uh, anyway. His career altitude chess just at BTS. Face reveal. Uh, Okay, we took a Filipino drill. Okay, okay, okay. Enough, enough, enough. We took a two. We took too uh, too long of a side quest here. Okay. Oh, by the way, mask is zinity. How nicotine pouch explains the new ethos of young conservative men. You already know, baby. I hope the Danish anarchist now understands. No, he's an anarchist and Danish. He's literally allergic to fun. He thinks this is all reactionary. I'm sorry, guys. I don't think he will ever understand. I will never be able to get a, a, a Danish anarchist to understand what, what it is to laugh. And what it is to have fun, okay? See, he's still over here. So I come from a Maoist white family. I had philosophy at uni and I don't know communism. Well, yes, you don't. But that's uh, for a separate. Brother, if you think... If you think your peak of revolutionary action is to go to one of the only firm anti-imperialist Western uh, news outlets, okay? And to try to do a struggle session with them with like complete erroneous claims that are almost the exact opposite of what you think. If that's what you think is revolutionary action, then yes. I love that he said Maoist and then in parentheses said white because he has to do that because he's a Maoist. Maoist third world is uh, Danish uh, anarcho-syndicalist. <laughs> he's still watching though he just watched a dude dance in a lava with a Daniel Defense Mark 18 <sighs> are you a Zimboy or a Copenhagen lad I used to be a Copenhagen lad but I'm a Zimboy now because like nicotine is just nicotine I don't fuck with tobacco anymore uh, we talked about this all right, let's get to some fucking, some real shit. Oh, this was a fun little moment. Palestinian people use a force to resist foreign oppression and complete the establishment and independent state. It's an inalienable right. This recognition is also reflected in international convention. For example, the Arab Convention for suppressing of terrorism of 1998. He's right. I quote, the right of peoples to combat 
foreign occupation, aggression by whatever means, including armed struggle, in order to liberate the territories and secure the right to self-determination and independence, end of quote. Armed struggle in this context is distinguished from acts of terrorism. But also, obviously, you know, China, much like Russia, still cooperates with Israel, uh, is a trade partner to Israel. Um, I'm going to skip the Netanyahu Gaza future shit. Let's talk to Michigan voters. Uh, there are aspects we have to talk about with Yasmin, who's joining us from Michigan, Dearborn specifically, talking to voters ahead of Tuesday's primary. That is a state, as you well know, Yasmin, where protesters have been very loud against Joe Biden's support for Israel. And as the New York yeah. Times has put it, Michigan's combination of an early primary, a large and politically active Arab American population, progressive students on college campuses, and the option of a protest vote have raised the stakes of what has otherwise been a sleepy election in the state. So what are the voters telling you, Yaz? There's, there's a new poll out, Alex, um, at 45 to 41, in which the former president is leading Joe Biden right now in Michigan. Biden has a problem, Alex, um, in Michigan with the voters that I've, I've been speaking to. These are all folks that voted for Biden um, in 2020. They have committed to voting uncommitted in the Michigan primary uh, next Tuesday. And two of them are very much on the fence in voting for him for re-election in November. The other two absolutely will not be voting for him. They are angry about Gaza. They are angry he has not called for a permanent ceasefire as of yet. And they're angry that he has not come through on the promises he made when he was running for president back in 2020. Let's take a listen, Alex, um, to some of what they said and how they think or they believe um, Biden could possibly make up their vote between now and November. Is there a pathway forward for you with Biden? Oh, absolutely not. You cannot keep killing people with our money and just keep thinking that, oh, we are stupid enough to elect you again because we'll fall in line. We'll forget. How can you, how can, like, this is an insult to me as a voter. For Very you, hard. Biden has a pathway forward. Biden has a pathway forward. It's not and what saying, does that look like? That is him calling for a permanent and immediate ceasefire. The straightforward, simple answer for the Biden administration is push for a ceasefire, stop aiding Israel in their war crimes. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, there are enough people who would be willing to deal with it and vote for the man. It is, in so many words, insane mm -hmm. to me to have the Democratic Party and the Biden administration sit here and essentially say, if Trump happens, it's your fault. If you don't want a Trump presidency, then are you not worried about what he could do domestically yeah. to this country? I am. You know, it's like a vaccine. I'm willing to take short term pain for a long term gain. I'm willing to uh, uh, let go of Joe Biden and oppose Joe Biden, make him a one term president, punish Joe Biden by making him a one term president and pairing his loss with the genocide in Gaza. Why does our democracy, why is having a Trump presidency more important than those people's lives? Mm -hmm. Why is our democracy more important than thousands of men, women, and children being killed? So, so it's interesting, Alex, because it's not like they're saying we're not going to vote for Joe Biden and instead we're going to be voting for Donald Trump. That is not at all what they're saying. Right? Instead of saying we are in this position in more of a big picture sense because of the Democratic Party. Right. They're like, you haven't given us the candidates that we want. You haven't delivered the way in which we want. You're not listening to us. Do they think Trump will be better with Israel? I don't think th I don't think they think that. Um, some might and they're wrong for that opinion. Trump will not be better with Israel. There is no. No, I, I no guys. No. I don't think that that is a, a thing at all. If you think that, if you think that Trump will be better with Israel, you're out of your mind. Okay. But that is not, that is not a justification 
that is not a justification for for Biden to continue following Trump's Israel policies. Democrats claim that it's harm reduction to vote for the Democratic Party as opposed to the Republican Party, but then they literally adopt the positions of the Republican Party and then go, it's still harm reduction. At a certain point, you're not reducing harm. That's, oh my God, I did not work out Kaya hard enough this morning and she's like awake. And right now she's putting her face on my leg, pushing down on my leg to be like, pay attention to me, please. And we are sick of the political system in this country because of all of that. So this for them is- What will Trump do that's worse? Not like he's gonna give Israel more money than Biden. What do you mean? Um, okay. Trump's policies in Israel are the reason why October 7 happened. Moving the embassy to Jerusalem. Permanently recognizing the annexation of Golan Heights. Instituting the Abraham Accords without, with, and, and completely writing off the Palestinians. Trump went so far against Palestinians that Israel had to step in and be like, please don't stop giving Palestinians money. Because if you give, if you refuse to give them money, then they will do more. They will do more uh, violent retribution. It's a national security risk at a at a time when they wanted to be more reasonable about the Palestinian existence, even as an apartheid state. So no, Trump will be worse. Dude, you're being so cute, but I can't pay attention to you right now. I'm working. Daddy's working. I know you don't care. I know. He keeps pawing me now. So Trump's policies will most likely be worse than Biden's on Palestine, on the issue of Israel. I guess the only the only saving grace would be that it, liberals would be more committed to defending Palestinian lives if Trump was the one uh, doing the killing in the same way that they were so pro BLM. But what happened there? Liberals adopted BLM, co-opted it, and nothing came from that regardless. What? What, what do you want? You want to go outside? is kind of a warning shot <clears throat> saying it's time to change. It's time for something to change in this country. Yes, the, the third gentleman with whom you spoke s talked about the short term pain for the long term gain and said yes. that he'd be willing to vote out Joe Biden. He does fully realize mm -hmm. what that oh, means, shit. right? If we've got Joe Biden and Donald Trump, Get he's willing to elect Donald oh. Trump. Fuck, I can't hear anything. He, he fully. She she unplugged my freaking she unplugged my freaking audio. Hold on. He realizes, and I challenged him on that. I talked to him about that. Um, he fully realizes what that means. But but these voters are saying it's not on us. This is not our responsibility. It is not our fault. This is the fault of the two-party system in this country. It's the fault of the Democratic Party for not producing the candidates that we want and for not coming through and following through on the issues that we feel like they need to be following through on. So if we have to go through, as Khalid said, the person that you were talking about, this kind of short-term pain of another Trump presidency, that's what needs to happen as they see it to break the system. Because the issue is that it still doesn't matter. It still doesn't matter because the Democrats have demonstrated that in 2016, they don't care. They don't, they will never learn from their lessons because their position as controlled opposition relies on them not learning. They're very comfortable losing elections. They don't give a shit.
they have slept through so many election cycles in which they see as choosing the lesser of two evils and they're exhausted. Hmm. And that is what I'm hearing most from voters here in Michigan. So last question to you. you Actually, I did ask, think you're wrong about Trump being worse for Palestinians. Yeah, you're insane for saying that. No. Guys, there is no president in U.S. history that has been at almost as consequential, in contemporary U.S. history that has been as consequential for the lives of Palestinians getting worse than Donald Trump. In 2018, while the Great March of Return was happening, on the one side, as Israeli snipers were taking shots directly at Palestinian civilians that were peacefully protesting the border wall that was unjustifiable, Donald Trump's daughter, Ivanka, and Donald Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, was literally across the fucking, uh, across the entire land that we know as Israel, on the other side at Jerusalem, at an embassy, at a newly minted U.S. embassy, okay? The idea that there are, the idea that, like, Donald Trump would be better is silly. This does not mean that, uh, this does not mean that people will still try to punish Joe Biden. They have every right to do so. Okay? I, I've said this before. You should absolutely try to extract concessions from the Democratic Party with your vote. That's it. And that's what these people are doing. It's so dumb. You just said, wow. And you said so as Ray Gasm was reporting, they're listening to that tape. Um, what does... Then why did he say what he said in this clip? It doesn't matter what he fit. says in this clip, dummy. Trump says a whole bunch of shit. Why would you ever take it seriously? The only thing you should be taking seriously is the top of the hour ad break which comes at the top of every hour on this broadcast. And if you no longer want to see it, then you need to subscribe. And if you don't subscribe, then you're going to see the three-minute ad break. I'm telling you what Trump has done, and you're telling me what Trump has said. How is this any different than what Joe Biden has said? Look at what Joe Biden has done. Offer an insane amount of arms to Israel as it's committing ethnic cleansing versus what Joe Biden has said. We're trying our very best. We want a two-state solution. Cut it out, Netanyahu. What do you mean? Trump has drawn more civilians than Obama, but this chat loves him because he's funny and charismatic. First of all, we do think that Trump is funny and charismatic, but so was Obama. And I criticize Trump as much as I criticize Obama, if not more. What are you talking about? That's ridiculous to think that this Trump, this chat is like unironically tr full of Trump supporters or some shit. Now everyone's going to say, yes, we are, as a meme, and this chatter is going to feel uh, like he's right. ...state of the Palestinian people. They deserve a far better life. They deserve the chance to achieve their extraordinary potential. Palestinians have been trapped in a cycle of terrorism, poverty, and violence, exploited by those seeking to use them as pawns to advance terrorism and extremism. Yeah, I can't believe he said that. I can't believe he said that. He must really care about Palestinian lives. Let's not look at anything he's done. When he says terrorism, he means Hamas, by the way. That's the, that's the liberal Zionist line that he's towing. Anyway. Yeah. Israel is a bipartisan issue, okay? Ethnically cleansing Palestinians is a bipartisan issue in the United States of America. 
does this portend to you? How concerning is this? Michigan is a very important state. It potentially sure. could run neck and neck there. You have Rashida Tlaib, the Michigan congresswoman, who's saying what Yasmin is talking about with these voters, saying, hey, don't vote for Biden specifically. Send this message. Yeah. But sending that message now. Sure. Exactly. What are the dangers of that? Well, so first of all, the Biden campaign and the administration certainly acknowledges the political significance of this situation. That's why they sent Deputy National Security Advisor John Finer to do extended meetings in Michigan with, with these communities. We, we shouldn't forget about the fact that this is February. Yeah. And so if this there's was time, you there, there's time for the campaign and the administration to address this. And what I would virtually guarantee is every Biden supporter or former. Yeah, except they're not addressing it. That's the point. And they won't address it because they think staying in a holding pattern will cause the Arab Muslim voters, Muslim voters and Arab voters in Michigan to forget. And that's really fucking stupid because they won't. And it will cost them the state of Michigan. The calculation here for Biden is clear. Suburban white voters that are moderates are going to be pro-Israel regardless. The real question is, is it worth for the White House, is it worth for the White House to lose younger voters uh, that are already like not exactly fond of his age and his incompetence? Is it worth for them to lose out on other demographics? Is it worth for them to lose Michigan? Is, the, is it enough that he has the full-throated support of the UAW in Michigan while simultaneously losing hundreds of thousands of votes in that state that are ultimately reliable Democratic Party voters? That's it. I, I'm, I've told you this. The calculation here is that Biden thinks... The calculation here is that Biden thinks he will lose the moderate voters that care about democracy and care about all this other shit that make Biden uh, a, a more uh, favorable candidate over Donald Trump if he takes a different approach to uh, if he takes a different approach to Israel. It's the same exact calculation that they're doing with respect to the border leaning into the border crisis narrative. And the problem is, you're not actually winning on the border shit on that front. Those moderate voters are voting because they think you will defend democracy. You will defend these institutions. They're not voting for you over Trump because you're going to do Trumpian policies. That's it. And I don't think he... I don't think they recognize that. And I don't think they recognize the very dangerous normalization of the narrative that the border is a national security concern uh, that completely gives up that talking point, even if you're cynical, even if you're just, I'm putting on my DNC hat on now when I say this, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a wonk now that cares about the Democratic Party when I say this. I don't, if I don't care about any of these issues at all, the human cost of it all, and I only care about reelecting the Democrats because they're good and they're awesome and they're slay queens. I'm still going to be mad in this situation because this miscalculation causes them to lose a fucking talking point. Okay. former Biden supporter who is a part of this coalition is sending this message in such an ardent way right now because they are hoping to reach some form of consensus. And you're going to see that start to play out. <clears throat> so there's a lot that is going to change, but certainly what can happen, and this is just raw politics. This isn't you know, a commentary on the conflict itself. The Biden campaign will not ignore this issue and their voices and you will certainly see them making very very concerted efforts to mend some of these divisions and bring their coalition back together can we go back quickly to you yasmin if you're still there and just get you to react yeah. to what the congressman just said yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Congressman, I, I don't mean I don't mean to put you on the spot here, but it, it's interesting because some of the points that you just made up, they actually. <laughs> Bobiku, Arab equals terrorist. Please stop the Islam terrorism. Yeah, Islamic terrorism has a lot to catch up to Israel's terrorism. If we're going to talk about terrorism, okay. Just saying. Don't ban this guy. I like this guy. He came up at the table, right? This idea of timing, and the president has said this, there's time, right, to make up uh, the difference between now um, and November. And they have sent an entourage of people. They've sent folks from the White House to respond to some of these concerns in Michigan. The president came himself when it came to UAW. He has not yet come to address the issue right now at hand with uh, the Arab American, the Muslim American community, and young voters here in Michigan. One, that is something that they that they want. The other thing is, they're saying the time is now. It's not now or November. The time is now because what they're asking for, specifically in the Arab American community, the Muslim American community, and these young voters, is they're wanting reaction when it comes, real action when it comes um, to Gaza. So this time making up, right, and sending these entourage of folks that are part of the White House, it's not necessarily, in my view, from what I'm hearing from these folks, making much of a difference. Right. Wow. So, so yes, I, I know we're supposed to go, but just really quickly, let's say things get much better. <laughs> Are they not going to be able to forget what has happened in Gaza when it comes to voting in November well, and thus vote their conscience that way? So, so the two guys in the end, Annie and McHale, both young voters, they said there is a possibility to make okay. up that vote, right? If the president were to call for an immediate ceasefire, for mm -hmm. instance, and really put time and thought, energy and money into creating right. a two-state solution in that area and helping rebuild. That's how they feel now. The two in the middle said there's no redemption. They're not wow. doing it. President Biden is prepared. Biden met with the family of late Putin critic Alexei Navalny. Don't really care about that. Um, oh, this was awesome. So, as you guys know, here, you know what? I'll start off with this again, a refresher. Now to the con um, due to God or whatever, the Alabama Supreme Court decided on a case and used a case where a family that, was, um, that had uh, embryos lost their embryos in an unsecured uh, fertilization uh, clinic where they dropped, like, the vial. Basically, someone dropped the vial, and therefore, they sued the clinic on not only uh, the, the basis that there was like mishandling, but also on murder. The Alabama Supreme Court took on the case and, and decided that, oh, another patient dropped the vial, sorry. And then the Alabama Supreme Court was like, oh, this is great, yeah. Th that means that embryos equals human life. Okay? Now, obviously embryos do not equal human life, that's crazy. However, this caused the fertility clinics that exist in Alabama to suspend IVF treatments because of the legal concerns that uh, go along with this. Controversial Alabama Supreme Court ruling that frozen embryos have the same legal rights as children. Two more fertility clinics in the state have suspended in vitro fertilization treatments over potential legal risk. The ruling has now become an issue for candidates in tomorrow's South Carolina Republican primary. Robert Costa is covering that race in Charleston. Bob, good morning to you. Good morning, Gail. Early voting ended here yesterday, but today candidates will be making a last-minute push to get their supporters to the polls. And it is that Alabama Supreme Court ruling that has given an upheaval to this presidential race. Former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley worked to turn out voters in her home state this Saturday. Got to get everybody to the polls. Everybody. Haley's comments this week on reproductive rights have come under scrutiny after the Alabama Supreme Court's controversial ruling that frozen embryos are considered babies. When you talk about an embryo, you are talking about, to me, um, that's a life. And so I do see where that's coming from when they talk about that. Since the ruling, three clinics in Alabama have put a pause on IVF treatments due to legal concerns. And now Haley is questioning the court's decision. We don't want them to stop doing IVF treatments. We need to make sure that embryos are protected. I personally believe an embryo is a baby. Not everybody's going to agree. Thank you. Thank you. In Michigan, Vice President Kamala Harris... 
I love that she fucked up and said, I do believe I do believe embryos are, are babies. Meanwhile, Trump is out here being like, under my leadership, the Republican Party will always support the creation of strong, thriving, healthy American families. We want to make it easier for mothers and fathers to have babies, not harder. That includes supporting the availability of fertility treatments like the IVF in every state in America, like the overwhelming majority of Americans, including vast majority of Republicans, conservatives, Christians, and pro-life Americans. I strongly support the availability of IVF for couples who are trying to have a precious baby. Nikki Haley, being the fucking dumbass that she is. Nikki Haley, being the absolute dummy that she is, was like, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, that's right. They are babies. They're, they're real babies, actually. Trump doesn't even touch that shit and immediately goes, yeah, that sucks, actually. Uh, no, the IVF clinic should remain intact. What the fuck are you guys doing? Um, anyway. Today, I'm calling on the Alabama legislature to act quickly to find an immediate solution to preserve the availability of IVF in Alabama. The Republican Party should always be on the side of the miracle of life and the side of mothers, fathers, and their beautiful babies. IVF is an important part of that, and our great Republican Party will always be with you in your quest for the ultimate joy in life. So, of course he did that. Duh. It's a gimme. It's a major fuck-up for Alabama where those dumb inbred hicks at the fucking Supreme Court thought Christian fundamentalism could go that far. Very, very stupid. However, nobody tops Tommy Tuberville. And with this and Alabama I mean rule no one, okay? If you haven't seen this video, you're in for a motherfucking ride. Now, let me tell you something. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the undeniable fact that these fucking apes in suits are so dumb, oftentimes dumber than the average American. Just because they're in a position of power and wear suits does not change that reality. Okay? Tommy Tuberville demonstrated that today, that it does not take any kind of mental clarity and you can be as stupid as a fucking sea cucumber and still... Fill the role of a guy in the Republican Party. It's the same as the Democratic Party, too. Okay? I'm telling you right now, you have no idea how, how stupid he is. Drawing national attention clearly, the person who's behind that decision, Alabama Chief Justice Tom Parker, is also coming under scrutiny tonight. People are paying close attention to what he has been saying, not just about this, but also this interview that he did just in the last week where Justice Parker said that he was a believer of the Seven Mountain Mandate. It's this popular movement urging Christians to completely conquer the, quote, seven mountains of American life, including education, media, and the U.S. government. Listen to him talk about it for yourself. God created government. And the fact that we have let it go yeah. into the possession of others it's heartbreaking for those of us right. who understand, and we know it is for him. And that's why he is calling and equipping people to step back into these mountains right now. I'm very aware that he is equipping me with something for the specific situation that I'm facing. Yeah. There you go. Um, I don't have to struggle trying to find my way through it. True to form, for those who are familiar with his career, Chief Justice Parker did not shy away from invoking his faith in this controversial decision. At one point in the ruling, he wrote that human life cannot be wrongfully destroyed without, incur without incurring the wrath of a holy God. I should note that he was an aide and ally of the fellow Christian theocrat and former Alabama Supreme Court Chief Justice Roy Moore, of course, the man who beat Roy Moore in that Alabama special election not too long ago for the U.S. Senate is also here to weigh in on this tonight. Former Alabama Senator Doug Jones. And, Senator, it's great to have you because, you know, obviously what we can hear and read in this is that he wasn't just relying on the Constitution and on legal precedent to explain. It's coming. Don't worry. The Tommy Tuberville 
Pig is coming. It's so good. Explain this decision. You know, he's citing religious doctrine in the book of Genesis. Famous I, pedophile Roy Moore. I wonder where is the line drawn between law and, and theocracy? Well, Caitlin, obviously with Chief Justice Parker, there is no line. Uh, I, I, I was listening to Governor Haley saying Alabama ought to just get back to the law. Well, hell, Parker doesn't worry about the law. All he worry about is his Christian philosophy. Uh, and that's nothing new, by the way, for those people who are shocked at this across the country. This has been his mantra for years. He has been in public service for a long time. As you said, he's an ally of Judge Roy Moore. Uh, and so this is nothing new. And it's, it's really... Uh, uh, what's really sad about this, Caitlin, is not just all of the thousands of families that might be affected by this, that ultimately could be... Yes, the pedophile, famous pedophile Roy Moore was famously the former Supreme Court Chief Justice, not just the Supreme Court Justice, but the Chief Justice in Alabama. ...be affected across the country. But our business community is just not going to step up again. They didn't step up on the abortion bill. They didn't step up on the immigration bill. They're too afraid to speak out. Our UAB health system has got one of the finest health systems in the country, particularly their pediatrics and OBGYN. Mm -hmm. Who the hell's going to want to come to Alabama uh, after this kind of ruling? Who, how are they going to attract doctors? So this goes way beyond just e even the individual families that are going to be affected and the women of this state. Uh, it goes to businesses and who we are as a state. Yeah, I mean, we've already seen some of them saying, you know, they're hesitant to either move to Alabama or questions about, about leaving. I want to get your take on, on what we heard from the Alabama Senator Tommy Tuberville, who, who was asked directly about this ruling and gave, to me, a bit of a confusing answer earlier. This is what he told reporters. Do you have a reaction to the Alabama Supreme Court ruling on the fact that embryos are children? Yeah, I was all for it. We need to have more kids. We need to have an opportunity to do that. And this, I thought this was the right thing to do. But IVF is used to have more children. And right now, IVF services are paused at some of the clinics in Alabama. Aren't you concerned that this could impact people who are trying to have kids? Well, that's for, that's for another conversation. People need to have it. He does not know what an IVF is. He has no idea what it is. Do you understand? He does not know what it is. He has no fucking clue. Do you have a reaction to the Alabama Supreme Court ruling on the fact that embryos are children? Yeah, I was all for it. We need to have more. He said, I was all for it. We need to have more children. He has no idea what it is. He doesn't know. He thinks it's like a different kind of abortion. These lip tars that they got. By the way, notice how my accent when I do uh, portray myself as like a like a Republican guy is so on the money. Like this is literally how they sound. Okay, he's like, yeah, I thought I thought that uh, I thought that it was a different type of abortion. These lip tarts, they keep coming up with new words. I U D I E D. Okay, I heard about that. They're doing that. That's a different kind of abortion they do in Afghanistan, right? Okay, I V F. I don't want no alphabet, LGBTQ. I don't want no alphabet when it comes to abortion shit, okay? Let me tell you, I think the Supreme Court in Alabama is right. They're correct. You understand me? DUI is the only thing that should be legal. When I have it, when I do it, none of that, though. No IBS, no nothing. Kids. We need to have an opportunity to do that, and this, I thought this was the right thing to do. But IVF is used to have more children, and right now IVF services are paused at some of the clinics. And I'm glad that she, you know, explained to him in real time what in vitro fertilization is done for. In Alabama, aren't you concerned that this could impact people who are trying to have kids? Well, that's for that's for another conversation. People need to have that. We need more kids. We need the people to to have the opportunity to have kids. Well, that's a hard one. It really is. It's really hard. Because, uh, again, you want people to have that opportunity. And, and that's what I was telling her. Like, I, I just, what, what do I say? What do I say about this? Like, what can you say about this? He's so fucking stupid, bro. 
this is where modern medicine fails because we've kept idiots like this alive, okay? Hmm, that's a hard one. Not a hard one, dumbass. We need more kids. Uh, with all it's only hard because I don't know what those words mean. It's a hard one. I'll do respect. Uh, what? <laughs> Caitlin, look, he had no idea what that, that reporter was asking. None. This was, that answer was so similar. It's like deja vu all over again for folks uh, around here. He had an almost identical answer uh, in 2020 uh, 20 when he was running for the Senate when asked if he would uh, support an extension of the Voting Rights Act. Had no idea what it was and stammered around and stuttered around and was incoherent when trying to answer. He had no idea what that re reporter was talking about. He may have thought it was intravenous or something with Gatorade. I don't know. But he clearly had no idea. And that's just who he is. He didn't know the three branches of government. He doesn't, he, on your show, uh, had to, you had to argue with him about white nationalists being uh, racist. So this is what we've come to in this state. And it's a friendly reminder of his greatest moment. Oh yeah, this was fun. <laughs> I love that he, his ass hit every stair on the way down. Did a new wedge issue just drop? No, this is not even a wedge issue. Um, Republicans are smart and they like winning elections. I mean, they're having a hard time with that currently with their other uh, genuinely bloodthirsty, even more bloodthirsty side. He falls like a cartoon character, dude. <laughs> what the fuck? Tommy Tuberville is Doug Dimmadome's enemy. Anyway, um, no, Democrats won't. Uh, Democrats are salivating at the prospect of the IVF thing. Because it's such a winner. What is this? Conservatives are going to have a super, super majority at this rate. New and first on Huffington Post, Justice Sonia Sotomayor took the unusual step of traveling with a medic in 2018 and with medical gear in 2021 and 2022, according to the records obtained by Fix the Court. Fuck it. Make all nine of the Supreme Court justices... Oh my God, she's going to die. Trump is going to be president. Oh my God. Oh my God, she's going to die. If she retires now, Mitch McConnell is not letting. Nobody is, well, not Mitch McConnell. He can't really do too much about that. But like, um, if, if she retires now, if she retires now, we're still not getting a, a fucking... Democratic, uh, we're still not getting a, a, a liberal Supreme Court justice. Robert's going to be the predominant leftist on the court at this rate. Yeah. I mean, the accelerationist uh, demon inside of me says that, like, this will force the Democrats to pack the court potentially in the future and just, like, completely blow it up, maybe. I don't fucking know. Who 
Oh my god. That's never gonna happen. Anyway, this is so bad. Oh, here, this is what I was gonna show you guys. Here, let's get to some fun shit. I can't do this anymore. This is Valkyrie Fusli and Yelona Garcia. Echo's official music video. It sounds like this. I get lost in the moment. Sounds Rich LA people, what could be more fun? No, you're right. We should keep talking about how dire the situation is. Ugh, I want to throw up. Just like a record that's been broken. Too many times. Can't fight the tide. Drowning in emotions. Suck in illusions. Play with me on my mind. Delusions one by one. She's like an actual musician. that they they popped off this hard pretty wild especially because like um especially because like i mean fusli sings sometimes on no pixel for fun and Valkyrie does not sing at all. You know what I mean? How long until there's an AI version of you, you this, please? Maybe. It's uh, I don't know. This is very cool. 
It's so funny watching streamers try to act like serious pop princesses after the, some of the goofy scene I've sh uh, and shit I've seen them do on stream. But they're not. That's the whole point. You know what I mean? How many uh, views? It's only got like uh, 142,000 views in 18 hours, but um, I think it's like, I think it's pretty wild that they were able to just like pop off so hard. People being like, oh, it's auto tune the hell. Brother, have you not listened to any music in like the last 10 years? What are you talking about? Every song is auto tuned to hell. Nice. Awesome, guys. Let's run back to one. That's a cut. Let's run back to the start of that track. Our first music video shoot together will be a memory we'll cherish together forever from embodying the energy of Neon Viper and Reyna to all the fruit snacks uh, Yolana ate to all this caffeine Ray gulped and to Leslie having to take off her booze because she was taller than everyone else. We are so excited to finally share this project we've been working on for the past two weeks with y'all. I know, such a quick turnaround, right? Special thank you to 100 Thieves for the opportunity to create this. And before you play the music video on repeat, play some Valorant with 100 Thieves' new VCT capsule and skin available in the game's brand new esports store. So, um, so I think they did this for uh, 100 Thieves. Or, or they did this with... 100 Thieves did this for Valorant. And as far as I understand it, it's the first of its kind. Um, as far as like having a team have their own skin and have their own like play out music when the team comes out. So pretty sick. It's just like, uh, I don't know. It's, it's pretty wild to, to have people I know uh, pop off like this. You know what I mean? When will you release a song? No. And like, I mean, I don't know. I don't really listen to music too much, but it sounds good to me. It sounds really good to me. Like a lot better than you would expect from streamers. It's kind of pompous if you ask me. Okay. I mean, yeah. It, it is. You're right. Streamers should know their place and never leave their houses. I know. Every streamer should be like me. Permanently stuck in their homes. And genuinely fucking miserable. Like the entire time. Just like that chatter said, people doing cool shit while Hassan debates Danish anarchists. Exactly. It makes you more relatable if you're miserable. Yeah. Well. True. Damn, I didn't know you was miserable. Bro, I fucking stream to an audience of angry nerds 10 hours a day, every fucking day. It's hard not to be miserable. People also do definitely pick and choose. We're like, when Will made an OTK announcement uh, video, everyone was like, oh, it's so pog. But like when Ray and Leslie uh, do something also professional, they're like, oh, this is lame. Well, they're not even saying that. I'm just reading the bad chatters for no reason. You spend half of that gaming? Shut the fuck up. I am going to video game myself permanently off of this fucking planet in a video game. This community is a whirlpool of misery and despair. Everyone's a debate pervert and fighting in the chat. What's uh, That's happening on a daily basis. Ah. <sighs>
Your audience also jumps at the first chance they get to debate every single thing you do. It does not matter how little of a thing it is. It's always up to debate. I know. Oh, my God. Anyway. Palette cleanser. Yeah, who remembers hashtag where is Kaya? To me, that's what Kaya looks like still. Like, not even a joke. That's what she still looks like. She knew I was talking about her and immediately got up from underneath the desk. She's not even the same color anymore. Yeah, because her undercoat was darker. Um... Have you seen the baby sea otter scared of their first swim? No, I haven't. Um, anyway, what else was I going to do? Oh, uh, Zinn is now conservative. How a nicotine pouch explains the new ethos of young conservative men. Apparently because of full send and because of Tucker Carlson, conservatives are now comparing, uh, or conservatives have claimed Zinn and liberals, of course, as is the case with liberalism all the time will say that this is a demonstration of conservatism. Everyone loves doing the, the same lame shit where it's like you can't have anything nice or fun or, or um, you know, enjoy things. You can hear the excitement here in the crowd. They're cheering and they're excited to see President come. Now, you can... <laughs> President come. Give us hogwatch. I wanted to do Hogwatch, but they're, but like CPAC has fallen off, I think. No, I don't want to watch the Bernie Sanders interview, dude. I don't, I don't want to watch it. It's Friday. We've been doing politics for four hours. We're moving on. Okay. Northern line dunks on capitalism and it's I'm pretty kinda, amazing. Listen, here's my thing. I think I'm really trying hard not to become just like a doomer and like, you know, capitalism is the root of all problems in society. Okay. Because in the same way that you guys are like, I use the self checkout all the time and it works for me. So it must be a problem on your end. Capitalism has been working out okay for me. But the more I go out into the world, I see the promise of new technology and new features, and I'm like, whoa, that's amazing. If you kept everything exactly the same and just added the technology, then it would be a dream come true. The problem is they add the self-checkout, and for two years, they've got the same amount of staff, and they've got the self-checkouts, and it's you're feasting. It's like Netflix before every company made their own streaming service. But now, over this last several years, they go, oh, 40% of the people at the grocery store are using self-checkout. We're going to downsize. We're only going to have two cashiers operating eight lanes. 80% of people are using self-checkout. Now we're going to have one cashier manning 12 lanes, you know? Like, and it just, it's now at the point where I'm like, I fucking wish that we just didn't have the self-checkouts and they just opened all 12 lanes of assisted checkouts. Now I'm like, it's a, it's a luxury checkout experience to just be able to pull my cart up load the stuff on and not have to worry about scanning it and the fucking area where you can actually put the shit on the scale is so small you gotta play like lego and jenga just to try to get it all to stand there and if something ever falls over uh unexpected item in bagging area the alarm goes off there's no like the the two staff that are working at the grocery store one of them is trying to check out seven people simultaneously the other one is manning the deli the olive bar the bakery section the cheese section like they're trying to run the entire 800,000 foot grocery store all by themselves 
We just, we, the, the problem is they, they give us the technology and they go, isn't this sick technology? And you go, yeah, that's awesome. And then they put it in and they offload the work onto us. And then they fire like half the staff and I'm like, this is way worse. It would have just been better if you just, you got like maybe two self check. Will you be covering the TikTok? Who the fuck did I marry, Lore? What is that? Please give it to me right now. I heard about this already. Northern Luddite. Yeah. Uh, I am trying to uh, set up a gaming session with uh, our boy here, our big, beautiful, bald boy. It's eight hours. No, it's not. He's got 80 TikTok episodes. Just give it to me. Do I go all the way back down in the bottom and start there? Like, oh my God, part. What is happening? Where does it start? This is four hours and 59 minutes, dog. Is this a condensed version? This is a two hour one. Part 33. The, the fuck, fuck is started off with part 30. Oh my God. Hi and welcome. We all know why you're here. You're here for part of the new series that I'm calling Who the Fuck Did I Marry? I'm going to create this playlist series. Um, and I'm going to tell the story of how I met dated married and divorced a real pathological liar um okay i'm already invested let's watch the summary first all 50 parts of the risa tisa who the f did i marry videos in one singular part let's flow risa tisa and her ex-husband who she calls legion met in march 2020 right before COVID, on two different dating apps which was the first red flag one was his real name one was a nickname they hung out a ton, and when COVID hit, they decided to quarantine at her house, which she agreed was a little fast. Not long after, she gets pregnant, they decide they need to get married. During all of this, they decide they want to buy a house, he can't show proof of funds. Unfortunately, she miscarries a child, and he doesn't even go with her to the surgery and says he has an important meeting for work. Allegedly, at this time, he works as a VP for a condiment company and leaves the house at 6.15 a.m. every morning and comes home at 3.34 p.m. Eventually, they continue the house search, and she wants to see his accounts. He shows her a Chase savings account and a Chase checking account where he has money in it, but says he also has money from playing arena football in a U.S. bank account. Okay, this is uh, full of spoilers. I think we... This is my introduction slash disclaimer video. First and foremost, I'm going to be truthful, even if it makes me look bad. I'm going to be honest, but I'm also not going to be disrespectful to anyone that was involved. I'm not going to use people's real names because I don't have the permission to do so. And <laughs> my sister does not want any sort of litigation. Um, I will tell you off the top, I have a sense of humor and I have sarcasm. So things that you see me laughing at, none of this is funny. But in order to get through it, I have to laugh. If I cry, I cry. I'm human. I'm a woman. This was traumatic. Um, I'm going to do the best I can to upload as much of the story as I can um, because I know people get so annoyed with the follow for part four, follow me for part 17. I'm just going to do the best I can to keep uploading the videos each other time. Green mail. So that is a lot of time to cover. Please give me the grace to just get it out. Um, it may not be all in one day. It may not be all in two days. But okay, some I of the stuff I can, don't you can condense. Video. Start it did happen with these class. Um, we come in contest at the grad. I didn't graduate with a psychology degree, but I'm very comfortable saying that he was a pathological liar. He was a narcissist. And yes, there was some mental, in my opinion, mental health issues going on. Pathological lying part. Absolutely. Um, so I want to preface all this by saying you're going to probably think what in the world? There's no way this happened. Everything you're going to hear me say actually did happen. Um, I never thought I was going to be in some sort of lifetime movie, but I was. Um, so I will read the comments as best I can. Like I said, I think if you allow me to tell the whole story, things will be answered. Um, and sorry, I do talk with my hands. It's just, it's a coping mechanism. So if you're like, why is she moving her hands? Um, okay, I'm beginning again, to understand why this is four hours long. There's a lot of stuff in here that's like, oh my God. There's a lot of stuff in here that's like, uh, definitely, what is this? We need this guy in the case. Are you serious? Megaphonics, it's already five hours and you're in here sending me not a condensed version, but a joke that's unrelated. I 
idea who the fuck I married. You like how I twisted that? Anyway. All right, y'all. Um, please excuse the hair, but here is part 20. We met on Facebook dating site and we also matched on Hinge. Um, I did not realize that he was on both um, under two different names. So one was his actual name and the other one was a variation, like a nickname um, that he called himself. Different pictures. So it was a running joke between us. Oh, you ain't even right. What's happening on the top of her head here? What is that? Is that like a bow? Now is that... Um, you had matched with me on Hinge. No, I didn't. Um, and also, that should have been a red flag. By the way, you will notice in this story, I called it the United Nations of Red Flags. It is, is so many red correct? flags that, I mean, you would have thought I was colorblind because I ignored all of them. So, anyway, back to the story. We met around March 4th. We exchanged phone numbers. He called me, and we talked on the phone um, for the first time. In the first phone call, he told me that he had just moved to Georgia from California, from San Diego. His job had transferred him um, because he was being transferred in as the new regional manager for a major condiment company that is based here in Georgia. I'm not going to say the name. And so we also talked about his childhood. He told me um, he grew up in Philly. He's from Philly. Both of his parents were deceased. This is the first phone call. Both of his parents were deceased. His father um, was a Philadelphia police officer. His mom was a teacher. He also told me he um, went, he briefly lived in Augusta um, with his family. He had two brothers and two sisters. He also had two half brothers on his dad's side. First phone call. So I'm just giving you guys the backstory. This was the first phone call we had. So we talked about family. We talked about friends. We talked about our jobs. At the time, I was working at Georgia State Patrol. Um, and he knew this and he just thought that was like, wow, you know, so you work with troopers all day. Yes, I did. Um, also in that phone call, he explained to me that he um, used to play football. He explained that he used to play arena football. I know nothing about arena football. Um, I know about NFL. I know about college. Go dogs! But I don't know anything about arena football. So he explained to me that he used to play arena football. He used to work at Apple in the off season of arena football. Um, and I remember thinking on that phone call, "Oh, okay, you know, like good for you. I don't know anything about arena football." And I believe I did tell him that I don't know anything about arena football. That'll come into play later on. So he told me, you know, I just I just moved here. Um, my job is paying for my housing, and they are helping me to look for a house. He was like, I'm trying right now. I'm in Gwinnett County, but I'm trying to look for a house, ideally in Atlanta, like Brookhaven, um, Sandy Springs. He was like, I, I really would like to move out there. And so I thought, you know, this is that's great. You know, you're looking to get a house. You just moved here. He was like, I don't really know too too many people here because I spend all my time at work, and you know, this job is really demanding. So that was our first phone call. We talked more. He talked a lot, which took me by surprise because I'm not really used to men talking more than me. Um, he eventually asked me out on a date. That's shocking. Our first date was set for Saturday. Because I can tell she's a big yapper. So it is genuinely shocking to me right off the jump that the dude was talking more than her. Saturday, March 7th, 2020. Um, he asked me what was my favorite restaurant. I said, Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> and so we agreed to go out um, at the Cheesecake Factory in a location that was in between. I lived in Clayton County. We lived uh, about 45 minutes from Sandy Springs, Dunwoody area. See how it goes. First conversation was good. Um, hopefully he looks like his pictures because, you know, that's always an issue with online dating. Hopefully he looks like his pictures. So on my way to our date, I took 285 and literally right before I got to Boulder Crest, the exit for Boulder Crest, I heard a boom and I lost control of my car. Thank God that this, well, not thank God, but I knew what to do. So I did not crash, but my tire blew out. So I called him and I said, hey, I'm so sorry, but my tire just blew on 285. I'm slowly making my way off the exit. I believe I pulled into a Chevron gas station and I said, you know, I gotta get this fixed. I don't know what to do. Like I'm a damsel in distress kind of thing. He kind of paused, he got quiet and he was like, where, you know, tell me exactly where you are, drop your pin. So I dropped the pin and he came to the gas station, came to the gas station, got out the car. And I was, I was so relieved that he actually looked like his pictures that I was like, oh my God, he's actually a attractive because he's like six, four, six, five. Um, oh, also, man, I apologize. So let me go back to the first conversation. Let me add something. He did tell me in the first phone call that he is, that he was divorced. Um, and that his ex-wife, they had, she had, um, two children. She forgot things. Children, That's a boy crazy. and a girl who were teenagers, young adults. I think the girl was about 20. And he said that he had a very close relationship with his stepkids. Um, but that he and his ex-wife had divorced because she cheated on him, um, out in California. And so coming to Georgia was a new beginning for him. She was still out in California. The kids were still out in California. Um, and so... You know, six, he was four, like, six, no, I, I means you're right off the jump. A couple things I have to add in here. That's how you know she ignored the red flags. Okay. 
this dude is like, I'm coming to help you, and I'm six foot four. It's Jover. Like, it's just 100%. Like, stand her, but I still want to be in the kids' lives. I have to put that in there because that will come back later. So, this is just setting the stage. Again, that first conversation was we talked about family, job, friends, um, how he ended up in Georgia, me being in Georgia, the things that, you know, I would think people talk about in the first conversation. All right, now back to the tire blew out. So, he shows up to the gas station, he changes my tire which I just thought was the sexiest thing in the world. Um, and then he proceeds to say, hey, I found a, play, a tire place around the corner. You need to get another tire. Like, you can't drive on this donut. So he followed me to, um, he followed me to, the, to the tire place and then helped me get a tire, paid for it. So I was- Bro, she about to get pulled over for having her phone while she's Definitely driving. Definitely like, wow. Um, and so the vibe was good. So anyway, I get, the car, I get the tire fixed. We follow each other to the Cheesecake Factory over the perimeter we hold hands walking into the cheesecake factory so in my mind i'm like this is just this oh my god i had butterflies that that's that's the look of a woman who had butterflies so i had butterflies and um we go in there's a long wait and so we sit outside and we just talk and the conversation's great and this is where he tells me what it is he's looking for he tells me you know i'm i believe at the time he was 42 he was like i want to get married and it'd be for real. He's like, my parents were married 40 plus years before my mom passed away. And I want that. I want marriage, family, a house. Like that is what I want. One tire on a first date is at least minimum $200, $300, by the way. That's crazy. He's like, I'm, you know, I'm, as a man, I'm ready to get married. But I want it to be for real because the first time, you know, it really hurt me when she cheated on me. So he's telling me everything that I wanted to hear. Um, and so he was like, what is it that you want? And I said pretty much the same thing. I was like, I'm ready to get married. Definitely want to have a family. And <clears throat> I want to marry my best friend. So we both put on the table that we wanted marriage. And this is the end of part one. All right. Who the fuck did I marry? Part two. So we both um, put on the table what it is that we wanted. We both had established we were dating for marriage. We were not dating just to date. We were not trying to be friends with benefits and none of that. Um, so the, the dinner at Cheesecake Factory went really well. We laughed. We joked. We talked about people, which... Um, it's kind of up my alley, my sense of humor. It was, just, it was a good vibe. So at the end of the date, or excuse me, at the end of dinner, we sat in his car and he played this song for me by John Legend. I don't know the name of the song, but it's, well, by the time this video posts, I will put the name at the bottom. I can't remember the song. I just remember that John Legend was talking about, I think I met my wife tonight. And I thought it was a sign. So I oh, was like, he's, oh, he's laying it on thick, dude. That's the thick aid of laying it on. Okay. So anyway, we ended up sitting in the car talking just about life and experiences until about midnight so during this conversation he again is telling me how it was you know what it was like living in california how he went out there he went to san diego state he played football for san diego state um he talked about how you know life he loved it out there so he stayed um that's when he joined the company um and then he explained that he also did arena football but only did it for about two or three years he claims that while he was doing arena football the team that he was on won a championship but again, keep in mind, I don't know anything about arena football. So I was like, okay, I didn't know they had championships. And he was like, you know, he got a little offended. Like, yeah, they got championships. And, you know, he was on that team. So he talked to me about how he worked at Apple. He worked um, something in the IT area of Apple, but it was in the store. Again, it was one of those. It's like when I tell people I used to work at Amazon. I, I really wasn't paying much attention to it. Why? So we talked about all that. We talked about, uh, we talked deeply into what happened with the ex-wife is because I asked. He was not volunteering all this information. So in other words, I, I get very uncomfortable when men start talking about their ex a lot. That's not what happened. I was asking questions because I was really trying to figure out, okay, is this a, are you ready for a relationship or are you still um, missing her? So we talked about that. We talked about my exes. That was a mistake I made because I talked about how I dated at one point in time, somebody I worked with that will come back later. Um, and he seemed real cool about it. He's like, you know, that was before me and blah, blah, blah. Um, so the conversation was good. Midnight comes and um, I go home. Yes, I went home. We ended up talking, talking and talking. Mind you, our first date was March 7th. And within about two and a half weeks, Brian Kemp, our governor, shut Georgia down. We were about to, we were going to be on lockdown. So during those two and a half weeks, we talked Boo. every day. We went out again at Red Lobster. Um, I don't even, I remember Red Lobster. Um, but everything was going great. The issue was where are we going to quarantine so the question was are we going to quarantine at his place which he had like a studio 
type of situation. Like it clear where he was saying, um, I was like, it's like a studio apartment, but he kept telling me like, this is temporary because I'm looking for a house. Like he showed me, he showed me the email from the, from a woman who worked at the company where she was out on maternity leave, but she was, she was putting him in contact <clears throat> with a realtor to help him find a town home or a single family house. So I was just like, okay, this is definitely temporary. Like he's not trying to. The chatter I banned was being really fucking annoying nonstop. That's why I banned him. Stay here long term. And she was apologizing in the email. I'm so sorry. You know, this should have been taken care of before you got here, but it wasn't. Da, da, da. What's wrong with the studio? I mean, dude, are you kidding me? Cabin fever? You'd lose your mind if you're quarantining inside of a fucking studio apartment with a dude that you're like kind of dating when you first da, da, da. I saw the email. I saw the email. I read it. I read the email. Um, so the decision was. One room. Are you, we going to quarantine at the studio or are we going to quarantine in my house? First mistake I made. Well, there's a lot, but this was a mistake I made. So ladies, caution moment. During one of our dates, because um, keep in mind, in those two weeks, we were seeing each other quite a bit. Um, nothing physical or anything like that. Just two people who were who I thought were really on some. All right, let's see if this is going if this if this is going to grow into something. He Big mistake. Can't do that during quarantine. You can't be like, let's test this relationship out by maxing out the the maxing out the amount of time, like because. Even if you move in together, that's one thing. Moving in during quarantine, holy moly. He came to my house. When he came to my house, I had a three bedroom, two and a half bath. Bro, uh, the moral of the story is being six foot four goes such a long fucking way. It's crazy. Okay? Being six foot four goes the longest of ways. Like, there is no way, dude. There's no way. What the fuck? You're, you're, I mean, he's like nice on top of that too, seemingly. Like he's, he's selling himself as like a nice guy on top of that. I hate tall people. Me too, man. Straight up. At townhome. He was in a studio. Now, I'm telling you guys all of this in, in order of how it happened. So some, some things I'm probably going to insert what I was thinking and the mistake I made. No matter your height though, you will still see the top of the hour ad break at the top of every hour. If you no longer want to see those ads, you can't grow it inches, but you can subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get per where you get one free Prime subscription a month. You could also get gifted a sub if you're lucky use the three minute ad break now. Now that 34 MKD 50 can't sign on to the website because he's blocked because Rizip Type Erdogan saw how much he was fucking Gifting subs. Can I turn this off? No. Okay, so that. Um, and I say that to say that I did not realize inviting him to my home um, probably made his eyes go, oh shit, she's a keeper. She got this three bedroom, two and a half bath townhouse, and I'm in like a little studio. Yeah, let me, let me, let me go ahead and pursue this. What I need to do to quarantine here. The decision was made quarantine in my house. So. We, the state went on lockdown. He came and stayed with me um, in my home. And for the most part, be, in the initial beginning, it was fine. It was it was fine. The reason why I hesitate is because I grew up in the church. So for me, it was really like an internal struggle of, bruh, you always said you would never live with a guy unless he was your husband. And now you living with a dude and he ain't your husband. Like, it was it was a struggle for me because I knew better. And, I, and don't come for me, I'm just telling you, the way I grew up, it was like, that. it was not sitting right with me. But at the same time, I didn't want to quarantine by myself. I did not want to. So there we go. Um, so he moved in, we talked about the bills. Let me clear something up that I said in the other video where I said he paid all the bills. He paid all the household bills. He did not pay my car payment, my cell phone, or my car insurance. He paid the rent, because my rent at the time was less than $1,000. He paid the utility bills. And on, and so when he's telling me that he's a regional manager, I was like, wow, okay, so you got money. Um, <laughs> and so he paid, he paid all the household bills. So my check really was just taking care of me, myself, and I. And I am not, this is where it's not going to make me look good, but it's the truth. It was intoxicating to not have to worry financially about how to pay the bills. It was a wonderful feeling. And so... I don't understand how you get a three bedroom for less than 1K. Did we misunderstand that? How does that work? Or is, is she also a liar? Like what's happening?
It's because you live in California. I kind of push to the side the fact that, yeah, you shacking up because it's like, but your page, you don't have to worry right now. Like he's, he's taking care of all of April's bills before April even comes. Cause this was still March. So we're living together and I'm cooking, I'm cleaning. He's helping to cook and clean. And then we have a conversation about house. Is he still going to buy a house just for him? Or is he going to buy a house where it's for us? Because we are going to try to make this thing work, be official, get married, have a family. So the question now on the table is, what are we going to do? Because I didn't want to stay in um, Riverdale, Georgia. I did not want to raise a family there. I refused to have a baby um, in Clayton County. So the decision was made. Let's start looking for a house for both of us. Remember, he was already looking for a house for him. But then he was like, you know what? We're together. I plan to marry you. Let's look for a, for a, a family home for the two of us. I mean, that's crazy. This is like, how many weeks? If you can count the amount of weeks in two hands, you should not be fucking thinking about getting married. No, I don't think this is immediately after one date. I, I, I think this is, yeah, this is like, this puts the lesbian U-Haul memes to shame. Okay, this is like, like, th this is way faster than any kind of lesbian U-Haul uh, joke I've ever seen in my life. This is crazy. He was like, this is how much I was approved for. That's when he showed me the Chase paperwork. Um, it was a letter stating that he, and it had the Chase emblem at the top. He showed me a letter stating that he was approved for 700 and All right, part three, who the fuck did I marry? So this is when he showed me a letter from Chase with the Chase logo. Bro, where is she driving? Is she driving? Like, it's, it's morning now. It was nighttime. Where the fuck? How long are the roads in Georgia? Georgia! At the top, stating that he had been approved for a mortgage, for, excuse me, for a $750,000 mortgage or $750,000 house. So he was like, we can't go over seven fifty. And I said, I remember asking him, can you afford the mortgage on a $750,000 house? Because I know I can't. This is when he explains to me, I told you how I played arena football. I invested my money really well. So he said, I have money Cap. that will help pay for the mortgage. He was like, you didn't Google like how much an arena football salary is. Okay, let's Google it, bro. Arena football players in the United States make 1876 an hour, bro. That's like. Hello, 1876 an hour, be for fucking real. You didn't fact check at all. This man out here like, oh yeah, I was make, I was making McDonald's pay and I, and I fucking invested wisely. Anyone that says, oh, uh, don't worry about the finances. I invested wisely. That's how I made my money. Know that they're lying to you, okay? Hasanavi rule. There is no such thing as investing wisely. Unless you're just rich already, you are not investing your way up. We're good. Like, I'm I financially, I am okay. Um, he was like, that's why I'm able to get approved for $750,000 mortgage. So he told me that his money was in different savings accounts. He said he had an account with Chase Bank. He had an account with U.S. Bank. And he had an offshore account. This is what he told me. The Arena football player with an offshore account. Come on now. Offshore account. I was like, why? And he explained something about, oh, the U.S. <clears throat> excuse me, the U.S. imposes taxes on money when you have a certain amount in, in U.S. banks. He was like, so everybody knows that it's smart to have some money in an offshore account. Y'all look, I look paycheck to paycheck. I, again, I was like, okay, that's whatever. I said, so you have the, so you have the money um, to pay for to pay for home. I'm also holding in my hand. Also, no, you don't need to do that in the United States of America, okay? For the record, like the United States of America, I always mention this, already has like offshore states, okay? This dude is just saying things he's heard. Like, there ain't no reason to go offshore 
unless you're talking about the shores of Delaware, okay? Unless you're talking about fucking South Dakota, there ain't no goddamn reason to go offshore. And a letter from Chase saying that he was approved for 750000 So I went off of what I saw. So we contacted a realtor. I won't say his name, but man, if he ever, ever sees this TikTok, I owe this man such an apology. But we contacted a realtor in <clears throat> who was based in Cobb County because I was very adamant I wanted to move back to Marietta, Smyrna area um, in Cobb County, Georgia. He was fine with that. His whole attitude was, you know, you're going to be my wife, happy wife, happy life. So we met a realtor. I, I would find houses that I wanted to tour. Keep in mind that um, this was COVID. So at the time, we could not tour a home. It would have to it would have to be a virtual tour. So Brother, what you just described doesn't make sense. It might make more sense to go offshore when you're poor in America because loopholes are for the rich. First of all, offshore accounts are for the rich. That's number one. And number two, if you're a broke boy, then like there is no like what if you if you're too broke, then you don't need a fucking offshore account. There is no offshore account anyway. What are you talking about? If you're a broke boy, just say so. <laughs> this particular realtor, we found a house in Douglasville, Georgia. Not Cobb County, but nevertheless, it's in Douglasville. I was fine with Douglasville. So we found a house in Douglasville, Georgia. The realtor did a, um, a, a, a FaceTime tour of the house. The house was, it was really a nice, it was a nice home. Four, five bedrooms, four baths. So we did a FaceTime tour of the home. And the home was listed, I believe, roughly 400 and something thousand. I really like the house. I could see myself living there. I could see us living there. I could see us with the kid there. This is now April, just for timeline purposes. This is April. I'm in awe of how long she is driving, okay? So he really liked the house. He was like, you know what? We'll put an offer in on the house. He was like, if you like it, because again, it was COVID, we weren't going to be able to see the house in person because the family still live there. So he said, um, I'll put an offer in. We'll see if it's accepted. I said, okay. So he puts an offer in. He's telling me he put an offer in. I need to clarify some things he told me and the things that I actually saw. So for this house in Douglasville, he told me he was putting an offer in. The realtor would call me because one thing that the realtor told us, he was like, if the woman likes the house, typically the house is going to get bought. So he kind of dealt with me a bit more than he did my ex-husband. Um, and again, this is April 2020. This is before we got married. So at the time, he was my boyfriend. So the realtor was calling me and it was like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I put the offer in. And what they're asking for um, is proof of funds. And I, and I know any, I don't, I did not know anything at this time about buying a house. So I was like, Hey, you probably need to talk to him because I'm not even listed on the mortgage. Like from the paperwork I saw, it was only in his name. So he, um, he called him, I guess they talked. I was not there. Um, but I'm assuming that they had talked. So the boyfriend is coming. My ex is coming home saying, yeah, I talked to so-and-so I sent him over the paperwork. The offer was approved and <clears throat> They are going to try to do a virtual closing. First, we got to do an inspection. If the inspection goes all well, then we have to do a virtual closing. He t also told me that he put down earnest money on the home. She never steers. It's amazing. Yeah, I'm beginning to feel like Georgia is just like one straight interstate. Like you just, it just keeps going and going and going. Someone who's like more autistic than me has to math this out. Like, if she's going 60 miles an hour, judging by the cars that she's passing, how long, what is the mileage here? Like, how many fucking miles did she drive straight? What the fuck? <laughs> what the hell, dude? He put down, I believe, 5000 He said, I, I just transferred the money over to the realtor's uh, account or whatever um, so that it could be earnest money for the house. So I'm just like, okay, great. He was like, so realistically, this is April. We should be able to get in that house um, by June. Okay, no problem. So this is what he told me. About three or four days later, I get a phone call from the, from the realtor. And the realtor is like, hey, I'm just checking to see what you know what you guys want to do about that house so i was confused i'm at work um and i said oh I, I was told that he put an offer in and the realtor was like he did i didn't know that he put an offer in and i said well why wouldn't you know like he told me he put the offer in and he um he had paid earnest money five thousand dollars earnest money and so the realtor was like well let me call him and find out what's going on with that because i didn't know anything about it so red flag of course so i call him and he's and he 
in true narcissistic nature, he flips the script and he like goes off. He's like cussing, going off. Like he shouldn't, excuse me, I have hiccups. He shouldn't be calling you. If he has a question, he should call me because I'm the one that's on a mortgage. He was like, I love the fact that she keeps burping. I'm sorry. I, as a, as a Mike burper myself. And now it's, you know, it's going to be an issue. And I said, well, did you put the offer in with him or not? And he said, no, I did not put the offer in with him. I put the offer in with a friend of mine who is a realtor so I can give him the business. <sighs> so how did he find a realtor friend? so quickly after he just had moved to georgia i never heard, i did not hear from that realtor again so i was just like is the house under contract or is it not he was like yes the house is under contract this is what this is how crazy things work out about three days later on realtor.com i'm looking at the house because i was trying to figure out in my mind how i'm gonna decorate it shows the house is under contract so show my boyfriend my boyfriend's like i told you it was under contract he was like, I, I, like, did you not believe me? And I ain't had a heart to say, hell no, I didn't believe you. <laughs> like, it seemed too good to be true. Um, but once I saw the house was under contract, I absolutely believe that, okay, this, it's under contract with him. Like, yeah, we're about to do inspection. We are about to move. Um, and so we had driven by the house because again, keep in mind, a family's still living there. So we had driven by the house. At this point, he was like, I want us to start looking for furniture. So that way we can go ahead and order it. So when, when it's time to move, the furniture is ready because, you know, it takes like six to eight weeks sometimes um, for furniture to be delivered if they don't have it in stock. Like he was he was very methodical in planning and saying this is what we need to do. So we started going to Home Depot, Lowe's, um, because we had a printout of what the sellers were going to take. They were going to take the appliances. He had a printout. Let me be clear. He had a brown. So it said on there that they were going to take the appliances. So we needed to get a new stove, um, new refrigerator, new microwave, all that stuff. So we went to Home Depot and Lowe's and I, I went ham. I chose all these new appliances and here's where we get into the shopping. All right, part four. So we go to Home Depot, we go to Lowe's. I'm choosing all these appliances. He's taking pictures of, this, of the, um, the SKU number. We have representatives helping us. And he basically explained to them, hey, we're, we're buying a house. Um, we should be closing sometime in June. Can we order this stuff now? Can I can I put a hold on it? Like, what can we do? Because <clears throat> we're not ready for delivery. I stood there. As the Home Depot rep said, we can hold it in our warehouse. Like, you can buy something and we can hold it. People do it all the time, especially with COVID. So I watched him pay. Um, I want to say it was about three or... It was either 350 or 500 I watched him pay a deposit on a whole new set of appliances for them. And they were going to hold it until we were ready for delivery. I watched this. So I was like, okay, good deal. Like we got the appliances. Next, let's go to Rooms to Go and Ashley Furniture and find um, actual furniture. So we went all around Rooms to Go. We went to Ashley Furniture. We went to American Signature. And I, I, I saw all these things that I wanted. Again, he's taking pictures of it. He was like, I can go online and order it. I didn't think anything of it because again, I just saw that we held the appliances. So I was like, okay, that's, that's fine. Um, so April turns into May. May 2020 comes. Um, this is where things start to get a little interesting. May comes and obviously we had not done inspection. And I'm asking him all the time, what's, so what's the deal with the house? He was like, well, because of COVID, they're trying to get someone to do the inspection. But the guy that they had, it was always something. The guy they had caught COVID. So they're going to have- Bro, there is no house at this point. Like there is no house. It's completely made up. I don't, I, at this point, I'm trying to figure out like how, how he's like, how he's even like going along, like what the man thinks is what I want to know as a misogynist. Like, how does the man in the situation even think he's going to get away with it? I mean, obviously we know he did, but, but like, it blows my mind that he fucking he thought that he could get away with it which i mean i guess he did once again for a long ass time it seems but like how do you develop that courage six foot four I had to get somebody else and he's like he's like 15 houses backed up so it'll be a while so at this point in May, I know I look crazy. In this point in May of 2020, I started recording um, audio diaries. I don't know why. 
I, it was some something just made me just start recording my thoughts in, in an audio diary and I still have them and I would I would save them by the date and um, I would just start talking about what's on my mind so I was like I knew I knew there was something something was nagging me like mm. but I, I kept pushing it out of my mind I was like you saw th this is what I reminded myself you saw him pay for the appliances you know the house is under contract you know that he told you that um, he's the one who put the house under contract. Why would he, like I remember saying to myself, why would he lie about that? This is so easy to verify. Why would he lie about that? Have you caught him in any other lie? And at the time, the answer was no. Um, so I really was like, maybe you just aren't used to a guy who actually does what he's supposed to do. Like I, I was questioning myself and then answering my own questions. So inspection didn't happen around mid-may i found out i was pregnant may 2020 when i found out i was pregnant he was ecstatic and i was like oh shit the reason why i was oh shit is because number one i'm plus size number two because of my age i was i, I felt like it was probably gonna be a high-risk pregnancy um and i wasn't married and that nagged i cannot tell y'all how much it nagged me there was a lot of internal <coughs> struggle in between my family didn't even know that he had moved in at this point i told them you know that i was pregnant um went to the doctor everything looked good um but again because it was COVID, he couldn't go in with me um into the actual room so you know doing any sort of ultrasound doing the blood test because my hcg levels were really high so the doctor was like hey it might be twins we don't know yet um you're still kind of how many months Maybe three. Early, you know, along, um, they gave me a due date. The due date was January 26th of 2021. Um, so, yeah, uh, May, found out I was pregnant. So there was now more of a push into, we got to get a house. We got to get the fuck up out of here. I'm not having a baby in Riverdale. Okay, none against Riverdale. But I ain't having a baby in Riverdale. So we, we, need, to, we need to find out what's going on with this house. And so he was very, he was on top of it. He had an answer for everything. Um, he was like, you know, I'm gonna call and find out what's going on, blah, blah, blah. Um, he then magically told me about a week later, oh, they're gonna do inspection on the, on the house like in two days. So I was just like, okay, keep in mind, I'm, I'm taking his word for it. I'm taking his word for all this. So he's like, they're gonna do an inspection. Um, once we get the inspection report back, then we will know what, you know, what we are gonna be responsible for. What, what are we getting ourselves into? So, um, I guess they did an inspection. He showed me an inspection report. Um, the only thing that they said that the roof had just recently been replaced, which he, I remember he was very happy about. Um, and the issues that they that there were for the house were minor. It was not. It was not a bad because we did have a discussion about it. He was like, "It's not. It's nothing that we can't handle." Then he said that we were set to close um, the end of May. We were set to close the end of May. He told me it was going to be a virtual closing. You're probably like, what the hell is a virtual closing? Because again, he's saying because of COVID, people are. Wait, why? Wow, fuck you, Hassan. Why are you so pressed? They're not closing in the office. They're doing a virtual closing where um, you would need to electronically sign the paperwork. This is what he's telling me. And so he was like, we're set to close like just before Memorial Day. And so for some reason, again, there's still that nagging part. For some reason, I didn't start packing. I, anyone that knows me will tell you I hate moving. I've done it enough in my life. I hate moving. But I did not start packing up that house at all. I was just like, you know, I'm pregnant. My body was changing so fast that it was like I can barely keep my eyes open half a day. Um, and so, no, I didn't start packing. And I remember I did record. Again, I was recording audio diaries just about every day. When something didn't sit right, I would verbally record it in the audio diary because I was like, I don't know what it is, but there's something. That was the theme of our relationship. I don't know what it is, but I know there's something. Um, and so I remember talking to myself in my little prayer closet. That's I don't get it. Do, does she not have like any friends? Why is she talking to Jesus when she should be talking to Jesus? You know what I mean? She don't have one friend that she could be like, Hey, um, this smells a little funny. The fuck's going on. It makes no goddamn sense. That's where I would do my recordings. And I remember thinking, what if he, what if we don't get this house? Like, what if we don't 
get what if he's lying but again there goes that thought process of why would he lie about this like who makes up that they're buying a house when in fact they're not and then he's showing you all this paperwork like come on you can't be that jaded that you don't even believe what's in front of you all right so now we're going to go into part five okay part five who the fuck did i marry so i'm questioning all this stuff in my head out loud on my audio diaries and then once again i'm like but look at what you look at what he's giving you like he's paying he, it wasn't a question about money it was just a question of are we really are we really about to move into this house and <clears throat> keep in mind he's paying all the household bills he still is so we were supposed to close before Memorial Day. We didn't. There was an excuse. There was always an excuse with him. Always an excuse. And I can't be the only one that's like phenomenally invested in this, right? Like, I get why people watch through this entire thing. She does have a very long-winded way of describing these stories, but like, it is captivating. I'm fucking hooked. I'm locked in. And I didn't know enough about the process to question stuff because I really wasn't involved. I'm sitting my white ass down and I'm listening, okay? The way I should have been. And it was giving me a lot of anxiety. So I'm pregnant with a lot of anxiety. Um, and if, push, if I'm gonna be 100% honest with y'all, I was not expecting that I was probably going to have a healthy pregnancy because I was stressed. And what I was stressed about is I didn't know what was going on because I wasn't really involved the way that a normal relationship would be involved. Just being honest. Um, so we did not close around we move now into june this is now going into june around june 5th i looked We're at the house again on realtor.com four months in i don't know what made me do it other than and i don't mean to sound super spiritual i know that people are like you know you may or may not believe in god but i'm telling you i believe with all my heart probably the holy spirit was like look at that house on realtor.com so i looked at the house on realtor.com this was around june 5th it showed that the house was off the market it took you months to look at the house on realtor.com? You weren't checking it? It took you a month to look at the house? That's insane, okay? Like, even the enthusiasm of getting a new house, like, you didn't fucking check? No, I'm sorry. When you're... Bu I bought a house. I, I bought this fucking house that I'm sitting in. And I would still, like, check. Not because, like, there's some discrepancy. Just through, like... Interest. Pure interest in the house. Or you show it to other people, like your friends or something. Yeah, like, damn, am I really doing this? Am I really owning this shit? That type of thing. And I remember being like, okay, wait, what, is, what does that mean? What, what does that mean? Because ex-husband is telling me, we're about to close on the house. We're about to close. It's our house. We got furniture. Da da da da da da da da. Um, he's also telling me that he's been in contact with the realtor, his friend, who was telling him, you know, this is what was happening next. Here's what's going on. So the guy that we initially worked with apparently is completely out of the picture. But again, I was not heavily involved. So I'm just like, let me look at the house. I see it's off market. What the fuck does off market mean? Like now I'm really freaking out. So it shows the name of the. It means it's sold. Quite recently, as a matter of fact, to whoever the fuck actually bought it. That's what that means. A real estate agent for the seller. I don't remember her name. I called her and I said, you know, my, <clears throat> excuse me. I said, my husband and I, even though I wasn't married, my husband and I were looking at this house at 123 Main Street and we really wanted to tour it, but now I'm showing it's off market. Is it not available? Or, you know, I, I pulled that card and she was like, oh, no, ma'am, um, the home closed yesterday. It closed June 4th. Again, there are certain dates I just remember. Um, and I said, oh, it closed June 4th? I was like, really? <laughs> um, <clears throat> and she said, yes, ma'am. She was like, um, my, my sellers sold the house. And I was like, oh man, okay. Well, 
I said, my husband and I really wanted, you know, we love the pictures of it and we're getting ready to start a family. So I would have loved to have been able to, you know, have the opportunity to see it. I asked her something. I don't remember the specific question I asked her. And I don't even, I, I know why I asked the question because I was anticipating that my boyfriend at the time was going to have some sort of excuse. So I asked her something about the buyers. And I remember, I, and somehow, again, forgive me, I don't remember the question I asked her, but the answer was that it was an older white couple older white couple so I get off the phone with her I record an audio diary and in the audio diary I specifically say okay there is no house he's gonna have to get out this dude is six foot four and I kept he I kept writing the audio diary he's six foot four over and over again I kept saying it and I kept forgetting all the other very obvious red flags out of this lie somehow by the way, chat, at this point, you have to understand, she hasn't married him yet. We know that there's no fucking house. It's been a couple, it's been like a couple months at this point, and she still married him. Because now I realize, at the very least, he was lying about um, him being the one who was under contract. I knew enough about that. So I was like... No, you didn't. I'm going to be honest. You did not know enough about that, Okay. It feels like you did not understand the situation if you still ended up marrying him. What, um, how was he going to get out of this? Again, I'm listen I've listened to the audio diary in 2024. I literally said in that audio diary, how is he going to get out of this lie? And I was trying to think of ways on how he's going to do it. And something said to me, because I say it on the audio diary, I said, um, he's going to say it's a bad deal. And he's going to say he wants to pull out. Y'all keep in mind, I am pregnant. So I had a decision to make. As ugly as this decision was, I made the decision, you're about to have a baby with this man. He's paying all the household bills. Let him get out of the line. And that's what I did. I purposely made the decision that I knew he was going to come back and I knew he was going to give me some bullshit on why he couldn't buy the house because he didn't know that I knew that house is already sold. The house is already sold. Um, and this is the part where I said, I'm gonna be honest, even though it's gonna make me look bad. Because most women in their right mind would have would have been like, I'm out. And I didn't. Yeah. So um Get an abortion. Sure enough, he came home. He didn't really say anything that day. The next day I asked him about the house. And he said, my friend, the realtor, um, he was like, I'm talking to him because something's going on with the interest rate. And when he said that, I felt so much relief because I knew that I had been prepared for, he's gonna give you some bullshit. So when he said, there's something with the interest rate, I said, you know what, If the int this is literally what I said, y'all. If the interest rate isn't good, then we shouldn't move there. We should probably let this house go. We should cancel what? whatever furniture we- Why didn't you, why did you give him an out? Wait, what? Why did you give him an out? <laughs> Yeah, this is a this is a classic no I don't support all women moment. Okay? What the fuck? She literally said, "Why you're not listening? Abortion! Abortion! Aborabo! Abort the baby." We we ordered or you know appliances. And let's just look for another house. I said, I would like to be moved before the end of the year. I said, I really don't want to be nine months pregnant moving into a house. I would like, I would like to be done with this before then. And he was, he, the way I said it was so calm. And he was like, okay, he was like, I'm gonna call the friend, the realtor and tell him I'm backing out of the house and I'm gonna see if I can get my earnest money back. And I remember looking at him, I was standing in the kitchen and I cocked my head to the side and I said, okay, get your earnest money back and let's find another house. And so that's how that first house fell. Bro, she's literally leaning into the delusion. Like she at this point has recognized she caught him in a massive lie, gave him a fucking out. Bad listener shaking my head. No, I don't. Dude, there's no. First of all, people who love Jesus get abortions too. Okay. Wait, did she just say first house? I'm sorry. Did she just say first? What is happening? How many houses? How many houses is this? Ha no, no, no, no, no, no, no, 
No, that must have been a mistake. I don't think she's. Uh, I don't think she meant that. That way, I think she means like. So, um, fast forward. I'm looking. I keep looking at this to see how much time I have because you know they only give you ten minutes. So this is part five. Part six is coming up. But um, subsequently, what ends up happening the next week, which is mid June, I was at work, um, and I started cramping, started bleeding, um, and at this point, my doctor. I had just had an ultrasound earlier that day so i went to work because the ultrasound was was fine i went to work and the cramping and the bleeding started and i started crying because i, I kind of knew what was going on and um my doctor had called me and told me that when they did the ultrasound they did not see a heartbeat so she was like that's this pregnancy it. is not dude okay that's like dude christ saved you okay don't sag chatters what the fuck Oh my God, I, I feel like we're on totally separate planets right now. Bro, she knows the dude is like lying to her at this point. She knows the dude is lying to her. The baby trap was part of the reason why she was still on board. It's divine intervention. What the hell is God's plan, man? The fuck? Not gonna be viable. So I'm crying hysterical, and now we're gonna get into part six. Okay, so this is part oh! six. Of oh, she episode. made it! Oh my god, that's it. Fifty-five minutes at, at at fucking two x speed, and she finally made it to whatever the location was. So, where we left off. So obviously, That's crazy. Um, my doctor had called and told me there was no heartbeat. The pregnancy was not viable at that point. And I was cramping and spotting at work. Went into my best friend's office and immediately started crying. She was like, what's going on? And I said, um, I told her what the doctor said. And she grabbed her keys, grabbed her purse and was like, let's go. I'm taking you home. On my way home, I called my boyfriend and told him what the doctor said. And he was like, I'll meet you at home. So he was coming from Duluth, went straight home. Um, and so about 24, 48 hours later, I had a doctor's appointment. And my doctor gave me three options. First option, let everything happen naturally. Your body will expel the fetus on its own. Second option, you can take a pill, which will induce expelling the fetus at home. The pill basically will cause you to contract and expel. The third option was to go into the hospital and do a DNC. I did not want to do a DNC because I did not want to be in a hospital with COVID going on. Um, and for whatever reason, I did not do the option of let it happen naturally. So I chose to do the pill. His birthday was um, June 17th, my ex's boyfriend, excuse me, my ex's birthday was June 17th. So the decision was made, we're gonna celebrate his birthday that day, go out to eat. Um, and then that night I would take the pill because we both were off from work the next two days, next two or three days. Wait, what did you mean so, ex? So um, went out to eat, tried to celebrate as best we could, and then took the pill that night. Oh, like the ex-husband. That night was the most traumatic, excruciating pain I've ever put my body through. Um, I do not recommend any woman, if prayerfully you don't have to go through that, but I don't recommend taking that pill. If you don't have to, don't do it. Um, I stay, I spent the whole night in the bathroom just crying in so much pain. I couldn't take, they gave me a narcotic. I couldn't take it because it was, I found out I was allergic to it. So it was causing me to like projectile vomiting. It, it, it was a mess. So, um, and he was right there. You know, he was scared that he needed to take me to the ER. But in the morning, the pain kind of subsided. So about 72 hours later, I had another doctor's appointment where the purpose of this appointment was to do an ultrasound to see if everything had passed everything did not pass so because of that my doctor was like we're gonna have to do a dnc um my dnc was scheduled for the that's right another name for abortion is dnc brother first week of july my boyfriend my ex was going to take me um that was always the plan. i knew it two days before my procedure he tells me he comes home and tells me that he is up for promotion he's up to he's up to be promoted to vp because of this, the president of the company, <coughs> excuse me, is coming in and it was going to be this huge business meeting he had to go to. Um, the business meeting was scheduled for the day of my surgery. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm throwing a fit because I was like, you, you know, you, you, there's no way you can do that meeting. Like I need you to take me to the hospital and all this. No, it does not stand for dilation and cutterism. It stands. It stands for democratic national communism. Other stuff and so he offered to have his sister take me to the hospital 
Um, apparently his sister lived in Douglasville. I was like, no, because I've never met her. Like, I'm not, I know, I'm not having a stranger taken to the hospital. No, this is a private situation. I don't want to do that, blah, blah, blah. So my aunt was going to, had offered to take me. And then my friend who took me home Puttering. from work had offered to take me. So at that point, um, we get into an argument because he's like, my sister is, you know, you, you about your family. So why can't she step in? And I was like, no, nah, because I don't know her, period. I don't know her. So, so my friend offers to take me to the hospital because I was all distressed that he's saying he has a business meeting and he can't take me. So I remember being on I-75. That's wild that like this massively consequential and genuinely traumatic experience. Uh, this is another insane red flag, probably as big as the house, I would say. When you have a situation like this and your partner that fucking put the baby in you anyway is literally like, yeah, let's have a stranger take you to this medical procedure. Like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> on the connector, on the phone with her crying because I, I was so embarrassed that he wasn't going to be the one to take me and that I was needing to rely on someone else to take me to the hospital in order to get a DNC done. And she was really great. She was like, girl, this is why you have a village. Like, it's okay. Things happen. The world is crazy right now. I will take you. You're going to be okay. So he did not take me to the hospital um, for my DNC. My friend did. She could not stay because of COVID protocol. Um, so when they wheeled me into pre-op after I got checked in, I texted him and was just letting him know, hey, here's the update. I'm about to, you know, I'm in pre-op. They're going to get me prepared to go back um, to the surgical ward or whatever. And the response I got was from his new executive assistant named David. Now, when he told me he was up for the promotion, he did tell me that part of getting this new job would be that he would get an executive, uh, executive assistant named David. And he did tell me, I'm going to make sure that I inform David, if you get a text from this number, meaning from me, um, pull me out of the meeting. Because, you know, she's my fiance is having um, a procedure done and I'm picking her up. So it's important that you come get me if it's something serious. So I text him. David responds. He said, yeah, Mr. Blah Blah told me that um, you are having a procedure done. If you need me to get him, I can go get him. He's in a meeting. Just let me know what you need. And I just said, no, don't bother him. I'm just giving an update that they're about to take me back. And David responds and says, I'm so sorry you're going through this. Please let me know if there's anything I can do. So I have the procedure. I wake up and I am now in recovery. I should be in recovery 45 minutes up to an hour and a half. There ain't no way that's a real David. Might as well be Michelangelo's David, okay? That's just fake, dog. <clears throat> that's not a real person. That's him. He's doing the classic Better Call Saul shit where he's like, Making up a fake voice, basically, to be like, I'm David. Hello, David here. I wake up. First thing I ask, and I remember asking, is where is so-and-so? The nurse who was so sweet, you know, she was like, everything went well. Um, you're doing great. She said, we spoke to your fiance. He's on his way. So I said, okay, you know, okay. I kind of dozed back out, but I could still hear everything that was going on. I just could not keep my eyes open to save my life. So I hear her talk to the other nurse. And that's when she said, yeah, um, Dr. So-and-so called her fiance and his executive assistant picked up and the executive assistant said that he was in a business meeting and that, um, you know, you could relate to him what you need to say. And he'll, you know, tell Mr. He'll tell the fiance. And my doctor was like, hell no, <laughs> HIPAA. Um, I need to speak to him. So apparently my fiance called the doctor back about 30 minutes later and the doctor informed him she'll be ready to be discharged in about an hour. You know, you can make your way and come pick her up. He said he was on his way. He was on his way from Duluth to Atlanta, which is not a huge distance, but the time of day, one thing about Atlanta, there's always traffic. So he should have been there within the hour. I should have only been in recovery an hour and a half. Let's go to the next part. Part seven, who the fuck did I marry? So he should have, I should have been in recovery at Northside Hospital for about at most an hour and a half. Um, Subsequently, I ended up being in recovery between three to three and a half hours. The nurses kept calling my ex asking, what's the status because they were actually getting ready to do a shift change so they kept calling asking what's the status what's the status like where are you i want to say that they called a total of three times and they spoke to him twice um so at this point i knew that they were all like he's like sorry honey i was playing arena football with my offshore account managers and david who is my executive assistant where is her where's her fiance like what is going on um he said he was stuck in traffic and so he was making his way there. He eventually did get to Northside Hospital um, and they wheeled me down. Um, Cause again, he couldn't come in um, just because of the protocols. So 
when I got in the car, um, and I'm in pain, be it drugged up. Bro, she married him after this, by the way. That's crazy. Couldn't keep my eyes open, couldn't release. I was just out of it. But I remember him calling my aunt and my mother and letting them know, I picked her up, we're on the way home, let me get her settled, and then um, I'll give you guys an update. I remember that. What I did not know was that he had texted my aunt and my mom and asked them to not bother me for like a week. Like, just please don't reach out to her. Let her just rest. I am from New Jersey. I am from an African-American family. You don't tell my black mama or my black aunt that, um, you know, please don't bother her for a week. <laughs> I didn't know this at the time, but I'm just interjecting that part. I'm trying to stay in the timeline, but um, he, he did apparently do that. And my aunt was like, why will fuck you up? Anyway, so go home. Um, he waits on me hand and foot. I recover. Um, just needed about 24 to 48 hours to just get my mind right. Um, during this time, in between the when the house in Douglasville fell um, fell through, we had not talked about a house. So I guess it was about a week later after the DNC, he decides that, you know, do you want to start looking for a house again? Excuse me, I have the hiccups, y'all. Do you want to start looking for a house again? Because of what happened with the house in Douglasville, I felt like I was smarter this time to say, you know, I She was not. I, I suspect, judging by how things have gone thus far, I'm going to go ahead and make an edge an educated guess that she was not making a smarter assessment. I want to be involved in every aspect because I don't know what the fuck happened with that house in Douglasville. But what I do know is that he, he lied to me. I didn't. She rolling ones, crit failing and using the wrong spells. And think I, I didn't know then what I know now. I just. Yeah. Remember how you always tell us the bar for women is in fucking hell. Yeah. I think the story perfectly illustrates that the bar is in fact deep in hell. 100%. No, 100%. Is this just TikTok 90 day I just got here? This right here, this right here, what we're watching is like every single one of these like 50 episodes has like 6 million fucking views and has been going absolutely nutty mode apparently. So I dove into it thinking I could just like skip around and then realize like, never mind, this is actually insanely compelling. Okay, stop fucking complaining. Just buckle in. And enjoy the goddamn show. I don't know. Maybe we'll speed it up if it gets boring at certain points. But so far, it's been pretty goddamn good. Lock the fuck in! Lock in! Buckle down! I just knew he lied about putting in... Or excuse me. I knew he lied about being under contract. So, um, I told him, I said, I don't want to work with your friend who I've never met, never talked to. I know that he has talked to him because he's talked to him in front of me. And I'm going to demonstrate on one of the videos how he used to do his phone calls. Don't worry. It's coming. So we found a new real estate agent, really nice guy. Um, his name was Scott. I am using his real name, really nice guy. Um, and we told him what the budget was. And Scott was like, okay, when you guys are ready, we can start looking at houses. Try to look for houses that are empty because you can actually tour those. If it's a house where someone's already living in there, chances are it's going to be a virtual tour because of COVID. So I found a house um, that I absolutely, in total, we must have looked at about 15 houses. Um, but I found a house in Smyrna that I absolutely loved. We toured the house. Everything about this house was perfect. The house was listed for 699,000. It was a brand new construction build. The only issue was that the basement was not finished and he wanted the basement to be his man cave. Um, again, I went with him to tour this house. So this was already feeling very different than the situation in Douglasville because we did not actually tour the Douglasville house. We only did a FaceTime um, virtual tour. This house in Smyrna, we toured. We toured this house more than once um, and it was, it was gorgeous fucking gorgeous so we talked about it he said that he had them i'm so mad that all the houses that they're pointing to are basically like around the same size as my house and it's fucking six hundred thousand dollars i bought my house for 2.7 money um again the price was 6.99 he said he felt comfortable putting in an all cash offer. And if you remember on the videos before, he told me he had money in his savings from when he played football. So when he said an all cash offer, even I knew you, you got that kind of money, like where you can cut a cashier's check for 699,000. And he told me he did. No, no, he did. No, no, no. That's not how anything works. 
Hello? Hello? No, why would you believe that? Did you forget the last house? Did you forget how the last house wasn't a house? Oh my God, how far can being six foot four carry you? What the hell is going on? Oh my Lord, dude. He had money in savings um, from when he played football and he was very comfortable paying all cash for this home. So the real estate agent, Scott, sent over the paper. Bro, I, I, it is pretty funny that we established early on, on episode two, that arena football players make $18 and like 57 cents an hour. Okay. Which is why the whole like, oh, arena football got me. If nobody got me, arena football got me is such a hilarious thing to say. Paperwork. The paperwork was sent in both of our names. It was sent to my email. Um, that was another thing that I changed after Douglasville. Everything gets sent to me. And then I will be sure that he signs it. So he sent it to me. I looked over the offer. Um, we were asking, excuse me, we were going to put in an all cash full price offer with um, a request to have the basement finished. Also, not to defend a villain here, but modern dating can be tricky. High expectations lead to some lie. It's not about blaming women. Societal pressure plays a part. Red flags and she still married him. Must have been tall and wealthy, I guess. Brother, you are, I think, maxed out on being an insult. Like, I don't... Like, this is, like, what I suspect a dude says and uh, believes before they just, like, shoot up a fucking sorority house or something. Please. Please. For your own sanity, just literally do everything in your power to reorient your fucking brain okay this woman is a victim dog i know i'm joking about the six foot four shit but god damn brother like the geiger counter my my incel geiger counter is is broken you broke it okay i i can't even do the bit like the the hitler particle shit bit okay i can't even do that It's worse than $18 an hour. It's 18.5 an hour for the games they play. It's only like 12K a year because the seasons aren't that long. Holy shit, dude. Please, brother. You looked at a situation where like this woman has been severely victimized by a pathological liar. And you were like, I'm going to be honest with you. It's her fault, honestly. Like, yeah, we are joking about how he's like six foot four and it goes a long way. And now she's being like, you know, not the, not the smartest here. But God damn, dude, you're, you're, you're casting aspirations and motivations here where none in your, from your framework should exist. Or if you understand the dating pool, then you understand why she's, um, why she is personally that desperate like you just said you just personally recognize how like modern dating sucks ass and for some weird reason that didn't lead you to think like she's desperate like it's a it's a aspersions not aspirations wait what do you mean why not Wait, did I use the wrong word? No, like to aspire. Yeah, a hope or ambition of achieving something. No, I... No, I used it in the right way. No, I was saying like, you're looking for her motivation. I'm using aspiration as a to aspire you have decided you have decided that uh her her motivations are wrong casting aspersions oh that's not what i was talking about no i'm talking about like her motivation i'm not saying like, I'm not saying you're you're criticizing her. That wouldn't even fit in that situation. 
No, I'm saying you're you're looking at her motivations. Like I meant casting aspirations in this situation. What I meant there was you're assigning you're like casting as in uh you're why am I talking about this? This is a five hour video. Okay, we're gonna keep going. We were requesting for the seller <laughs> this to give so us dumb. an answer within twenty four hours. Um we were requesting a quick closing. Um, there's just some of the things I remember. I remember 24 hours, like I didn't want to wait on, y'all think about it. 24 hours, let us know if you're accepting the offer or not. And then also a quick closing because it was a, a new construction. So we didn't have to wait for the current tenant to move out. We didn't have to do that. So I watched in our bedroom as he pulled it up because it was a electronic document. He signed his name to the offer for $699,000 cash. He requested again, the seller let us know in 24 hours if they were accepting the offer. So we submitted the offer at around 6 p.m. We were requesting that by 6 p.m. the next day, they let us know if the offer was accepted or not. I watched him sign the offer. I sent the offer back to Scott from my email. All parties had signed. Scott texted us and said, I got it. I'm submitting it. I will let you know what they say. Let's go into part seven. Sorry, let's go into part eight. Good grief, this is getting long. Okay, so I just want to clear up some things that I realize um, is kind of creating some confusion. So just allow this video to serve as a stop sign. Let's clarify. First of all, the story, background. He was born in Philly, raised in Philly, and moved to Augusta. Um, story is that he moved to Augusta for high school. And so he okay, we're skipping this part. So had a spoke mis All right. So this is a recap. Them every single day bro she got filler Basically, episodes man god <laughs> damn bro she got filler so episodes bro to herself okay it's time for me to ask some questions that's my hope all right part eight of who the fuck did i marry so we submitted an offer bro we need to put a fucking one pace up in this bitch god damn this is like oh my god dude we need literally fucking no no we need like this is crazy. Offer on the house in Smyrna. I sent it over to Scott, our realtor. And next day comes, Scott asks if we can take a phone call. So he calls us and tells. Uh, a lot of fans don't know, but this is actually where the manga caught up, or the anime caught up to the manga. So Toy Studios had two options: either they do a filler recap arc. Or they continue making the story even longer and put the filler and bake the filler in. And obviously I, as a One Piece fan, would have much rather uh, had filler episodes so I could skip those later. And I think that um, eventually she basically makes the, she bakes the fillers in to the story. Tells us that the offer was not accepted and the builder did not do a counter offer. We don't exactly know um, why. Um, we don't exactly know why he didn't accept it, but the bottom line is that we figured out later on that he didn't want to finish the basement. So the offer was not accepted. The house fell through. I was okay with that because. Yeah, there ain't no fucking way, okay? This dude came in cash on hand and the offer wasn't accepted. I guess he didn't accept it, as she's saying, but. Again, I knew he. We know why he didn't accept it, because he doesn't have that money. Put in an offer. So you want to know why? I know he doesn't have that money, obviously, because he's a scammer and whatever. Nobody that has $600,000 sitting in their fucking bank account is dumb enough to buy a house with cash. Especially because if you have that kind of fucking upfront capital that you can dump into a house, then you absolutely, fucking lutely you absolutely fucking lutely would take out a mortgage, okay? That level of wealth, you take out a goddamn mortgage and you put the rest of the money in the market, since he's such a savvy investor, okay? Nah, dude's got that arena football offshore money. Especially at that time, when interest rates were super fucking low in comparison to what, it is, what it's at now. Remember. So, we continued looking at other houses. We found another house um, in Smyrna that he... With interest rates at 7 to 8? No, this is in 2020. This is before the interest rates uh, rose. What are you talking about? No, interest rates are super low at this point, guys. What are, what are we talking about? Hello? I think you guys are forgetting. I bought my house in 2021. I remember 
part of the reason why I bought my house in 2021 was because I knew that if I got a 30 year fixed interest with a 30 year fixed mortgage, I knew that this was going to be the last time mortgage rates were going to be that low. Just because I'm a fucking socialist doesn't mean I don't understand the market for the record. Suck my dick to every fucking broke boy capitalist. Let's fucking go! For the record. Just want to say to all my motherfucking haters out there. Oh, Hassan, you're socialist but rich. Yeah, that's right, baby. That's right. Suck my fucking dick, bitch. I locked that shit in. I locked that motherfucking shit in, dude. This house is larger than mine. I am so mad. Oh my God, this is a bigger house than my house. And it's literally $700,000. I am going to die. Okay, that's besides the point. This is a bigger house than mine. It's besides the point. Oh my God. Oh my fucking God. Why is Atlanta so much cheaper than Los Angeles? That's crazy. Anyway, my point was... Yeah, I got, I, I, although I had not established credit, so my interest rate was, was high, it was still fucking lower than it would have been if I bought it after the peak started, after the, uh, uh, interest rate started going up. He really liked. Um, I thought that it was way too big for just the two of us. Um, and so the price of this home was much higher than the 750000 that Chase had approved for the mortgage. So what he explained to me was that he was willing to do the $750,000 mortgage, and he was also willing to put a significant amount of the money and savings on the house, which meant that he was now comfortable going from $750,000 up to about $900,000. You didn't pay cash, motherfuckers still mad? Of course I didn't pay cash. You think I have, especially back then, 2021, $2.7 million in cash? Dude, you have to be literally 14 to think I was like that fucking caked up. And I just described to you once again, $2.7 million in cash, even if you have that, is dumb as fuck to just dump it. People think you wrote them a check? Well, I know, I remember, because so many people are like, why didn't you fund the communist revolution with the $2.75 million in cash that you clearly fucking uh, wrote a check to uh, this, this homeowner to buy the house? Down payment had to be in the 80k range or something. Well, no. What? It's 2.7 million dollars. No, it was more than that. First, what down payment would be 80k? Thousand. Again, his his whole explanation was: I have the money where I can put down a substantial down payment, bring down the price of the home, and then basically mortgage the rest of it. So that was now the plan. I was not comfortable with a home <laughs> over nine hundred thousand um, dollars. But again, keep in mind, I saw the Chase paperwork. So yeah, I was chatters are so funny. And they're like, "Oh, my five dollars is for a revolution, not hats." No, brother, your five dollars so you avoid the top of the hour ad break, which comes at the top of every hour. If you no longer want to see those motherfucking ads, all you need to do is subscribe, baby, for five dollars or for free with a Twitch Prime. You can do that shit. Okay, going straight to the fucking house fund. Also, I've been trying not to talk about his knowledge on money, impossible challenge. Yes. Because I think it's, I think people legitimately think that I don't know how to make my money work or some shit. Okay. That's not the reason why I don't make my money work for me. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I know how to fucking do capitalism. And I have enough liquid cash to have capital. The reason why I don't do it is because I don't need it. Why the fuck would I do that? I spend it all on my family. And for the most part, it's just like whatever the rest of it is retirement. Here's the term I break now. Huh. <sighs> You are not a socialist? Fuck no, baby. I'm a capitalist, but a really bad one for some reason, even though I understand the dynamic of the market and how it works and how I could just... Dude, listen, brother. 
You can't say you're not a socialist in this circumstance, especially because like the only thing that will help you under capitalism is to just have money. If you have pre-existing money, that's it. It's the cheat code. Okay? That's the cheat code. These guys aren't fucking wise investors for the most part. They just put the money in the market and the market always fucking grows unless there's like something genuinely devastating happening. Unless there's something genuinely devastating that's happening or you went in uh, to too aggressive of a uh, portfolio. You went in with a very aggressive intent and you didn't leverage and you didn't put it into different assets. Um, you didn't diversify your portfolio. Then ultimately, you know, maybe then you can make some mistakes and lose money. Scare little capitalists that don't give anything to socialism. What? So you block people like my friend after you make fun of them? You are not a socialist? You might be a Bernie socialist, a Cobra commander? You scare little... A scare little capitalist that don't give anything to socialism? Yeah. <laughs> don't give anything to socialism. You blocked my friend. Wait, who did I... Who did I ban, I wonder? Yeah, let me go, let me go pay into socialism. I was like, I just feel more comfortable sticking at the 750,000 mark. That's what you were approved for. Let's go with that. By this point, this is now fall of 2020. Um, we have been talking about marriage. I had my ring. Um, he had made VP at the I company. I didn't block Anson. And again, he was calling me every day from work. Um, the, I need to kind of explain how the company was ran because oh, we he think got VP, he would think he would be in an office. It was a condiment company, so they actually were producing the condiments, and I'm not saying the name of the company on purpose, but they were producing the condiments um, in this particular plant location. So a lot of times, he would simply tell me that he walked the floor um, checking in with his subordinates, basically. Now, how did he go to work? For the most part, at this point, he left before I woke up. However, pretty much he wore dress pants, um, kind of like a, deep, a dark navy blue cargo pant. And he had a polo shirt with a company logo on it. What I saw a lot of times is that he would not wear the polo shirt to work. He would wear like a company t-shirt. He would wear rubber sole shoes and the um, navy blue cargo pants. I didn't think it was a uniform, but it definitely, it reminded me of what someone would wear when I worked at Amazon, if you're going to be doing manual labor. He didn't go to work sloppy looking at all, but it definitely was not suit and tie. Nowhere near suit and tie. Um, it is fair to note that outside of work, he was a man who he loved to dress. He loved to wear the latest Jordans. He loved to collect watches. He collected a lot of Invicta watches. Um, he, he loved to collect hats. He wore hats, baseball caps everywhere because he didn't like the shape of his head. Um, so in terms of how he dressed casually, the man, he could dress. Um, in terms of how he dressed for work, yeah, he didn't dress like a VP. But his excuse was, I'm constantly walking the production floor and I can't in, be in a suit and tie walking the production floor Victor where they're creating the condiments that we're selling. So by this point, again, this is fall. We're still looking at houses. Um, we're still touring houses as much as we can because it is COVID. Um, we had found another house that we really liked and a house that I really truly wanted to put an offer in on. This was now gonna be the second house that we put an offer on. This man had a huge fossil collection. Invicta is like the Michael Kors, dude. It's like, oh, man, he was really loaded. He had a, a whole bunch of Michael Kors. He put in the the asking price, I believe, was about 700000 He put in under asking um, an offer for about 650000 I'm guessing, but I'll try to find the house and put it on this and put it on the story. Um, the reason that that house fell through, we found out that the home was sitting on a septic tank. We found out that the septic tank had an issue and it would have taken about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars to fix the septic tank the sellers were not willing to fix the septic tank personally i didn't really care for the house that much i'm the one who was like i don't really want it so even though we put an offer in we had 24 hours where we could uh pull our offer back and so we did once we found out i believe it was in the disclosure and if you're a realtor please feel free to tell me if i'm using the wrong terminology but i believe it was in dude it's so hard for me not to respond to larpers like this dude Anson is nice. I know you fools and you would get the wall. Like, it's so hard. It was Anson and he got timed out for a week because he was like duking it out with other chatters and I already unbanned him. But I'm going to be honest with you. This, this type of stuff is so funny. Like Anson brought his own. Wait, Cobra Commander is Anson actually 44 years old? Be honest. How you escaped the wall. First of all, brother, 
and I mean this in all sincerity, I wish for a future where I am executed as a reactionary. Okay, so that's number one. That would imply that society has advanced so far beyond, hopefully not like in a fucking silly ass like Maoist struggle session. That would be shitty. Um, but like actually we have progressed so far that like I'm being fucking executed because they're like, this man is too reactionary. Okay. On a planet where I would be considered a right wing figure is a planet where we have already gotten luxury gay space communism. Okay. We're talking Star Trek at that point. We can hope. Yeah, I like that you're hoping is, however, uh, simply that I just get executed, which is, once again, a, a phenomenally funny. Phenomenally funny way to to operate, to be like, yeah, I'm an anarchist and my biggest enemy is a fucking Twitch streamer. <laughs> Are the Danes okay? I don't think they have been okay since they flubbed the whole conquering England shit. All right, let's continue. And the disclosure that they told us the septic tank needs to be replaced. That's when I was like, nah, I don't, I don't want that house. Um, so we pulled out. The house fell through. And so I was fine with it because, again, I was heavily involved. I saw him sign the offer. I knew every step of what was going on. Our real estate agent, Scott, was amazing. But you will see in, when I get to it where he made a mistake as a real estate agent. So house number two fell through. Um, we then moved on, saw a few more houses. Shocked to find out that house number two also fell through. Then we get to house number three. I'm going to pause talking about the houses because now I need to introduce what happened with the cars. Stay tuned. All right. Yes. Part nine of who the fuck We're did back. I- She's driving again. It's going to be another long Mary. one. So we're pausing on the house stuff. Let me tell you about the car. So when I met my ex-husband, I was driving a 2012 Nissan Rogue, um, fully loaded. It had quite a few miles on it, but it, it got me from A to B. It was, in a, it was in good condition, but I was upside down in the car. He was driving a 2018 Ford Taurus, um, super, uh, sport mode. I know he had a sport mode on the car and I love driving that car. Um, when he told me how he was a regional manager, he told me that one of the perks that came with the job was that he would be getting a company car. And so, we spent time going to Range Rover of South Atlanta. Um, we spent time going to Jaguar. We spent time going to BMW. We spent time going to uh, Ford. Ain't no way they're giving my boy a fucking Beamer, okay? Which was on Mount Zion in Morrow, if you all are familiar with that area. He test drove a whole lot of cars. In the end, he decided on a BMW sedan. I was there when he test drove the car. I got in the car with him. I loved it. Um, and he explained to the salesperson, you know, I'm getting a company car. I need to get a printout of the full price of the car, tax tag and title, because what my company is going to do is wire over the money for the car. The salesperson was like, okay, you know, apparently, apparently that happens a lot. So he gave him a printout with the tax tag and title for the car. Um, in front of me and the salesperson, he called the person in the finance department for his job. Obviously, I have no idea what this person's name is, but he called. I'm going to be honest with you. This kind of seems like the New Yorker magazine story or whatever. Was it the New Yorker magazine where like last week or so they wrote an article about how like the personal finance person for the New Yorker talked about this like incredibly elaborate scam or the cut. Sorry. Um, talked about an incredibly elaborate scam where like that person basically gave away $50,000 in a shoebox or some shit. Okay. And Honestly, at that point, the grift is so, like, it's so elaborate that I do kind of understand why. Like, I know for a fact that, you know, there are plenty of people that try to fucking do this kind of shit on me all the time, right? I have a pretty good nose for this sort of thing, I think. But I also kind of understand why a grift that complex is probably going to be like, I, there's some red flags, but ain't nobody is going this far. You know what I mean? Like this makes Ludwig look like the savviest person who has never been scammed. 
called the person, he explained to them, this is the amount of money. He said the president of the company, so-and-so, has authorized for him to get a car, not spending more than, I think, 90,000 tax tag and title. The BMW came out to just under 90,000. Um, and so he, I remember this conversation so fucking vividly. So he's, he's on the phone in front, I'm standing, I'm sitting down, the salesperson sitting down at their desk and he's like, they, you know, they put me on hold. And so he's like, he, I guess the person comes back and he says, um, yeah, the, the price of the car is blah, blah, blah. He was like, give me a second and I can send you a picture of that printout that shows tax tag and title. A fed called a woman over the phone instead of showing up at her front door. Yeah. Feds do call you on the phone for the record. That is a thing that people will do sometimes just saying <laughs> I can confirm for the BMW he gets off the phone he takes a picture of it he said oh my god speaking of feds okay this is random but I have to describe this I was shocked detective showed up at my front door the other day before I started streaming I can't believe I forgot to explain the story and like I look through the camera I see that like she has her she's in civilian clothes and she has her badge and she has her gun. And I was like, oh shit. Like, I assume that I got another fucking death threat or something. You know what I mean? Or, I don't know. Was she 6'4? No. I, I was like, it's, it happens. It's common. Or, you know, like in other circumstances, in other circumstances, if it was like an actual patrol officer or a SWAT team, I would know exactly what's going on. But the fact that this person was dressed in civilian clothes, um, the fact that this person was dressed in civilian clothes, I was like, oh, it's a fucking detective. First time I've, not the first time I've talked to detectives, but definitely the first time a detective has come to my house. And so um, she walks in and she's like, oh, there was a, you know, there was a robbery in this place. Can we, uh, like, there was a robbery in your neighborhood and we wanted to, like, we wanted to look at the, security cameras which was incredibly shocking which was incredibly fucking shocking because i genuinely did not realize that the lapd even fucking cared about cars being broken into answer the question is she hot no i'm i was actually in awe i was actually in fucking awe that you literally had no i'm not even joking like this shit is so this shit is so motherfucking commonplace out here like people breaking into cars is so motherfucking commonplace what up big dog <clears throat> wait lapd detective or fbi no lapd detective showed up at my house fbi has never shown up at my house but i have had phone conversations with the fbi um what do you mean for you to say they care if it's a rich person? No, no, no, no, no. This shit happens all the fucking time in my neighborhood, okay? I've never even heard of a cop actually giving a fuck. Did she enter your house? Because something similar happened in my family, but they were looking at trying to get my dad on a charge. No, I, no, I, I welcomed them in because I thought originally that it was like, Probably like a death threat or some shit. But it was genuinely, it was genuinely a shocking, it was genuinely a shocking moment. She was investigating something else. She just lied. No, she literally showed me. No, she literally showed me the fucking police report. Did you give him the footage? I scrolled through it. There was nothing. It like, it didn't come up on my camera. Like, as in, uh, it was outside of the vision of the, of the camera. This is commonplace. It's scary. I'm sure you've thought about it a lot. Have you stumbled upon what you think would be a solution to this? Well, yeah, no, uh, rich, poor, doesn't matter. Cars get broken into in Los Angeles, literally every day, nonstop. And cops, one hundo P do not fucking, uh, I, this is the first time. This is the the first time in my in my life living in Los Angeles, living in shitty neighborhoods, living in obviously richer neighborhoods, 
Um, this is the first time I've ever seen a cop actually follow through on it. A detective, not even a cop, a fucking detective. People keep saying they must have been looking for someone, but you don't understand. Like, they had the fucking report. Anyway. Sends it to whoever. He waits about 10 minutes. He calls the person back. He says, did you get it? Apparently the person did get it. But the person who can, who can actually physically do the wire transfer had gone home for the day. So what he says to um, the BMW salesperson, he's like, okay, we're going to have to do this tomorrow because so-and-so went home for the day. I don't know who the salesperson is. I can only tell you from my viewpoint what I thought. I had no reason to think this was a lie. I really didn't. Because again, you gotta keep, please keep in mind the circumstances that all of this is happening. We're inside the dealership. We're sitting at the desk of this person. He gave us the printout. He's on the phone, do, you know, doing business, basically saying, look, I need, this is how much money the car is gonna cost. He's taking a picture of it. He seemingly is texting someone saying, this is how much, you know, this is proof of how much it is. Then he asked the BMW salesperson, I need your wire transfer information. The guy got up, rushed over to, I guess their finance area to get the wire, the bank wire information. Cause obviously you have to wire it a certain kind of way. Rushes back over. Get I love that she keeps looking over at the camera while she's driving in a straight line. Okay. Let's is it to my ex-husband? My ex-husband's like, okay, first thing in the morning, we will get this wired over and then, you know, I'll come and pick up the car. My fiance, me, will drive me up here to pick up the car. So we leave. He felt like, because at the time that this all happened, I was pregnant. So he felt like, look, we're about to have a baby. I don't want you driving that Nissan Rogue. I want to get you something. I want to get you something more secure, something new. I really wanted a Kia. <laughs> I really wanted a Kia Telluride. Um, and he was like, well, let's let's look at the warranty. This man knew a lot about cars. He knew a lot about the warranty. He knew a lot about the depreciation value. And so he did talk to me a lot about what will we get the most for our money. Um, we test drove, when I say we, I, I test drove a Kia Telluride, a Kia Sorento. He didn't like either of those. He had me test drive a Ford Explorer. He didn't really care for that. Then came time where he really wanted me to get a BMW. Um, he really wanted me to get a BMW X5. So. He took me to B Global BMW Imports, which if you know anything about Atlanta, it's off of Cobb Parkway, but you can see it off of uh, off the highway. I believe 285 is where you can see the Global Imports BMW dealership. He took me there. He had me test drive an X5 and X6. Um, he also had me test drive, a, uh, I think I'm gonna get the numbers wrong, a 525, which was a sedan. I did not like that. I wanted an SUV. Um, I loved driving the BMW. He also had me drive an M series, test drive an M series. So he was very adamant that I should get a BMW. The reason being is because according to him, he had a BMW in California when he lived in San Diego. He had a BMW that he loved. It was a white BMW. He showed me pictures of the BMW. So he showed me pictures of this white BMW that he had. And unfortunately the car got totaled about two months before he moved to Georgia. So he had received, um, money not a lot but some money to get another car and he used it to get the Ford Taurus because he was like I just need a car that's going to get me from A to B until I get into a house and I'm much more settled for him he was like I'm really giving myself 60 days to get settled here in Georgia after moving from California but then he met me again that's the story so he had me test drive the BMW so much so I loved the BMW loved it I wanted a dark blue BMW with cognac interior I wanted an x5 and I wanted an m-series so I can clearly tell y'all that's exactly the car I wanted. We were online looking for that particular car because not every dealership had it. I was okay with a black BMW if needed, um, but I really wanted dark blue and I really wanted that cognac colored interior. So he felt like, I want you to still, I want you to consider all of a sudden an Audi Q8. Let's just see how you like it. If you don't really like it, then we will go back to the BMW. I cannot tell you why he switched up. I can't, um, but I can tell you he took me to an Audi dealership on Peachtree Industrial. He test drove an Audi and I test drove an Audi Q8. Um, I loved the Q8. Loved it, loved it, loved it. But I was tired of test driving cars. By this point, I had test, dri test driven so many cars. Um, our weekends were spent either looking at a house or test driving cars. And I was picky, I will admit that. So he had me test drive the Q8. I really liked it. I finally just told him, look, I'm good with either the BMW or the Good Audi. car. Because I'm, I'm tired of test driving cars. He told my family he was buying me a new car because keep in mind, he had, well, not keep in mind, let me let y'all know. He had met my family initially on Zoom. Because again, we were locked down. He had met my family. BMW X series over Audi Q series. Audi Q8 is a great, great car. Audi Q8 is a fucking phenomenal car. Literally the exact same car as the Porsche Cayenne and the exact same car as ding, ding, ding, the Lamborghini Urus, as a matter of fact. So 
I would say it's a better car than any Beamer you'll fucking buy. I trust. A lot of gas, though, bro. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, SUVs are fucking gas guzzlers and dumb as fuck, but... You have a Urus? No. Um, he also had met my family in person because at this point... Yeah, bro, I, I bought a fucking Lambo. You think if I bought a motherfucking Lambo that you wouldn't know about it already? It would be in every hater's pace bin. Every hater... Every, every fucking hater would be talking about how I... They already lie and say that like I bought a gas guzzler. It was like, look, if you're not showing any symptoms, maybe we can do family dinner. Um, and so we had. So he had met my family in person. And now we will go ahead and move towards part 10 of this series. Okay, part 10. Who the fuck did I marry? Okay, I had to sneeze. All right, so at this point, I had test driven all these cars. Kias, um, hell, he even had me test drive a Nissan Murano. But the main two were BMW and an Audi. He had told my grandfather he was getting me a car. He had told my aunt he was getting me a car, that he was going to, he, he was like, she's going to be my wife. I want her to be in something secure. So my family was really like, wow, you know, uh, wow. You know, who knew that he had this kind of money? Um, and so I hated the fact that he did that because anytime he got around my family, here's another red flag to put in, in the United Nations of red flags. He would always talk about money and he would always brag. I never realized it in real time. I didn't realize it until I was. Okay, I'm not going to lie. The only redeeming quality of this guy is that he is a piece of flesh that is around her. And also that piece of flesh that happens to be six feet and four inches long. That's it. There's, there's like nothing. Everything else is just like bad. Out of the situation. He I'm literally trying to find redeeming qualities and there is not a single fucking redeeming quality here. He's bragged about the fact that he could fight, the fact that he had money, and the fact that he played football. Those are the three things he always bragged about. Back to cars. So I told him I he played arena football. Oh my god! I was like, pick one between the BMW and the Audi because you said you're buying it. So pick one. So this man chose the Audi. So he takes me to the dealership. I wanted a white Q8. He does the give me the printout of how much it's going to cost, tax, tag, and title to get this Q8. Gentleman who's helping us gives him the, the printout. He's saying he's going to pay this money for the car out of the savings account that's that's offshore. That's the story. That's what he's saying. <laughs> So he apparently Wait, that's not how this works. You can't just you can't just bring offshore cash inshore to buy a car. The IRS would be like, excuse me, what? You bought a hundred thousand dollar car cash? Hello? How did you like it doesn't make any sense at all? It, that makes this so dumb. It's asking the guy, you know, is there a holding fee? Can I pay a holding oh. fee to secure this car while I'm working to get the money transferred? Because obviously with COVID, it's going to take long for the banks to transfer the money. Side Actually, you can, but it has to be shuttled in through a complex trust system. No, I'm saying that, like, you can't just directly pay for a fucking car with offshore funds. <clears throat> the IRS is going to see that you purchased a car. And yes, the IRS does not care that you are six foot four. Okay? The IRS would not give a fuck. If that was real, that's a major red flag. Like, that's th there's probably an automatic protocol for that to be triggered as a red flag. Guys, in this... In these United States of America, you can't even fucking take out $10,000 from your own bank account without the bank literally automatically triggering the FBI. That's insane. They went after Al Capone because he was a short king. True. No, I need everyone to understand. One of the reasons why he was able to get away with the stuff he got away with is because we were on lockdown. It's crazy because it's now 2024, but I don't know. Do we all remember how it seemed like a lot of stuff stopped in 2020 now? Keep in mind, that's not an excuse I'm making. <laughs> Jesus stopped giving signs at this point was just seeing the, yeah, was just trying to see how far she could take, he would take this. Everybody was invested at this point. No more divine intervention. Because shit still got done. But in terms of business as usual, business as usual just was not happening. 
in 2020 at this time. So when he's saying, oh, it's going to take a while for the bank to transfer the money, the gentleman who was working at Audi did not even, he didn't make a face. He didn't, he, he didn't blink. He was like, I know it's going to take a while because of COVID. So basically what ends up happening is we leave. He has the printout. He calls the bank or he calls his his um, financial advisor who does have a name the financial advisor's name is eric i feel comfortable using certain people's names especially if we find out they didn't exist um so he calls eric he tells eric in front of me in front of me hey i need to transfer seventy two thousand five hundred and twenty six dollars whatever the amount was because i'm buying a car for my fiance this is the bank account information do you need me to give it to you over the phone or do you need me to email it to you pause i can't hear what the person's saying but that's what he would do do you need me to give it to you over the phone or can I email it to you? Okay. Okay. All right. Give me a few minutes and I'll go ahead and email it to you. All right. Let me know. I'll call you back to let you to find out if you received it. Okay. Hang up. So I'm hearing this because again, I'm Thank not paying attention to, or did I hear anybody on the other phone? Did I hear anybody on the other give this up. So he, um, he proceeds to type up an email, type up something telling him this is the information that we need. Um, I didn't think anything of it. He called me at work the next day to tell me that the money was sent to Audi that he called Audi and he confirmed with Audi that they received the money. What he told me is that the car is going to be um, delivered to the house. Y'all, it's not that I lived in a hood, cause I didn't, but I did not live in an area of Clayton County where you would have a brand new Audi delivered to your house. So I remember saying to him, I don't want that car like delivered to the house, not yet because I need to put that car in the garage. And my Nissan was, I only had a one car garage. So my Nissan was in the garage. So he said, okay, well let me call them back and change the delivery date can you be home or can you do a half day? So he's asking me, can you work a half day so that they can deliver the car and you, and you will be home for it? I said, yes, that's fine. Because it why is she still taking his word? Bro has not produced anything to date. Uh, excuse me. He's produced a fucking long dick. I assume. I hope. Okay. I suspect that he was, he was dignitizing her a little bit. Like there's no other fucking rhyme or reason for this story to go on for as long as it did. Again, it's COVID. I'm working from home anyway. Um, I only had to go in the office two days a week. So I, I'm at home the next day. He told me the car would be delivered between the hours of one and three. <sighs> Obviously, between one and three, nothing happened. So three o'clock, I called him. He's at work. He sends me a voicemail. He calls me back. I said, it's three o'clock. I didn't No one ever came with the car. Um, what's going on? And then I remember I was like, well, do I need to call Audi myself? Cause I thought that you handled it, but if you didn't handle it, let me, do I need to call them? And so whenever I would suggest I will handle it, he would get very, very defensive. Red flag number 472. So he was like, no, I will call Audi. Don't do anything. I'll call Audi and find out what's going on. Okay. So I'm at home chilling, cooking dinner, normal night. He calls me back and says, yeah, the car was stuck on the truck in Spartanburg because apparently that's where their deliveries come from. So when he told me this, I was in the kitchen laughing because by this point, I will be honest, and I told y'all I'll be honest even when it makes me look bad. I was guilty of... Wait, you guys know what he looks like? There ain't no fucking way, dog. Wait. Okay, I need to see what he looks like. It got leaked? He looks like Drake? Oh, he's made hella videos? Wait, he started posting too? Okay, that's a spoiler. Let's not spoil it. On one hand, I believed him. And on the other hand, I was like, let me see what lie he come up with. Let me just see. Um, but keep in mind, my brain was really like not rationalizing, not comprehending how deep the lie was. I just thought that no one told him. Given the popularity of this story on TikTok, I suspect this will be like a pivotal moment in the gender wars, I think. If he's also making these videos, I feel like YouTubers are going to start having her on and him on. And like the manosphere is going to have him on. And then the manosphere is going to be like, you were actually right, King, that type of shit. Oh my God. And if you got a significant other, and I don't care. Oh my God. Oh my God. They found him. I'm not going to spoil it. And the car was going to be delivered, and he made that up. I had no idea how deep the lie went. So he said, you know, the car's in Spartanburg. Um, it should be delivered this weekend. The weekend came, he had a whole other excuse. Um, I don't remember what the exact excuse was as to why the car was never delivered. I do remember we got into an argument and I was like, don't even worry about it. I'm gonna get a new car my damn self. I don't even need your help. 
which is probably one of the worst things you can tell a narcissist because they love to be the hero you know they lo it's, it's all about them but I was like don't even worry about it I'll get when I when I have the money to get a car myself I'll do it I don't want to hear anything else about a new car I don't want to hear shit else about a car because at this point I was spending way too much time trying to figure out are we getting a car are we getting a house like where what the fuck is going on always there was an excuse so when I told him I don't want to hear anything else about a car and I am not going to a dealership to test drive another car um, that ended that whole discussion right there so this is what I'm this is where I'm going to interject what I believe was happening I believe that my ex-husband is the type of person he gets off uh, you know nut. he gets off on you being excited about something that he knows you will never get so I believe that he enjoyed going to car dealerships he enjoyed um, watching me test drive a car and get excited about it knowing I was not going to get it it is the it is the level of cruelty and again I'm telling y'all stuff, stuff that I found out way later on it is the level of cruelty that I still cannot comprehend so the whole issue about the BMW and the Audi I think he just enjoyed seeing me get excited and then pull it away part 11 coming up all right part 11 so for this Bro, part she's still in the car yo this crazy at this point she's got to be doing it in the car for uh you know to continue for continuity purposes right she lives in the car god damn dude i'm just gonna get, get this woman her q8 okay god damn that fucking nissan what does she have what is she currently driving give you some backstory on the family pause all the stuff about the house pause the stuff about the car this is backstory on his family my ex-husband's family another filler episode yawn i am we're skipping we're skipping, um, we're skipping the fillers we're skipping the fillers i know i look rough but it's okay it's okay anyway so this is part 12 of who the fuck did i marry so this is the backstory on what i was told for the ex-wife this is important pay attention <laughs> all right this is 2020. So this is what I was told in 2020. I was told that he and his ex-wife used to be friends. Then they started dating and subsequently got married. They got married in California. Um, he had bought a house with the money that he made from arena football. They had apparently had gotten married on the downward of the arena football career. Um, had a nice house. He showed me a picture of the house, showed me pictures. Inside you literally the skipped critical info. Okay. You guys are crazy, dude. The grand brother oh. Augusta, and then they would they would reminisce as the family all right follow me my ex-husband's parents mom and dad are both deceased mom passed away from cancer um dad passed away shortly after her i'm not sure what he passed away from so he has a number of siblings he has two with his parents he has um two siblings two brothers excuse me two brothers one is older lives in philly one is younger by two years lives in nashville he has two sisters one Shantae is older lives in Douglasville with her husband and two kids a boy and a girl younger sister Kim is the baby lives in Augusta with her husband worked at I think he told me Procter and Gamble that was the story he had two half brothers that were through his dad one brother lived in Baltimore the other brother lived in Augusta the brother that lived in Augusta I have physically met in person shook hands hugged all that the brother that lived in Baltimore I have FaceTimed with talked to him the brother that lived in Philly, the older brother that he looked up to, I have never talked to him on the phone. I would always talk to him um, through my through my ex-husband. So the conversation would be like, hey, babe, uh, brother brother so-and-so said, hey, he didn't call him brother so-and-so. We'll call him John. John said, hey, hey, John. I would be in the bathroom doing my hair, brushing my teeth. Hey, John. And he'd be like, did you hear? He said, how you doing? I was like, I'm good. How's he doing? Um, oh, my God. Is brother me. John fake? And so he would relay back and forth. Back Oh my God, is Brother John fake? If Brother John's fake, I'm losing it. He made up a fake brother. Back and forth, back and forth. Um, he talked to John every day from starting around July after the grandmother passed away. He would talk to John every morning. We both would be getting ready for work and he would be on the phone with John. They would be talking for 30, 40 minutes, talking about football, talking about other siblings. They would be talking about cars. They talk, I mean, it was it was really like Arena not football. a big deal. They would talk about the brother in Baltimore, they would talk about the brother in Augusta. And then they would they would reminisce. This is the conversations I could hear. Let me explain. Yo, I'm not gonna lie, this wasn't a skippable part. This was deep lore. Okay. Holy moly, this was actually good lore. Yo, I'm so invested. When I say I can hear a conversation, what that means is I am physically standing near him or next to him where I could hear him with the phone up to his ear talking to someone because it wasn't me. 
okay? I may not hear the other person because the phone call may not be on speakerphone. But what I hear is, um, for example, I hear, hey man, what y'all doing? Oh, for real? Y'all barbecuing this weekend? What y'all making? Oh, that's what's up. Nah, I think me and her are gonna stay in this weekend because, you know, these numbers is looking crazy with COVID. Yeah, she over here. She's sitting right here. She watching TV. Okay, hold on. John said, hey. Hey, John. You heard her? Okay. All right, bro. I just wanted to check in on you. That's the type of conversation I'm explaining. Okay, so I hope that that gives a little more clarity about the type of conversations I'm hearing. So, um, I don't know why this light keeps going out. Um, okay, so that's, the, that's how he would talk to his siblings. The grandmother passed away. He called me around April or May <clears throat> and told me that his grandmother passed away. His grandmother um, on his dad's side had died suddenly from COVID. She had symptoms. She went to bed and did not wake up. Probably the vaccine, brother. He was distraught. He was crying. He wasn't eating. He Even was though just this sitting is before there, um, listening to music, not watching TV, just sad because he was like, you know, my grandmother was always my, my support system. So from what I saw, it really bothered him. I did not think anything of it. I'm one of those people. If you tell me somebody in your, in your family passed away, I'm going to believe you because I don't play about death. And I guess I expect other people don't either. Um, he did however, not lie about his grandmother passing. However, that is not the same for everyone else, but we'll get there. Hey, yo. So family, he talked to his, he had his uh, sister, Shantae, who lived in Douglasville. Um, like I said, she was married with two kids. Apparently she was a nurse. So when I had my miscarriage, that was a sister that he was like, my sister will take you to the hospital. Like that's what family does. Okay. Um, I had never met Shantae. I've been on the phone, or excuse me, I've been around him when he was on the phone with Shantae. Never heard her part of the conversation, um, but he would be talking to his sister. That's what he said. That's what it sounded like too. Um, now, what is interesting is that we lived maybe 35, 40 minutes away from Douglasville. So there were plenty of times that he had invited me to go with him to his sister's house. Okay, let me tell you how this would always work out. Total times he invited me was probably three times for different barbecues or whatnot. The first time he invited me, I was like, no, nah, I ain't going because again, COVID. And she's a nurse. Hell no. Um, the second time he was like, yeah, she invited us, but I don't think we should go because COVID. No. The third time we ag I agreed to go. I was like, absolutely. I'll go meet your sister. Like, that'd be great. Um, on our way to her house, to third Douglasville, to go see the sister. Um, apparently he got a phone call. The phone was always like on vibrate. But he got a phone call and he told me that something came up. And so she's, she had to cancel the barbecue to get together, whatever. Um, and so I was just like, oh, man, you know, OK, well, hopefully we can go another time. It, was, it didn't happen close enough for me to have red flags, if that makes sense. Um, but at this point, as y'all probably like, girl, you so blind. But again, I didn't think anything of it because it's like, OK, if the sister's fake. Nice fell through we'll see we'll reschedule um and so we just went out to eat and then he talked to another brother the brother from augusta that he would have on speakerphone so it was like you know i didn't i didn't think anything of it i really didn't um wait so the real the real family members the real family members are like on speakerphone fake family members not on speakerphone man and the more i talk about it the more i realize like i I'm, I'm not a dumb person <laughs> but it just never dawned on me the things that you have to now investigate. Um, it just, it didn't dawn on me, but nevertheless, that is the backstory for his family, right? Grandmother passed away. Three weeks later, he called me and told me his uncle had passed away from COVID. The uncle had tested positive, had to go into the hospital and he died. It was um, a bit of a red flag. It was a bit of a red flag, but like I said, I don't play about death. So I was just like, wow, because of these two deaths, he became a stickler about COVID. Yeah, at this point, I'm assuming he lied about being six foot four too, and then this whole thing falls apart when he's like standing next to something that she knows the height of and realizes that he's actually five eleven. And then drops the whole act. He's like, I found out that he wasn't six foot four. Episode part seventy eight. I found out that he wasn't six foot four and he was wearing lifts. And when I mean a stickler, wear your mask, wear gloves, hand sanitize, wash your hands. Like he was annoying about making sure neither one of us caught COVID. So now I'm gonna give you the backstory in regards to what I was told with the ex-wife. Okay, I know I look rough, but it's okay. It's okay. Anyway, so this is part 12 of who the fuck did I marry? So this is the backstory on what I was told for the ex-wife. This is important. Pay attention. <laughs> All right. 
This is 2020. So this is what I was told in 2020. I was told that he and his ex-wife used to be friends. Then they started dating and subsequently got married. They got married in California. Um, he had bought a house with the money that he made from arena football. They had apparently had gotten married on the bro. One Google. One Google could have saved her life. Like arena football money doesn't go that way. I Googled it and found out very quickly. I mean, it should have given her some clues. She didn't know what the fuck it is. If you don't know what the fuck arena football is, he's probably not making that kind of money. Downward of the arena football career. Um, had a nice house. He showed me a picture of the house. Showed me pictures inside the house. Remember that. Showed me pictures inside the house. It was a really nice home in San Diego. And um, basically what happened was that he came home from work early one day and the hiccup, sorry, came home early from work one day and his wife was sleeping with another man. The man was in the house. He and the man get into it. Her son, who um, is about 17 years old in 2020, um, she had two kids, a daughter and a son. The son apparently was on his way home from school when my ex-husband found his previous wife in bed with another man. So the story goes that he and the guy fought he kicked the guy out. He kicked his ex-wife out, but told her the kids could stay. The kids are not biologically his. Those are his stepkids. Um, she was like, you must be kidding. Like, I'm not leaving my kids here. The kids are old enough to where um, they were like, we're, we don't want to go because you fucked up. We don't want to leave. So apparently she leaves. Um, the kids say, what a fabulous, what a fabulous. Yeah. I'm so sick. The fucking children wanted to stay with me instead of their own biological mother. After. They they were mad. They were mad at her for cheating on our beautiful stepdad. Yeah, he's like he's the father that stepped up. And uh, then she gets her own place. The kids move out, move in with their mom. He um, he files for a divorce in California. He files for a divorce in California, and it was an ugly divorce. She was asking for spousal support, all kinds of stuff. And then it turned into, um, you know. I'll help you with the kids, not child support, but just I'll, I will give you some money for the kids because apparently he was very close to the kids. The kids he wanted to keep he was a relationship six, with the kids. Their <laughs> biological fathers, apparently there were two fathers. Their biological fathers were not in the picture. So um, the divorce starts out contested and ugly, eventually becomes amicable. Eventually they become cordial with each other. So my ex-husband moved. This is all, all before he ever met me. So I'm telling you the story of what I was told in 2020. So eventually about two years later is when his job approached him about an opportunity to transfer to Georgia. And so he took it. New beginning, fresh start, he has family in Georgia. He took it. He told me this story pretty much the second or third conversation we had. Um, so it was always from the beginning that she had cheated. He caught her and um, he had filed for divorce, but he was still close to the kids. They still had a great relationship. I've heard him. I've heard him on the phone with the kids, you know, just encouraging them, helping them, helping the 17 year old like with homework. Um, the kids really apparently wanted to meet me and I was fine with that. Um, he would apparently he would send them money. You know, they needed something because he, he loved the kids as if they were his own. I'm telling you the story as I was told it in 2020. So let's see, around April or May of 2020, he informs me that his ex-wife has moved to Georgia. Apparently, she's staying with her sister in Gwinnett County. So she has moved to Georgia. The two kids are now in Georgia. And so when he tells me all this, I'm like, so what, what's that supposed to mean? Now, I will say this. He never made it seem as if she wants him back. He never presented that. It was always, no, you know, we're, we're cool for the kids. We're cool for the kids. Um, but he he's never presented that she was trying to get him back. I feel like it's fair to her for me to say that. Um, and again... Stay with me. It all comes out. But um, that was the backstory in regards to the ex-wife that they got married in California. They divorced in California. And then she eventually moved to Georgia to Gwinnett County after Why? he had transferred to Georgia for his job. Um, he did tell me that, you know, every now and then he'll get a text message from her. Um, he told me that he, you know, told her when I was pregnant, he felt like she needed to hear that from him instead of hearing it from the kids. Um, and we got into a bit of an argument about that. But honey, in the big scheme of things that anyway so we got into an argument about that I felt like the fuck that's none of her business um but that's the the overall backstory of her so remember because <laughs> there will be a quiz but just remember he um met her in California married her in California divorced her in California she moved to Georgia to Gwinnett County after he moved to Georgia are we clear 
Ex-wife is real, okay. by the way. I know. Part 13 of who the fuck did I marry? Um, I'm sure he so lied about details, but I think the ex-wife is a real person. Let's just kind of recap real quick. So I told you how we met. Met in March of 2020. Um, basically, Georgia got shut down. I keep saying shut down. Got locked down. We decided to quarantine together. I know it was crazy. It was crazy. Um, I really liked him. And <laughs> thought he liked me. So um, okay. I told you guys how we We're met. skipping the recap. Come on, man baby in june had to have surgery in july you know, wink that i made note when someone out the watch in 21 bring him i got the car in august it appealing my hopes up and stuff I'm so now we're going to segue into fall going into the holidays <sighs> here's what happened in october we looked at another house this house was in Maryland. okay the recap is this Two weeks, I mean, in like a matter of a couple weeks, they literally decide to move in together. He says he's going to buy a house. He lies about it. She finds out that she uh, is lying about the house. Then they do it a second time. He lies about it again. This is the third house that they're going to. Yes, immediately after meeting. She gets pregnant in the process. She gets pregnant in the fucking process. And has a miscarriage. He doesn't even show up to the fucking miscarriage. Doesn't even bring her to the hospital. She knows he's lying. She knows he's got hella red flags. She starts ca doing an audio diary. Basically doing like, dear diary, this man ain't shit. But I'm still with him. Marietta, absolutely gorgeous. Um... It was gorgeous. I want to say that the house was about seven hundred thousand dollars. I really like the house. Where are these houses living there? Where? Why? Why are there so many seven hundred thousand dollar houses that are bigger than mine? What the fuck? And they're all so gorgeous. See myself cooking there, um, and so subsequently, my ex husband put in an all cash offer on that house. I watched him put an all cash offer in on the house. Yeah, he's done this before. It. Our real estate agent, Scott, called us about 24 hours later, and he said, um, the sellers love your offer. The offer was an all-cash, full asking price offer, 700000 Let that sink in for a moment. He said, the sellers love the offer. They are asking that you, do, that you show proof of funds so that they can accept the offer. My ex-husband said, I will show proof of funds when they accept the offer. The seller said, great, we'll accept the offer when you show proof of funds. So basically we got into a stand a standoff. Um, and if you're a real estate agent or you work in real in um, real estate, I would love to know your thoughts on this. Wait, what? No, that's normal, Chad. It's not a standoff. That's just normal procedure. You absolutely. No, you do. You do show proof of funds. What do you mean? That's like. Hello? Why am I having this conversation? Why am I having this conversation with people who are fucking 20 years old and living with their parents? Oh, my God. Yes. I had asked people in my personal life, like, have you ever heard of this before? And I've had plenty of people who said I sided with the ex-husband. I would not show my bank statements until they um, accepted the offer. And then I had other people who were like, I wouldn't accept an all cash offer unless I verified that. The Bro, by the way, this isn't even for buying a house like in in like Los Angeles. Or even in New York, for example, if you even have to rent a fucking house, you half the time have to show proof of uh, funds and shit like that. Person can pay. So I'm just curious what your thoughts are. Income. Okay. So our real estate agent called us and was like, guys, you know, the sellers are giving you two days to show proof of funds. I had the letter that he showed me from Chase. I sent that to Scott, but that was for a mortgage. The offer was for all cash. So he needed to show all that he needed to show proof of funds that he had the cash to pay $700,000. <sighs> he didn't show it. He refused to budge on showing them um, proof of funds until they accepted the offer because he was afraid that they were going to create a bidding war. So what ended up happening was Scott called us and said, you know, I apologize because I didn't do my due diligence as a realtor. He said, before I ever started showing you guys a house, I should have. Um, collected your pre-approval letter and proof of funds. He said, so at this point, my broker has informed me that I cannot show you guys another house until you show at least us, meaning the... Um yeah, this is where the professionals are like now going, yeah, no, actually. No, 
that is not normal. The realtor for the for the realtor to ask that for the realtor or the broker to ask that means that they were like sussed out. That means that they were he was having his time wasted and they were like, "Yeah, no, that's not this is not that part is definitely not normal. Showing proof of funds when you're in the per like when you're going to purchase a house, that's normal. Showing it to the fucking realtor, nah. real estate firm until you show us proof of funds. And so I'm just like, well, I'm telling Mike's husband, just show them the fucking proof of funds. Like, what's the problem? Um, and so it was a lot of, you know. I <laughs> yeah, realtor seemingly doesn't care about him being six foot four. Really, I find that this is really unprofessional because it's not our fault that you didn't do your job correctly. It, it got a little ugly and it got uncomfortable because I'm like, I don't understand why you don't show them proof of funds when you clearly just signed a document stating that you're putting an offer in at full realtor asking price. This was five. the same thing that the realtor was saying. He was like, but you just signed an offer. So what's the problem? Like you want them to accept the offer and then you'll show everyone the proof of funds. And my ex-husband without missing a beat said, yes. So Scott did his best to work with the seller and say, look, accept the offer. He'll show you, he'll open the books. He'll show you the proof of funds. These sellers were like, no, that's not. And it wasn't so much the sellers. It was the seller's agent. Big respect to the seller's agent. Um, but the seller's agent was like, no, that's not how we're doing business. He needs to show those proof of funds before my, before I advise my clients to accept his offer, period. If he's not willing to do it, we'll go on to the next offer because they did have another offer on the table. For, um, it was less than asking price, but um, they were willing to accept that offer over the all cash offer because those people had basically shown proof. So subsequently, the house fell through. We passed the two-day deadline. They went with the other offer. Also, at this point, our real estate agent, Scott, and I do not blame him for this, pretty much cut all ties because what he, I believe, felt like was, I don't know what's going on, but something's going on and this is not how I do business. So until you guys are ready to show the proof of funds um, needed to buy a house, you need to get yourself another agent because we were already about 20 to 25 houses deep by this point. We had already put in two other offers. They fell through. And now here we are with this house. And once again, it fell through. Okay, so um, good news and bad news. Number one, this is part 14 of Who the Fuck Did I Marry? Bad news, this is going to be the last post for the night. And the reason why, good news, um, tomorrow's my birthday. So I'm just going to make this video, post it, and then I will pick back up probably Friday. Because honestly, I truly want um, to enjoy my birthday tomorrow. I just, I just want to enjoy my birthday. Um, all right, so y'all don't be upset. <laughs> just if anything watch parts 1 through 14 then um we'll be ready for part 15 so the house fell through in october 2020 and what i told him was i said i don't want to look at another house i don't want to talk about cars i want to get through the holidays um because it was going to be a holiday season where i could not celebrate my family because of covid so i said i just want to get through the holidays i want to get through the end of the year um and we'll revisit stuff in january i was very calm when i said it no argument, nothing like that. Um, and he said he understood. I just, a lot of what fueled me staying in this situation really was the fact that number one, I didn't want to be alone. Number two, I didn't want to look stupid um, by having the relationship end so quickly for everyone to be like, we told you something. Oh my God, that's the worst reason. Bro, she she says sunk cost, baby. What's up? Um, and number three, I was ready to get married. And that what ready to get married fueled a lot of stuff um i would not admit this on par 14 okay this shit is crazy that she literally did that and again i was still making my audio diaries so listening back to it i knew something was was wrong i admit that i knew something was wrong but what i thought it was truthfully was like why does it seem like there's always something like why can't we just go ahead and get the house um why is it always something why can't i just get the bmw it still didn't dawn on me how deep this something went. And for the people who keep asking, um, I'm going in order of events. So yes, there will be a video where I explain how everything came out and what came out, what was true, what was not true. It's coming. I'm just getting all of this out in order. So I told him I didn't want to look at a house no more. Um, I want to talk about houses. Do not mention the word Zillow. Do not mention the word, the word uh, realtor. Nothing. Let me just get through the holidays. And for myself, the question was, what do you want to do? Do you want to say it with him? Or do you want to cut your losses? Cut your losses! And the part that kept me constantly second guessing myself was, what if he's not lying? What if he's not lying? There's no, literally the conversation I had with myself was, there's no. 
at this point, he's lied like so egregiously. I'm almost, she's gearing us up to be like, oh yeah, this is why I married him. Okay. But he has lied so egregiously, like life shattering, world altering lies numerous fucking times. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not just talking like, oh, at the top of the hour, there isn't a three minute ad break type shit. I'm talking straight up, straight the fuck up. Except there is a three minute ad break at the top of the hour. Obviously, you might think that's a lie if you're subscribed because you don't see them. Okay, for $5 or for free, you too can also think that I'm lying to you at the top of the hour because you'll never see another ad break ever again. Here's a three minute ad break now. This compelling story will continue during the ad break. No way he is lying about having money. You saw, you saw the paper from Chase. They don't just approve $750,000 for a mortgage for anybody. Um, you see, I've seen his checking account. You see how much money's in his available checking. Like you, you I don't think he's lying. <laughs> I don't think he's lying about that. But what is it? Is it that he doesn't trust me? Like I second guess myself so much. Is it that he doesn't trust me? Wait, is it when, that maybe he doesn't really- When, when does she see his checking account? Take a week off, which is when we'll be done with the story. They want to get married. Like, what is it? Because I know what I saw. I know what I heard. I know that he's having conversations about move the money from this account to that account. Um, I know he's paying my car note and all these bills. Like, clearly this man is making money. I know that I saw the the promotional, the letter from HR that states his new salary is 200 and something thousand. Um, and I remember thinking, like, God, what? Like, what am I missing? I'm missing something, but what is it? Because I know what I've seen. I've no, I know what I have touched. I have physically touched these, these papers. Like I know how to read. So what is it that I am missing? He's close <laughs> to his family. He talks to them all the time. You know, he's just a regular guy that just likes to watch um, NFL football. He leaves me alone when I want to watch Georgia football. Um, you know, he's paying all, he's paying the bills, groceries. I haven't had to worry financially since I've met him. And as a woman who had lived on her own, paying her own bills, my God, that is the most intoxicating feeling when you meet a guy who just takes your stress and your worry away financially. But the downside is he took away the stress and the worry financially away and instead brought a mental fuck job I've never in my life had experience and I could not put my finger on it. I couldn't really talk to anybody about it because I'm a big believer in what happens at home stays at home. So I didn't talk to my girlfriends about it. I didn't talk to my family about it, but I'm, I, I just remember being like, Bro, she's self-isolated. Like, she is literally an abusive boyfriend's dream girlfriend. That's crazy, dude. That is crazy. You're not even updating your friends on things that are happening. What am I missing? What am I missing? Um, so we did not talk about houses. We did not look at cars. We didn't do any of that for November. I do love that she didn't even talk about this with any of her friends or family members and did an 80 part TikTok story after the fact so i guess she did win at the end december and he came to me like around thanksgiving and he what i thought was a very open loving conversation and in that conversation he was like okay i know i have fucked up i know that things are not feeling too strong right now he was like i want us to get married i want i, I want a home no um no i will show you whatever you need to see to put you at ease um, he was very, um, like contrite. He was very just like, what, what do, what do I need to do to put your mind at ease so that, you know, I'm in this and that I want this and that I love you and I want you to be my wife. Um, so I was like, show me your accounts. Oh. He showed me his checking. He showed me, he showed me one of his savings. He showed me a chase savings. Um, he did not show me the offshore and he did not show me the U S bank. So he showed me those two accounts, checking and chase savings. So I knew that there was money. What I saw in those accounts, there How was much? Money. How much? I told him, I was like, How much money? If we're going to buy a house, I want it to be through the mortgage on Chase. I don't want to deal with this proof of fund shit no more. I said, I do not want to look at another house until the beginning of the, of the new year. He said, okay. That is when we then had a conversation. So I guess I lied because we are going to have a part uh, 15 or 16 tonight. Um, but that is when we then had the discussion about marriage and that is where religion came into play um what yeah i'll give y'all the other part tonight stand by okay 
part 15, who the fuck did I marry? So in December of 2020, around beginning of December, we had a conversation, kind of a come to Jesus heart to heart conversation. And both of us had grown up in the church. Or the come fact, to Muhammad heart to heart. We were un, the fact that we were not married, but living together. The fact that almost had a baby together um, bothered both of us. Both of our families, my family and his family, um, were very adamant, like, okay, y'all y'all either need to get married or y'all need to separate. Um, and so I'm walking around with a ring on, um, which I'll post a picture of the ring because, God, there's so much to unpack. But anyway, I'm walking around with the ring. And so he said to me, Lisa, you don't buy this shit. She would have to be literally the greatest schizophrenic of all time. To be able to make up all of this would imply that, like, th bro, come on. This is five full hours of her lying straight up. And also, we know it's not fake because the ex the ex husband has also started making TikToks. And so is the ex husband's ex wife. The ex-husband started making TikToks, and so did the ex-husband's ex-wife. Spoiler alert. Whatever I need to do to do my part to make this work, I'm willing to do. At the same time, it wasn't that I did not trust him as much as it was. I felt like I wasn't trusting myself because, again, like I said in the previous video, I know what I saw. I know what I read. I know what I've heard. Um, this is going to be an HBO miniseries. I'm calling it now. But fuck, something was not sitting right with me. And every time I would question it in my head, the other side of me was like, okay. It's going to be an HBO miniseries played by that, that lady who was on the variety lineup. What's her face? You know what I'm talking about? The one that's like, no, not Quinta Bronson. No. No, no, I think it's, it might be. No, not Viola Davis either. Um, 100%. Um, Daveen Ram Randolph, I think, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Daveen Joy Randolph is going to play her in a fucking mini series on HBO, I'm telling you right now, is 100% happening. Like, it's way too fucking viral and it's way too compelling of a story. You know he ain't lying about the money because you saw it. No, not Lifetime. Girl, are you that? Like, I remember saying to myself, are you that jaded that you don't even know what it's like to have a decent man? Yes, I really had the audacity to have that thought. So we agreed at the beginning of December, like, we wanted to be together. I believe I loved him. I believe he loved me. So the decision was made that we were going to get married. It's still COVID, so we had to follow certain protocol. So we filed um, our marriage license in um, Fayette County, Georgia, because I, <laughs> you could not get an appointment in Clayton County to save your life. So we filed the marriage license in Fayette County. On our marriage license, it asked the number of um, previous marriages. He said one. I had zero. It asked for our social security numbers. He put his social security number down. Coleman Domingo as the husband? No shot. I mentally wrote down his social security number. And I did a background check. I did a background check after I had filed a marriage license. Yes, I know, but I did. The background check, um, nothing came back. It was, uh, it, was, it was like no results found. Um, I did a criminal background check. Nothing came back. So I thought one of two things. Either I had the wrong social, meaning I wrote down the wrong social, or my paranoia was unfounded. There's nothing wrong with him because he has been always throughout the relationship a big stickler about law enforcement, um, following the law because his dad was a retired police officer. So this is someone who has been... This is a guy who would check to make sure my tail lights were working, make sure my signals were working, make sure my oil was good, make sure I had enough gas in the car. So when the criminal history came back with no results, I was like, well, of course there isn't because the man probably hasn't had so much as a speeding ticket. So thought we uh, filed the marriage license and then we made an appointment to get married and waiting for the judge to come out of chambers so that she could marry us. And the reason why I'm pausing is because, my God, if I could go back and see that young woman sitting in that lobby. Wow. 
wow, I know we can't go back in time. But damn, if I could go back in time, I would. I immediately, I didn't tell anyone I was getting married because I was afraid that we had tried before in September and something came up. So I didn't want to tell anyone. I didn't want to get anyone's hopes up. I didn't want to get my hopes up. Um, I know that's no, bad. No, this is not in the 90s. This is 2020. I said I would be honest, even if it's ugly. Um, I told my mom, my family that we got married, told my friends. They could not believe it. Like they, my mother was um, relieved, but she had no idea about what was going on. My aunt was more like, really? You married him? My friend, the one who took me to the hospital for the miscarriage, was like, I wish you would have told me, like, you deserve to have people there take pictures and celebrate and all this other stuff. Yeah, um, listen to auntie. And she was like, you know, she's the type of friend. If you like it, I love it. You rock with him, I rock with him. The moment you don't, I don't either. So she was she was supportive. My other girlfriends were happy for me. They just they just hated that I had to get married during COVID. Because um, they were like, I, we would have loved to have, you know, thrown you a bridal shower and a bachelorette party and all of that. It just sucks that you couldn't experience that. So we got married on a Tuesday. Um, on the way home, stopping, got some wings, went home, and I had to get ready to go to work the next day. And life. I got married January 5th. By January 31st. I knew I was in trouble. I still didn't know how deep, but I knew I was in trouble. That's so, when you that's when you found out you were in trouble? <laughs> to give you all a very, very, very candid idea, I got married January 5th. The things that the normal things that married newlyweds do when we got married completely stopped. And that was not by me. You always hear men talk about, man, now that we're married, she don't. Um, in my case, it was the exact opposite. It was the exact opposite. So anyway, because <laughs> this is not a, a forum to be all R-rated or whatnot, but y'all get what I'm saying. So um, we got married January 5th. January 6th, I went to work. It was <laughs> um, a lot of people congratulating me because it kind of got out that I got married. January 7th, um, I filed the paperwork to change my last name. And if you were following me, you can go back like 15, 16 videos. And I talk about how I had to change my name back <laughs> to my maiden name. But I changed my name within about three days of getting married. Um, my attitude was, this is the bed that I made. I'm going to do right by him. I'm going to do right by my marriage. Um, I what took marriage seriously. And when I married him, I absolutely married him thinking i'm going to be with you for bro this is a conservative wet dream by the way this is literally why they don't want like no fault marriage i mean uh, no fault divorces and stuff like that they want to lock women into this situation straight up i mean she voluntarily locked herself into that situation because she trapped her own mental state with conservatism but like this straight up is like a fantasy for conservatives they salivated the prospect of having a trad wife like this for the next 40, 50 years. So we're going to figure this shit out. That was my mindset. I did not get married to turn around and be divorced in six months, but I got married January 5th, 2021. And by January 31st, I knew I was in serious trouble. So that is where we are. The next set of videos, the next set of all this will be um, me talking about how things went downhill before it crashed and I found everything out. In the meantime, tomorrow is my birthday. So, that's the stuff that basically, um, I'm not recapping on this video. I'm just kind of answering some stuff that has been written to me. Okay, so, I'm going to skip, I'm going to skip some of this. This has been internalized um, since 2020. Also... I don't want to seem like a cautionary tale to other women or to men for that matter, but to my sisters, to my ladies, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, doesn't matter. If something does not sit right with you, investigate it. Um, I cannot stress that enough. January if just one four. woman watches these videos and she's like, you know what? Something don't sit right with me. Let me look into this. Um, then it was worth it. Yes, it is a Lifetime movie. Yes, it is Netflix. Yes, it is crazy. Yes, it is hilarious also. Okay. It was traumatic. This is the type of content you watch at 1.5 speed? Bitch, I'm watching it at 1.5 speed. But the, what the fuck I went through? I, 21, right after getting married. So when I think back on it, there's things that I'm very, very grateful for. And why did you not leave? I don't remember the woman I was before I met that man. Changes you, And I've seen some women in the comments who were like, I was married to a habitual liar. I was married to a pathological liar. My baby daddy's a, pa a pathological liar. And my heart goes out to them because 
until you have dealt with someone so depraved, you you really don't quite know how bad it can get. Um, so I'm and not have overlooked. I argued away things I should not have argued away. I still feel like God is sitting on the throne and he's like, I never planned for your monkey ass to marry him. I never even planned for you to go out and date with him. That's why I blew your tire. But you hard headed and you went anyway. And then True. I tried to go ahead and show you signs. You ignored them. Like, I feel like God did everything to True. help me as his child. Be like, this is not who I created to be your, your helpmate. And I. Yo, you literally got a miscarriage. Was like I, and these are the. God literally the entire way was like, come on. I gave you the fucking warning signs. What the fuck are you doing? Consequences that I'm paying for basically telling God. And then they, and then God literally tapped out. Okay. I'm not even kidding. God, after a certain point, was like, all right, fuck this. <laughs> You're on your own. You took two. Uh, this is too compelling. Let's see how far this goes. And um, I feel like God's grace is sufficient. It is. I do feel like when I sit back and I replay the events that happen, I truly cannot believe that was my story. Because all I wanted was to meet a guy for him to be my best friend, for us to get married, have a family. I wanted someone I could make fun of his big old forehead and he make fun of my nappy head and all my wigs. God and was like, he was my ride or popcorn die. time. Um, I wanted someone that I could be like, man, help me with these kids. And he helped me with the kids. We had a nice home. We were comfortable. That is what I wanted. And I've said this before and I say it again. I truly thought, I truly hoped it was my turn. You see the women who are, you know, so happy and, um, you know, they're in these loving marriages and life just looks good. I really, really wanted it to be my turn. And so I excused away a lot of stuff that I hope I told the you, next woman who sees this Like, it's not just not that he's 6'4". Like, we joke about that, but she's also very desperate. I don't wish this on anyone to feel the way I felt the moment I discovered the whole truth. Um... So I just wanted to say that because I think it's important to try to answer the, why is she posting this? Honestly, I was tired of holding it in. I was tired of holding it in. Hey, if you don't worry, I'm Mary. Good night, y'all. <sighs> Part 17, who the fuck did I marry? So for context and just to clarify some stuff going forward, I'm going to now call my ex-husband. I'm going to use the name that I call him in real life. Um, so that way it clears up the whole fiance, boyfriend, husband, ex-husband thing. So his name is Legion. Anyone that knows me will tell you that is what I call him. So Legion and I, when I left off at part uh, 16, um, or excuse me, part 15. Le okay, that's a cool as fuck name, dude. I'm not going to lie. Like a Lenovo laptop. Yes. That's a cool fucking name, dude. Legion and I got married January 5th of 2021. It's also a villain name. Like, nobody who's a good guy, no one in any story that's a good guy is like, yeah, they call me Legion. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he came in hot. He's like, what's up? They call me Legion. For the first two weeks, things were fine. Um, we got into, like, a, a routine, basically. I would go to work. He would go to work. Um, he was still leaving the house at around 6.15 every morning. He was still on the phone with his brother, the one that lived in Philly, um, every morning. They would just, that was their time to talk. From what I was told, the brother got off work, I guess, he must have worked the third shift. And so he was getting off work as Legion was getting ready to go to work. So that was the perfect time for them to talk. He would talk to um, his brother in Baltimore and the brother in Augusta. Pretty much, you know, just a quick phone call here and there, if not every day, every other day. So everything was pretty much the same. I would talk to my mom almost every day. I would talk to my aunt almost every day. Um, so it was it was nothing to kind of, hmm, that's weird. Um, that's what the morning routine was. He would talk. So I worked at Georgia State Patrol. Um, and I took No, no, no. He calls himself Legion. She's not calling him Legion because it's a biblical reference that means like a bunch of demons. Even though the irony is there. But said this in a previous video but again there were things i said in previous videos that i remember saying hey remember that because it's going to come back later so i worked at georgia state patrol i had been working there for almost eight years seven or eight years by the time legion got into the picture he was fine with the fact that i worked um within law enforcement i'm not a trooper i'm not a sworn officer i'm a civilian however he um 
again, his dad was a retired police officer. So he was perfectly fine in the beginning with the fact that I worked for Georgia State Patrol. Um, he had been to my office before. He had met some of my um, coworkers. Obviously, even with COVID, because I still had to go into the office two or three days a week, he had been up there. So the friend who took me to the hospital when I had my miscarriage has met him. He and I have been to her home with her and her significant other before. So again, even in the world of COVID, when there were little times where you could get together with people, he has met people in my life. He has met um, my friend or that particular friend, and he has met some of my coworkers. So when we got married, the first two weeks, like I said, was fine. And then it's as if something snapped, um, something just changed. What was totally acceptable before, suddenly little comments were made. Why are you wearing that to work? You get off at 3.30, so Ooh, you'll be home by 5, he's right? acting different. Things that had never happened before. He had never questioned what time I'm going to be home. Um, really, he didn't need to question it because when I'm off work, I, I leave. So. Oh, dude. Oh, no. I bet the dick game changed, too. It was never a situation of, oh, I'm just sitting around at work and just run my mouth because I have nothing to do. Um, and then it turned into, you know, he would call me every day from work. And I'm going to demonstrate how those phone calls went. But he would call me every day from work. And if he even so much as heard a male voice in the background, True, she did he say would that. have You're little right. comments to me. Who was that? Are they in your office? You know, man, you know, I never know who's, who's around you. Because it seemed like every time I call you, I have the hiccups, sorry. It seems like every time I call you, um, there's some man around. And I'm just like, you know, at first I kind of shrugged it off. I laughed it off because it really, truly was absurd to me. Um, but then it became a bit more frequent. And so I really just didn't feed into it because I'm like, I don't know if this is some insecurity. I don't know if this is jealousy because nothing has ever been done to make you feel any sort of insecure type of way. I've never entertained another guy. I've never flirted with another guy. Like, I don't know where this is coming from. So it is also important to note, we got married January 5th. Things started changing um, around two weeks later. And the reason why I know it's two weeks is because I had recorded an audio diary on January 21st is the date of the audio diary. And I talk about how maybe I had unreal unrealistic expectations because it seemed as if things were changing with he and I. So two weeks pass, he starts making little comments. End of January comes, he informs me that he wants to start looking for a house again. I had no real desire to go through that process. So what he decides is that he's going to look for a house for us using his friend, the uh, realtor, the one I did not meet. So he tells me that he and his friend have been talking and he's going to start looking at houses. And what he's going to do is basically, if he feels like it's a house I would like, then he wants to show it to me because he feels like, you know, I know that your attitude really isn't, you're in the mood to uh -oh. look for a house. So I'm going to start looking. And then if I think it's a great house, then, you know, you can come see it. Um, and I remember thinking... Uh oh. That's not like that's not gonna work. You're not gonna choose a house without me. And he was like, No, I'm not gonna choose the house, but I just think that, you know, me and old boy have been talking and so he has some houses that he is representing, he wants to show me. So why don't you let me look at it? And if it's worth the time, then I'll bring you to look at it. So he already had some sort of plan in place after talking to his friend um about how he's going to start looking at houses. This is Jan this is the end of January, two thousand twenty one. So I kind of threw my hands in the air and was just like, whatever, because I'm not getting emotionally involved in looking at houses. And for me, that's kind of what it was. I felt like I would see a house, I could picture us living there, and then it gets snatched away somehow, some way. I didn't want to go through that. So the reaction that he wanted, which was for me to throw a fit, I did not do. I was just like, okay, all right. Like, I trust you. Um, and remember that I said the reaction he wanted, because that's going to come back later. So he started looking at houses. <sighs> Funny enough, the houses that he looked at, none of them I actually saw. But he would call me and say, I'm at this house in Sandy Springs with the uh, realtor friend, he, apparently his realtor, his realtor friend's name was Scott, not to be confused with the other Scott, the one that was actually helping us that dropped us as clients. I want to make that clear. There were two Scots. One is the realtor who was representing us, who said, hey, I need proof of funds. If you don't have those proof of funds, I cannot show you any more houses. The other Scott is his friend who he had talked to on the phone at least 50 to 100 times in front of me. That's, that's the Scott that he said is going to show me this house in Sandy Springs. Um, apparently the house was like $800,000. So he was like, I think that um, if I, you know, if I like the house, then I'm going to bring you out here so you can see it. All right. Now let's go into part 18. Okay. Part 18. Who the fuck did I marry? So he starts looking at houses in Sandy Springs, Alpharetta area with his friend Scott. Um, I did not see any of these houses. I did not go. I didn't want to go. Um, so what was starting to change is, remember I said before, he would leave the house every day at around 6.15. He would be home 
every day between 3.30 and 4 o'clock without fail. It was so... I shouldn't say it was annoying, but it, I could set my clock by the fact that I would hear that garage door open between 3.30 and 4 o'clock every day that he went to work. Even during lockdown, he still had to go to work. His job was only locked down for maybe a week. Um, for me, I was allowed to work from home, but unfortunately, I I did not handle it well. And so I would fall asleep and not check the yeah, email. Yeah, because so my boss he worked like, yeah, at a fucking to the office distribution facility or some shit. There's no way. You're not trustworthy. And I wasn't. I mean, I totally, I would watch Netflix and not even be on my computer, so... I had to start going back to work every day, five days a week. Um, and I was, <laughs> me and another lady were the only two in there because we were the only two who did not handle work from home properly. Anyway, that's another story. So Legion would, he started to not come home by four o'clock. He started to come home five, five thirty, six, six thirty, sometimes seven o'clock because he was saying that he was um, looking at houses after work with his friend Scott. Cheating. He's so cheating. It definitely was noticed that things are changing. Um, and I just, at this point, kind of emotionally and mentally, I was just like, either cheating or another family. I don't know what to do. This is the end of January. Remember I told you in part 15, I got married January 5th by January 31st. I kind of knew I was in trouble. And by the end of January, sure enough, I knew things were changing in a way that I was like, I hate to sound redundant, but what the fuck is going on? So he's still maintaining the story of looking for a house, looking for a house. I like the way that she's describing this as though we haven't been saying that since episode three. Like, no, we, we don't think it's weird that you're, that you're just, we don't think it's weird that you're finally starting to come to terms with the fact that it's weird. The situation is weird. We're coming to terms with the fact that it's weird because it's all, it's taken this far. It went this far until you were like, damn, shit is kind of fucked up. I had already let him know my lease is up in August. When my lease is up in August, I am moving to Powell County. Um, <laughs> and my attitude was kind of like, you can go with me or you can stay here. I don't care, but I'm moving. I'm leaving Clayton County. The reason why I want, I was so adamant to move was not he because of Clayton, Clayton County. County. It was not because of the house that I was in. It was because Legion had started to create this narrative that he was beefing with my female neighbor. He was trying to get me to believe that my female neighbor to the left of me um, somehow was interested in him. And so she would make these little comments and he would Yo! come in the house complaining about her and her music and the fact that she had, you know, different men over to the house. It was driving me crazy. And all of this was kind of starting in January. So when I say that, it really seems like we got married January 5th and then we had two weeks of peace and then something just snapped. I literally mean something just snapped. So... He's looking Bro, at houses. Now crazy. we're moving into February. February, obviously, is my birthday month. Um, he did good. He did good to make Valentine. He went all out for Valentine's Day. He went to be fair, he is 6'4", so maybe the neighbor was like, damn, <laughs> he's got enough for both of us. You know what I'm saying? The neighbor was like, he, he could break me off a piece of that dick a little bit on the side. All out for my birthday. My birthday and Valentine's Day are February 14th and February 15th, so um, he went all out on both days. <sighs> Y'all ain't even gonna believe this story. But I said I would share, even when it makes me look bad. So, the weekend after my birthday, and what I mean by that is, if my birthday was on a Tuesday, we're talking about Saturday. Um, the weekend after my birthday, he gave me money to go to the nail salon, go get a manicure and pedicure. So I leave the house, I take his car, his car was in the driveway. We had a key to each other's car, because again, we're married at this point. We're talking February, 2021. So I take his car and I drive to the nail salon over in Morrow. I'm in the chair getting a pedicure and I get a text message from my husband saying someone was just at the house looking for you. And I'm like, who was looking for me? What do you, well, who was it? And he said, I don't know. I think it was some, this is through text. I don't know. I think it was some dude you used to mess with. Okay. Um, what? I was like, what are you talking about? He's, and he was like, I'm telling you, some guy just came to the house looking for you. I told him you were not here. So at this point, y'all, I'm in the chair at the salon. I'm freaking out because I'm like, who the fuck has the audacity to come to my home unannounced, uninvited, talking about they're looking for me, especially because before I met my husband, I was working, I was working the last shift at Amazon as a part-time job. So I had not dealt with, dated anything with anyone for about a year before I met him in March of 2020. So I really was like, who the hell is this coming to my house? So... I finished the pedicure. I head home. Once I get home, I'm like, what What are you talking about? What happened? And so I'm... I have to interrupt this broadcast for a moment. 
I'm a mobile chatter. I'm 6'4 with a normal sized cock, and I've seen women's disappointment when I take my pants off. And I've compared with my coworkers, we had average cocks. In parentheses, I was in the army. Why did you voluntarily reveal this information about yourself? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for bringing this up. <laughs> Frazzled in a way. And he's calm. He was like, yeah, it was a black Dodge Charger. They pulled into the driveway. They backed in. They backed in as if they had been here before. So clearly this was someone who, who, who's been to your house. He got out the car. He said, I opened the door and I went out there and I said, you know, is there something I can help you with? And he said, the guy said, I'm looking for and gave him my name. And he said, I'm sorry, she's not here. And he said, he was like, oh, okay. Um, all right then. And just got in the car and drove off. And I was like, my brain stopped working because I'm thinking, who the heck could this be? A Dodge Charger? I was like, are you sure that it wasn't law enforcement? Like, was it the sheriff's office trying to serve me with a lawsuit for a credit card I didn't pay? He was like, no, he was in regular clothes. He was like, and it was not a, um, a, a police car. It was on a marked unit, basically. And so I'm just like, who the heck could this be? And he was like, I know who it was. And I said, who? He was like, I think it was your ex. I said, what ex? He was like, the one that you had dated for two years. Remember back in like part three, part four, I told y'all, he told me about his ex. I told him about mine. I thought we were being honest with each other. So now, fast forward to February 2021, and he's telling me, yeah, I think it was the ex that you had been dealing with for those two years before you met me. I said, so you think that he showed up to the house uninvited after two years? And he was like, well, whoever it was clearly was comfortable pull, backing into our driveway, getting out the car and was like, I'm here to see and gave me, gave him my name. Um, I feel like he's looking for an out, right? And so he was like, she's not here. Is there something I can help you with? And the guy was like, nah, nah, it's cool. Um, and they just got in a car and drove off. So uh, again, brain is like, who, who could this be? So then Legion says to me, you know what? The way that you react into this is real suspect. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He was like, you over here freaking out. I told you I took care of it. I told you it was fine. And you over here freaking out, which makes me wonder, what, are you, what have you been up to? Now, let's go to part 19. Okay, part 18. Who the <laughs> fuck did I marry? So he says 19. to me, the way you're acting is real suspect. Because I told you it was fine. I took care of it. He was like, I ain't even worried about it. He was like, obviously, that nigga didn't know that you now married, that you've moved on. And so now he knows it. But for me, it was the fact that I don't do, I don't do pop-ups. Don't come to my house unannounced. So if someone has done that, for me, it, it automatically feels like a violation and it feels like it needs to be addressed. So it was not as simple as, I already took care of it, it's fine, let it go. No, nah, we ain't letting nothing go because you don't have my permission to show up to my house. And before this turns into something where I'm gonna be on Fox 5 News, I need to address that with you because that is not okay. So he didn't like the reaction I had to the story he told me where someone basically disrespected my home. And he felt like my reaction was really suspect. So, um, what I'm going to get into the little details that he did not know about. So he tells me again, it was a black charger, a black Dodge charger. They backed into the driveway. A gentleman got out of the car and he asked for me by name and Legion said, she's not here. So, um, I asked him, what does the guy look like? And he said, he was like, why does it matter? I said, what the fuck does he look like? So Legion proceeds to give me the most generic description you can give. He was like, well, um, he was shorter than me. Ex-husband is about six, three, six, four. He was shorter than me. Um, he was brown skin. I said, did he, have, did he have a hat on his head? Mind you. Shorter than me. 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, this guy, he's lying about his fucking height too. I understand that before marriage, I was a damn fool. I understand that. But every woman has that moment where you only gonna fool her but for so long. And eventually stuff, puzzles start coming together. For me, I felt like moving into marriage, certain things started coming together. So I said to him, um, did he have a hat on his head? He was like, no, nah, he didn't wear a hat. So in my mind, I am mentally going down a list of every possible man it could be. Um, and it was only like four men. I had been in that house about three or four years at this point. So I knew all of the people, and I'm talking about from maintenance down to ex-boyfriends. It was a total of like four men. So when he said that um, it was a black charger, 
I immediately was like, okay, I know that crosses out one. He said he was shorter than him. All of them were shorter than him. I said, did he have a hat on his head? He said, no, that crossed out one because one in particular was a maintenance guy who always wore a hat on his head because he had like a bruise or something and he, he was just self-conscious about it. So he always wore a hat. That leaves two. So I said, was he muscular or was he skinny? So Legion's getting all frustrated. I said, just answer the question. He was like, well, he was kind of in between. And I said, okay, um, he, he was in between. I said, so was he light skin or was he dark skin? He was like, I told you he was brown skin. I said, was he my complexion? He said, no, he was, he was brown skin. That eliminates one. So now there's one left. And yes, the one left would have been the ex that I had dated for two years. And so he was like, I know that I know it was your ex. I know it was your ex. And I was like, that don't make no sense because the ex that I, in my mind, I'm saying this, the ex that I had dated, he and I had no contact with each other. And he was not the type to just pop up at your house. That ain't his style. Not to mention, and I ain't tell Legion this, that man would not be caught dead driving a Dodge Charger. He hated Chargers because he drove it as a patrol car. So I didn't say anything. I just was like, that's, that's weird. So what Legion didn't know is that at the time I had a security system. So I had a security system where um, anytime the front door, the garage door or the back door was open, basically any entry point, anytime it was open or closed, it would send me a text message notification. So when he's telling me all this, I'm looking at my phone and I see a notification where the front door was opened and it was shut all within the same minute. So for he's example, cheating. if it says front door open at 1 p.m. He's cheating, he's cheating, he's cheating, he's cheating, he's cheating. Front door closed at 1 p.m. So whatever he did was within those 60 seconds. He's telling me the story of the guy got out the car. Um, he opened the door, he went out there, can I help you? And the guy said, um, I'm looking for, and Legion said, no, she's not here. And so the, he said the guy kind of was like, okay. And Wait, he was what? like, all right, thank you. And got in the car and drove off. Legion has also told me that he watched him drive off, drive out of the neighborhood, which means because of the way the house was set up, the townhouse, he would have still been outside watching this. I could be wrong, but something in me was like, that would take more than 60 seconds. So for the door to have been open and shut within the same 60 seconds, I was like, mm, mm. okay. So also what he didn't know, we didn't have a ring door camera, but my neighbor did. And her ring door camera caught my driveway. It, it, the view of the camera could see my driveway Yo, as well as her driveway. She went to um, the and so neighbor? whoever was coming in the door, our driveways were right next to each other. And then on the either on the other side of it was the grass. So it was it was a perfect view of my driveway. So so she um Bro, at this point, I mean, okay. She knows. She, she's not a cop, chat. Shut up. She literally is a civilian that works for the fucking Georgia State Police, okay? You can talk about like her, you know, morality in the situation if she is a participant of the police state or some shit, but like that's not that's besides the point. Just fucking drop the leftism for one second, okay? And consume a compelling fucking story for once in your goddamn lives. Um, I text her and I said, hey, were you home? Um, I think I text her the next day because I said, were you home on Saturday? Da, da, da, da. And she said, um, no, I wasn't. What's up? You know, everything good. And I said, um, can you look at your security system and see if there was a car that came to my house um, at such and such time? And I know I, I did not tell her the reason I was asking, but I was like, is there any way that your security camera caught if someone came to my house um, at this time on Saturday? She's like, yeah, sure. I'll look. And so... <laughs> Maybe about a couple of hours later, she texted me back and said, hey, I looked at the camera, but I didn't see anything. And I said, okay, by any chance did it catch if someone maybe walked up the driveway? Like maybe it wasn't a car in the driveway, but someone walked up. She said, I didn't see anything with your driveway yesterday. So I said, okay. Um, and, I, and I knew, I knew that something in me again um, was like, nobody came to the house. So now here we are, um, a month and a half married. And now is when I'm like, why the fuck did he make that up? because no one came to the house. No black charger came to the house, pulled back into the driveway. Nobody got out the car and asked for me. Nobody was looking for me. So now I'm, I was sitting in the bedroom thinking through all this and I'm like, why the fuck did he make that up? Because that's what happened. I'm looking at the text messages on my phone where he's telling me someone just came to the house looking for you, but no one came. So what was the purpose of that? And then, I, and then something said to me, something in me said, he wanted to see a reaction. He, he just wanted to see the reaction. You have I don't think it was that. I think he's setting up. He's setting up for something. I think like, I think he's cheating. I'm already convinced. I'm already convinced that I believe he's cheating. That's why the dick game went sour. Okay. 
And he's like designing this so that he could be like, you're at fault. You're had cheating been too. too. Calm. And so he wanted to see a reaction. So this man gas lit me like I was Georgia natural gas just to get a reaction. Uh, Welcome, natural. ladies and gentlemen, to part 20 of who the fuck did I marry? Damn, she's trying to get All right, part 20 of who the fuck did I marry? So after the black Dodge Charger incident, um, things were, were quiet. Legion was fine. Legion slept just fine. Me, that shit played over in my head for days and days and days. Um, on one hand, I was like, I know nobody came. My head knew nobody came to the house. My heart was like, but maybe he didn't make it up. Stop! So the head and the heart. No, stop listening to your heart, lady. Stop, not the heart. Bro, I swear to God. God needed to smite this man Legion for for her to get free. We're absolutely playing the tug of war because again, I really couldn't fathom that he was making it up. But nevertheless, I filed it in the back of my mind in my little filing cabinet. Bro, how can you? No, you didn't file shit. You saw direct evidence of him lying yet again. Bro, this is, we're a couple months into this story at this point and she's still acting a fucking fool like she did originally when she first found out that the whole the whole situation with the first house that she was supposed to buy was a fucking lie post marriage she's supposed to not be as desperate at this point it's been a year not even a couple months sorry let me tell you something it's been one year one year ago she very quickly found out in a couple months that he was like oh i'm gonna buy a house and then literally fucking found evidence that he was lying Found evidence that he was lying. You know that early dick game must have been so wild? Oh, 100%. 100%. There's no other rhyme or reason to this behavior. There is just, it makes no goddamn sense. My, my mental filing cabinet. So a few weeks later, we go out to eat at this restaurant in Atlanta. Um, it's a burger place and I'm going to do my, my best by the time I post this to put the name of the burger place um, on the screen. So we go to the burger place, eat dinner, Everything was fine. As we are leaving, he says to me, did I ever did, did I ever show you where my grandmother's buried? This is the grandmother that passed away from COVID in 2020. Oh my and God. I said, no, I was like, we haven't been over here. And so he was like, let me, let me show you. So he drives us to the cemetery, which is- Half of this shit, it makes no sense too. Cause it's like, there's no rhyme or reason for him to like fake having a grandma that died to COVID. It's not far from the restaurant. He drives us to the cemetery, goes around and around. And then it comes to um, like a little hill in the cemetery. And he was like, you see the headstone. The headstone had um, like a fam the family name on it. And it did not have, for example, John David Doe. It just had Doe. Okay. So there were no dates on it. So it, it reminded me of just a headstone where it was probably multiple family members buried underneath it. That's what it reminded me of. And so he was like, my grandfather and my grandmother are buried there. I do recall him telling me when the grandmother died in 2020 that she wanted to be buried next to his grandfather. And so he told, he, he, we're sitting in the car because we can see the headstone like on top of the hill from the car. And he tells me that that is where his grandmother and grandfather are buried, that he was able, the family was able to get her, um, you know, her wishes were to be buried next to the grandfather. Okay. So as we are leaving, we take a different route home. So we get on the highway. If you're from Atlanta, you'll know what I'm talking about. We get on I-75 North. Um, and we're kind of just, we're just driving around, to be honest with you. But we're taking the scenic route. We get on I-75 North because the reason why I remember is because when you're on I-75. Bro, that is straight demonic to find someone who has your last name and to go to their random fan to the random family's fucking grave to be like that's my grandma and grandpa right there and it's just a whole ass different family and it's like it it's also not worth he's crazy this is his this is crazy. Five North going towards Atlantic Station. On the right hand side, you will see the varsity. You'll see all these tall skyscraper buildings. One of the buildings has the letters NCR on the building. We, as we're coming up towards the building, he says to me, do you see the NCR building? I said, yeah. He said the building behind it, my job bought that building. That's where we're going to have, um, we're setting up operations. And I was like, why the hell would y'all buy a condiment company in downtown Atlanta? He was like, no, we're not doing production there. It's just going to be offices. And that's where we're going to handle like the business portion, the production. He's like, bro, you don't understand. This condiment business is booming right now, okay? He's like, dude, these are such funny lies, okay? It's like, 
The condiment business that I'm the vice president, the regional manager at, is booming. Okay. Is still being done in Gwinnett County out in Duluth. And so People I was like, People love the mail. Oh, okay. He was like, That's where I keep um, the company car. So I was like, The company car. I said, aren't you supposed to be bringing a company car home? And he was like, I don't want to bring the company car home because it's Clayton County and it's a $90,000 car. And I don't, I don't want, no, nah, I don't want no problems. So he's telling me that he keeps the company car at the build, the building downtown Atlanta that's behind the NCR building. I barely could see what building he's talking about, but he was like, it's the building right behind it. And so he's telling me that that's where his office is. So I said to him, take me to your office. I know it's a Saturday, but shit, you wanted to be peas, right? So take me to your office. No, I had not been to his office simply because again, COVID. So I was like, take me to your office. And he was like, he was like, I can. He was like, that's no problem. So what? You know, I have the other phone. I do. So y'all are in luck. So Bro, I really, really, really appreciate his dedication to the bit. Like when, like that time when he took, like that time when he fake took her on a journey to go towards his fake sister. Oh my God. I'm so, this is the most invested I've ever been in a fucking react video, by the way. I just want to say, um, like he he was like oh yeah of course we'll go to my sister's barbecue like we'll go we'll go link up with her and it's like it makes no sense but he in he invests in the bits that he invents okay like he's like oh this is a building that my business bought like the condiment business is booming everybody loves mayonnaise and then he's just like yeah i'll take you there what the fuck are you doing you don't even need to make these lies. I don't think. I can think. maybe reenact how this goes. So he gets off the exit and starts driving towards the NCR building. While he's driving towards the NCR building, he always has kept his phone in his left pocket. This is my left hand. So he pulls his phone out and he starts calling. He tells me he's calling Willie. Willie is supposed to be the head of security. So he's saying, oh, let me call Willie real quick to make sure that the building's open. So he proceeds this is another phone but he proceeds to go ahead and call will he's still we're still driving by the way we're still driving i'm on the phone you know scrolling through facebook trying to figure out um some random shit but he's he's driving with the phone up to it so driving with the phone next thing i hear hey willie it's legion hey how's it going i'm good hey is the building open now i just want to take my wife up there so she can see it and see my office are you up there right now you're not okay is mr justin working okay so is Why there anybody up there that can TikTok. physically open the building? Because I don't think my badge is going to get me at least in the front door because of it's, it's on the weekend lock. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me know. All right. Thank you, Willie. Bye. Y'all see how I did that? He's having this whole conversation while I'm sitting in a passenger seat. So then he gets off the phone and he says to me, Willie is not working and Justin apparently called out sick. So the building is locked and my badge won't get us in the front door. He was like, Willie's going to see if there's someone else that can open the that can open the front door so we can actually get in. He's like, my badge will get us on the floor, but it will not get us in the front door. <clears throat> no one ever called. So when he's getting off the... Bro, imagine if she was like, let me talk to him. He said the weekend lock. Imagine, imagine the vice president... The regional manager can't get into the building? Come on. Come on, dog. Also, where's the card? Why is there no key card? Like, has, has she seen a key card? There ain't no fucking way. But imagine if she was like, yeah, let me talk to Willie. The highway, um, he basically turns onto Spring Street. Again, there's, this, there's all kinds of shit I distinctly remember. He turns onto Spring Street so that he can then get on 75 South so we can go home never saw the office that day um but again this is where he's saying that he um keeps the company car so when we get to part 21 i'll kind of go into detail about the whole company car a little bit more part 21 who the fuck did i marry so the company car apparently was a charcoal gray bmw i believe it was a five series it was a five series i don't know much about the sedans y'all know i wanted the x5 dark blue with the cognac interior he got the BMW 5 Series, charcoal gray. Wait, he sent me a he picture did? of the car. So I did see a picture of the car. Um, after this Wait. whole NCR building, take me to your office, that is what he's claiming is that he left, he leaves the company car at that location. He's saying that he drives from Riverdale to Midtown, switches out cars, and then drives from um, Midtown to Duluth. Those that don't know how Metro Atlanta is, basically Midtown would be in between where we live and Duluth. Um, Gosh, I only know that he left. A, she's such a great storyteller. Like she's filling the gaps. 
My lord, she's so... Wait, why is she fucking... Why is he switching the company car? House every day what? since 15. I know that um, I never physically saw the company car come to our home. What? Saw a picture. Pictures, plural. He works for a um, Murat's, so, Murat's like low key at first. He was like, oh, I don't really like this. That you're watching the same video for this long. And now he's like low key tapped in and invested in the corner. He's sitting there and going like, what kind of company does she work for? Hmm. <laughs> like, dude, I'm telling you, the, the, I started off being like, this is a five hour fucking TikTok sequence. This makes no goddamn sense. Yes, bro. It's so compelling. Every part of this is so compelling. Whoa. Goddamn, Kaya. When he told me that he got a BMW 5 Series, keep in mind, this is after <laughs> um, I had been promised a dark blue X5. So I was a bit salty. I don't care if it is a company car. I was a bit salty. I will admit that. Um, because I felt like you you get to drive the car that you know I really want, which is a BMW. Um, and so he would always, he would call me from the car. He would tell me, you know, yeah, I'm, um, I, may, I, may just, uh, I may just drive home in this car and not switch car, you know, switch back to his personal car. He's like, I don't know. He, he did that a lot. And I Yo, what? He's like, he's like teasing her with like extra fake shit. I realize now in 2024, he did that because he knew how excited I was to actually see the car. Because shit, I wanted to test drive it myself, to be honest with you. And he knew that. So reactions um so he would he would say stuff like that like man i'm so tired i might just drive the, the company car go ahead and go home and then you know just let me park it in a garage type thing so eventually he stopped doing that because i didn't want to hear nothing about that car i'm driving a nissan you driving a bmw after you promised me a bmw so i don't really want to hear nothing about it so in terms of the company car i did see that it was it was a according to the pictures a charcoal gray uh, bmw 5 series if you're asking me the exact model i don't know but I know it's a five series because I know the seven series is slightly longer. She's so, so valid. It's a five series to damn. She's valid for that. He lied to her about getting her a beamer, and then he's like flexing on her about having the beamer, but she doesn't even have the beamer. Um. So after the whole situation with the cemetery to see his grandmother and grandfather's um headstone, then there was the NCR. The office is open. Oh, it's not open. Justin ain't working. Willie ain't working. Willie's supposed to be head of security, but he ain't working. Okay. So. At this point, I'm already numb. It is important for me to point out. I want to know who he was calling. Because, like, obviously, if it's a fake phone call, you're going to hear the burda, burda, burda, burda, burda, like, on the other side, even when you're sitting next to them. Like, did she never pick up on the fact that he was just not calling a single real person? Because he was like, Cause you're sitting next to this person in the car. He, you're going to see him type in numbers or, like, pull up a contact to call, right? It, it makes no sense. How numb I became dealing with him. Mind numbing, because I just got to a point where it was like, there's always something, there's always something. So of course we're not gonna go to the office because there's gonna be something. Um, so this is the end of February. My birthday had already passed. There clearly was tension on my end, not so much tension on his end. So I get home a couple of weeks later. We are now in the beginning of March. This is something personal about me. The only way you would know this is if you know me. I have been dying, dying to go to London and Paris. Um, I had a layover in London when I did a study abroad, but it's not the same. I want to go to London and be a whole tourist. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I want to see Buckingham Palace. I want to see um, the tower. Damn, this is sad. Let me tell you, okay, there's plenty better places to go to than motherfucking London. I or feel London, bad. I want to see Paris. I want to see the Palace of Versailles. This is something, if you know me, you know she wants to see Paris. She wants to see London. So I get home from work. This is the beginning of March. I get home from work, and on the counter is a folder with, like, a little bow on it. And I'm like, oh, what is this? Is this, like, mail? Like, was this something that you got at work? He's like, no, nah, it's a surprise for you. I open up the folder. Inside the folder is like a trip itinerary. It is not an actual booked trip. It's it's like an itinerary. Um, a trip That's for fucked two up. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. He's doing a fake, go from fake Atlanta one. to London. Um, the trip was, should have happened and it was it was um the uh fuck the month on there was like July. So it was a summer trip. So he tells me I'm going to take you to London. He was That's like evil. I try, I wanted to take you for your birthday. That's evil. But Certain things fell through. He was like, so this summer in July, we're going to go to London. He was like, I've already made a reservation for us to stay at the Savoy. Again, there are certain things that my brain just was like, remember that, remember that. He said, I've already made a reservation for us to stay at the Savoy. 
I didn't know as much as I want to go. By the way, London in the summer. Holy moly. She's about to get humid as a motherfucker. And, oh, ew, ew. London, y'all. I didn't know anything about the Savoy. And so I remember going to look it up because I was like, what is the Savoy? Well, apparently the Savoy is bougie. Very bougie. So I was so excited. I cannot tell y'all how fucking excited I was when I saw that he had um, printed out British Airways. Like he was speaking my language. I am one of those people. I'm a planner. So when he's saying I'm going to take you. Yeah. And you know them oi bros don't have fucking AC, man. No air con, mate. Fucking hell. Even at the Savoy, eh? We've got no fucking air con to london and he took the time to research flights and print it out and research the savoy and print it out and there were there were different it's not excursions but there were different things that you could do you could go see the tower of london you could go see buckingham palace changing of the guard we could go have high tea at certain places he was like i don't really want to go but i know you're dying to go so he was like you know i love you and i would do anything for you blah blah black sheep have you any wool and so he was like i'm going to take you to london in july the trip did not include paris that's fine but i was so excited so excited and so this is the beginning of March. I was like, this, this is great. Hopefully this happens. I knew I needed to renew my passport. And he was saying that he had to renew his passport as well because his passport had expired. So both of us were like, okay, we need to get on this if we're going to try to make it to London in July and it's now March. Me being the planner I am, I think I went to work the next day and printed out the passport applications so that we could fill it out and go ahead and get that process um, going. So um, needless to say, Something must have happened, and I don't remember what it was. We just simply didn't fill out the application for the passport. So, fast forward, we're now at mid-March. Mid-March, the decision was made that my mom, who lived in Arkansas, was coming to visit us. She would be coming, I believe, the second week of April, and she was going to stay a week um, and then a few days. So, like, maybe a total of nine days. Not quite two weeks, but a little over a week. So, she was coming in April, and I was excited. Legion was excited. By the way, you can't just renew your passport like that unless, like... You literally get the expedited shit. Either you can renew it immediately before travel or months in advance. Like there's no other, there's no in between. Because he was excited to physically meet my mom. He had talked to her on Zoom. He had talked to her on the phone, but he was excited to physically meet my mom. And my mom was, was excited to physically meet her son-in-law. So this is mid-March. Um, I'm going to go into part 22 where I explain what happened with Facebook Messenger. Part 22, who the fuck did I marry? So now we are in March. This is right after he had surprised me with yes, the announcement of we're going to go to London already. for- This is like post-marriage. I mean, he's been pulling schemes since day one, though. Murat said, fuck this guy. For um, a trip in July, because we definitely didn't do a honeymoon. We definitely didn't do any sort of trips together. So- Will you go to France with Etoile? Yes, I will. The idea was we're going to do a trip in July together. Um, one thing about Legion was that <laughs> he was the guy who was like, I have nothing to hide. I don't lie. I don't like liars. Um, if we're uh -oh. in a relationship, then yeah. everything should be out in the open. So I've always had his cell phone passcode. Never felt the need to look through his cell phone. Um, and funny enough, I can tell y'all right now, disclaimer, I will never you, go through his cell phone again. Mm -mm, you, you never felt the need to look through his cell phone? That's crazy. I think that that's a healthy relationship and it's like basically literally the foundation of a healthy relationship. If your partner feels the need to look through your cell phone, something is genuinely fucked up, except something is genuinely fucked up. This is the one instance, like when the fucking house fell through, you look at the cell phone. Okay. You're like, what the fuck's going on here? Cause that's crazy to me. That's crazy that you did not look at his cell phone until like, a year into this relationship when he's been lying to you and you know he's been lying to you you've been caught him in a lie you've literally lied back to him to keep pumping the fucking narrative that's crazy Cheating piece. so anyway um so one day this is mid-march go like around march 20th um so we're heading in towards the end of the month he was in the shower keep in mind my mom is coming for a visit in april so he was in the shower and he received a text message on his phone from a woman um the text message, because it was a preview, so the text message was something where if you didn't know the context of the text thread, you could either go left or you could go right with it. So me being just curious, I opened up the phone, put the passcode in, read the text, then read the thread. Come to find out, it was a text from his aunt. His aunt and his ex share the same name. That's why I say it could go left or it could go right. Text was from the aunt. So um, I went, I looked at the text, went, went through the thread, nothing in there. So I went ahead, X, uh, X out of the um, messages. 
I see that he has Facebook Messenger downloaded. And obviously it shows you the, the number of um, unread messages in the icon. So it showed that he had like five unread messages. So I clicked on it just being nosy. And what do my wondering astigmatism I see? So in his Facebook Messenger he's cheating. He's cheating. is about seven he's women. I can see um, their profile picture and I see their names. Some of them had a preview. The ones that um, he had not read, I could see the preview of the message. One in particular said, when are you going to come get this? Y'all know what I'm talking about. So I clicked on that one first. Um, and I'm reading through the thread. And so she's saying, when are you going to come get this? But earlier in the thread or further this back what? in the thread, he had asked her, this what? when are you going to This what? This what? This pizza? This hamburger? What is... Hmm... Hmm. Well, give this me. mortgage? Yeah. So when are you going to come get this mortgage for the house that you're buying? And she said when lockdown is over. So from what I could piece together, he had not yet physically gotten with her. Um, but had there been no COVID, oh, he would have smashed all day, every day. Um, the other messages were in you windows, meaning the other messages from the other women were in you windows. They were not as graphic as the one between him and her. So I'm reading these messages. And what is interesting is that the person I am married to is not the person in these messages. Like this man was on some nasty shit. And I say nasty, not in a judgmental way, but in a, with me, he seemed to act as if I was damn near virginal white. And I clearly see evidence that you into some shit that with me, you acting like, nah, I ain't really into that. So um, I confronted him. I absolutely confronted him and was like, what the fuck is this? If two plus two was Oh, hell no. Oh, this is when it's starting to get fucking fun. She saw those messages. She saw those messages. He was like, yeah, baby, at the top of the hour, there is a three-minute ad break, and I'll serve it to you unless you subscribe. That's right. We got to wear protection. My wife will find out if I don't. And that protection, a $5 a month subscription or a free one in the form of a Twitch Prime. That's right. Let's get down and fucking dirty. Let me serve this ad break to you. Oh, yeah, but you like that ad break, huh? Here's the three-minute ad break now. Come get this. Come get this ad break. It was four and five plus five is ten. Thank you, Winter Rose. Um, and so he did not, you know, oh, that ain't that ain't what happened, blah, blah, blah. Instead, what he hit me with is, man, I was just playing around. Like, ain't nothing happened. Um, that that was the ick for you? I gave you the ick? That's crazy. I feel like I gave the ick to you and, and maybe not. 18,000 people probably had a different opinion. Um... Clayton County Web, thank you. <laughs> Clayton County Web. <laughs> Come on, chat. What the fuck? Hey, it's Kev. Thank you for the 12 gifted. Or, I mean, uh, thank you for the 5 gifted. Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. Okay, let's continue. You know, I shouldn't have said all that, but I was just flirting. It, it ain't mean nothing. I don't even know that girl. I was just flirting. And so I'm like, is this what you into? And so he was like, no, it's not what I'm into. It was just stupid. It was stupid because I shouldn't have done it. So I'm going to be honest with y'all because I've been honest all this time. What pissed me off the most was that here I am as a woman behaving, trying to do the right thing by him and this marriage. And you mean to tell me you out here offering your dingling to random chicks that you don't even know? I was more angry at the fact that I'm like, dude, do you know how much I have turned down in order to be faithful to your dumb ass? Okay, I'm sorry, but like, that's an L for you. You know what I mean? Like you had other dick out in the fucking meat market, okay? And you didn't jump on the next poll. That's crazy. So you had exit ramps too. So you had options. You had exit ramps. You fumbled so many different ones at this point. And I'm seeing that you basically are out here acting like you got Skittles taste the rainbow. I was hurt. I was angry. I thought about getting my lick back. I, I just being honest, I did. Um, and he he played it off like it ain't nothing serious. It ain't nothing serious. <laughs> Don't overreact. Get Don't back. get emotional. It was just dumb. He was like, I will delete the messages. I'll even delete Messenger. And I and I told him I was like, that's really not good enough because that that's not going to fix the root of the issue. So this is where I introduced that we need to do marriage counseling. He didn't have any issue doing marriage counseling. 
we did not do premarital counseling. Um, but he was like, that's fine. He was like, I don't have no problem doing marriage counseling because if anything, it can help us. So I thought that, okay, he may not have physically cheated from what I could see on the messenger. He may not have physically cheated, but he damn sure got caught, you know, d doing a little something, something. Cause they had exchanged pictures. So y'all know what pictures he sent. And I was disappointed because I don't Dealing. like menacing. <laughs> I don't like menacing. No type of yeah, I'm glad that this is the moment where she's like, maybe we need marriage counseling. You need God, except God came to you many times throughout the story. You found God and you were like, nah, fuck this. It's probably not divine intervention. Okay. You don't need a marriage counselor. You need a divorce. You need a lawyer, lady. You need a lawyer. Get the fuck out of here. Pictures, but anyway, that's another issue. So we agreed that we would start marriage counseling. We also agreed that we would put on a united front when my mom got there. In other words, we were not going to argue. We, you know, just let's just act like everything is fine. But at that point, when my mother arrived in April, I could not stand him. I did not want to be. Even, but we she couldn't even um, she needs He moved a, back exorcist. into our bedroom. She's he, had, a he had moved into the guest bedroom when I saw the messages. Like three days before she came, he moved back into the bedroom because obviously she needed to sleep somewhere. So um, I really could not stand him. And it was because I was busy second guessing myself. Like, damn, what's wrong with me? Like, if that's what you're into and I'm supposed to be your wife, like, let's have conversations. Like, shit, I went to FAMU. I understand some stuff, buddy. So it, it just was one of those things where it made me second guess, like, what's wrong with me? What did I do wrong? What is it that she got that I don't? Um, because you all out here willy nilly, you know, messaging her all hours of the night because the thread went back quite a few weeks. I you notice how, like, even then, even then, she's like, she's like more upset that he didn't tell her that he had kinks. Like, he's still deep down inside at this point is still thinking like, oh, I could do the fun, kinky stuff. It's crazy. It's actually crazy that she was, like, not considering the worst aspects of I this. I saw it in March. There were messages from December, November. So, again, I'm just second-guessing all kinds of stuff. Self-esteem taking a hit. So, no, I did not want to be around him. I did not want... Um, I, I, I didn't like him. Period. I did not like him. I left, and I would just go for a drive because driving clears my mind. I called my aunt, told her what happened. We I know. don't recommend that. I don't recommend calling family to tell them what's going on in your marriage. But I called my aunt, and my aunt lovingly was like, what do you want me to say? You married him. You know, he ain't your boyfriend. Y'all can't just break up. That's the hard part about marriage. It's like, I mean, yeah, I guess you could. Yes, you could. That's number one. And number two, auntie gave the worst advice this time around. First time around, she was right. Second time around... I can't believe she's still telling people don't talk to your family about this kind of stuff. You absolutely should tell your family about this kind of stuff before it gets to this point because it wouldn't have gotten to this point at this point. If you talk to your family, like. But at the same time, you married him. So, honey, you're going to have to go back home. And y'all are going to have to figure this out. She was like, I can't give you advice. She is the most Japanese Georgian wife I've ever seen in my life, dude. This is, I feel like this is very, this is very Japanese. Listen, if you understand, you understand what I'm talking about. On what you should do. I'm sorry that this happened, but, but you married him. So even though it was just one drive, I went back home. And that's when the discussion was, um, we need to do marriage counseling. Part 23, who the fuck did I marry? So we agreed to do marriage counseling. Um, I had found a pastor and his wife who agreed to do our counseling, basically. Our counseling was going to be on Zoom, and it was going to be every other week, um, every other Tuesday. Betterhelp.com. Um, participating in it. Um, his body language seemed to be that he was open and receptive. Wait, to did she say Pastor. The marriage counseling is being conducted with a fucking pastor and not a licensed therapist? Oh. Oh, my God. Dude, what the fuck? Oh, my God. What is happening in the South, brother? What the fuck's going on, dude? Oh, my God. Seriously, stop. Don't. That's no. Very common in Southern black churches. No. Better Hope is a company founded and for a long time ran by an Israeli IDF vet. That shit ain't good. Yeah, I was joking about Better Hope, but I feel like Better Hope would be better than a fucking pastor. Jesus Christ. To the marriage counseling. Now, the pastor and his wife were deeply concerned at the fact that we had only been married three months. 
and we were already dealing with some form of infidelity. We were in marriage counseling and as the pastor would put it, there seems to not be any sort of intimacy. Um, they were concerned. Damn. Like, so I think any person would. They're telling the pastors that they're not fucking no more. Pastor's like, hey, man, he is six foot four, though. If they knew what was going on within those three months. So um, the pastor and his wife, it is it is fair to note, we started counseling with them um, in the spring. We continued counseling with them up until a week before I found out what I found out and he got kicked out. So one of the first things that um, the pastor kind of talked to us about was, um, you know, are you, what, what was the deal with the Facebook Messenger stuff? Um, and Legion was like, it was stupid. I shouldn't have done it. Um, it was just, it really was just attention and it just, I got carried away. He, he f but you can't tell the pastor that like he's in a freaky shit and I want him to like fuck me raw. You know what I mean? I feel like you can't say that. Like the stuff that you could tell a therapist, I don't think you could tell a pastor, right? <laughs> it's just like, I don't understand. Felt like he was not going to, he kept saying, I'm not going to keep apologizing. I'm not going to keep getting persecuted. Um, after I told you, I'm sorry, I told you I wouldn't do it again. And I want us to move forward. You're either going to forgive me or you're not. Pastor and his wife were like, wow, um, the audacity is real on this one. So needless to say, we started moving slowly forward. Um, it was always in the back of my mind, just like it was in the back of my mind with that black Dodge Charger. It was one of those things where, okay, I see how you kind of are moving and operating. He came to me a few days after we started our first counseling session. By the way, when I said you need to find a pastor, I meant to exercise the demon out of Legion, not to like do marriage counseling. Okay. He was like, we should um, get a joint bank account. What he wanted to do was to each one of us have our own account and to get a joint account for our money to go in there um, for joint expenses. Now, up until this point, he had been paying the rent, the utilities, and I really was just paying for my stuff. So now he's suggesting, look, we're married now. Let's go. No, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Oh no. Savings. So what I countered with was, okay, let's take a look and see what we're working with. Show me your checking. Let's let's look at each other's accounts. Look at what we have currently. Uh oh. He was cool with that. So he shows me his checking account. His checking account available balance was about. It was just over ninety six hundred. Mine's was just over 1500 so there was a huge disparity in the amounts. Um, and so he logged in on the phone and turned Wait, it what towards did he, me. How much did he have? Checking, you know, available. He only had 10 grand? So he's not like as fucking rich um, as he claims he is and so either. He logged in on the phone and turned it towards me and I could see available checking, you know, available balance. Like 10 grand is, li okay, listen, 10 grand is a lot of money to have in your fucking checking account. But it's still like... But it's not like fucking I'm buying a $700,000 house with cash money, Chad. You understand? Dude, many people are below 3K. I know. Before every fucking poverty fetishist socialist comes in to shove the words down my goddamn gullet because poverty, to be close to poverty is to be uh, the most moral and the most socialist. I know. I'm saying if you weren't here from the fucking beginning... If you're just hopping on board, okay, and you're not following the anime for the 700 episodes, there was a point early on when he literally said he could buy a fucking whole house cash. The house was $700,000, okay? Anyway. And a dude who even claims to have seven hundred thousand dollars that he can drop on a fucking house is gonna have a little bit more than 10 grand i think in his bank account it's just over 9600 i logged into my savings i showed him how much i had in savings he logged into picked up his phone da, da, da, da, da, logged into his chase savings turned the phone towards me in the chase savings it was roughly about fifteen thousand. but i also knew that he told me he had a u.s bank savings and he had an offshore savings so at this point in time i asked him show me the u.s bank savings show me show me the other two accounts he would not do it this became a huge bone of contention. He would not show me the two accounts that he claims has the most money in there, the accounts that he claims has money for a house in there, because he still was mentioning, hey, we need to get on this house thing if we're going to move um, when the lease is up. So I'm just adamant on, why, aren't you, why don't you want to show me your savings account? You showed me the Chase one. Like, what is the big deal? And so he kept saying, he was like, there's a lot of money in there. And he was like, and my uncle always taught me, this is not the uncle that died, another uncle. My uncle always told me, you know, just keep your money tight because women can be, I said women. Like, we're married. So, 
go ahead and show it to me. He would not show it to me. So then we went back into marriage counseling, like the next session. And I bring it up. I said, he will not show me these two accounts that he claims has the money in there to buy a house. I told a pastor and his wife, I said, I saw the bro, bro really pulled up. Oh, um, you know, uh, I have a girlfriend. She doesn't go here, but instead to his wife and instead about his finances when they're getting a joint bank account. That's awesome. The pre-approval letter. So I don't understand why he's not going to show me to just put me at ease that he has the money in there. I had never questioned it before because again, you tell me who in their right mind signs their name to a legally binding offer, an all cash offer on a house. And they, they just do it willy nilly. I don't know anyone that does that. So I actually never questioned what was in the savings because I clearly saw him sign his name to a $699,000 all cash offer on a house. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please go back to the parts in this playlist where I talk about what he did when we were looking for a house. So the pastor and his wife were like, Legion, that's not his name, y'all, that's a nickname. Legion, why would, you, why would you not show your wife your savings account? Like, what, what's going on here? And so he- Bro, the pastor was 6'5". Oh my God, update. Pastor, 6'5". Didn't get fucking caught up in the in the dignitization. He's not dignitized. Oh my god. Okay, never mind. Pastor's actually coming in kind of clutch right now. Obviously, he has religious moral obligations to make sure that the re the relationship continues. He ain't no pastor is gonna be like, yeah, you guys need a fucking divorce. Are you coming over here? Don't fucking come over here after seven hundred episodes. You can't fucking come over here, walk over here, be like, hmm. Let me get a closer look at what's going on here. Admit you're captivated. Oh, it's very captivating, isn't it? He just slowly walked over. He's like, I'm locking in. He made up some bullshit. And I remember the pastor's wife was like, something, something ain't right. And so at this point, Legion kind of shuts down. He's just like, look, y'all are not going to tell me when <laughs> and where I can open. I open up my accounts to show anybody the money I earned. I earned that money. I earned that money by playing football, blood, sweat, and tears. He went to this whole Denzel Washington monologue about how he... He went, he, he brought up the arena football to the pastor. Okay. Now a third party has officially found out about the arena football situation. Please tell me the pastor was like, let me Google this shit real quick. What the fuck money. do you mean arena no one, football? No woman, no one is going to come in and tell him that he needs to open up the account. So then he starts talking about the ex-wife and how she tried to get money from him in the divorce back when they were in California. So now the pastor and his wife, their red flags are just like, whoa, so much so that the pastor's wife said, and I will never forget this. She said, I don't think you all are going to make it to January. What oh! she was talking about is, I don't think y'all are going to make it. Either. Oh, the pastor's wife. God damn. Even the pastor's wife's like, nope, nope, it's not happening. And I really, truly was like, we're going to make it. Like, of course we're going to make it. And she was just like, I don't have a good feeling about it. And so Legion's all defensive. He, he At this point, he's folding his arms and he, and because remember we're on Zoom, he's folding his arms and he's just like, I'm, I'm done with this. Like, I'm not going to get attacked because I'm not comfortable showing you the amount of money that I have. Money changes people and I'm not comfortable. So he's playing that victim card. Um, <laughs> Pastor's wife, seven feet. <laughs> everything, everything in this story is, is always going back to fucking height, dude. Pastor's wife is in the WNBA. She's playing for the Georgian WNBA team. And she had no time. She was like, nope, not happening. I know exactly what the fuck's going on here as a six foot seven, as a seven foot tall Atlanta dream, WNBA power forward, not power forward, that point to be a center. <laughs> she plays arena basketball. Yeah. She's like, you're in my arena now. And so the pastor and his wife were like, you know, we we're still. Going yes. See this chatter did what I did literally episode one. Google says arena football players make like under 17 an hour average. How we got 700 K cash. That's the point. She could have literally looked it up. They make, they make $17 an hour and they get like 12 grand a year. Okay. We'll help y'all as much as we can, but so he was like, I'm not comfortable. And basically the pastor and his wife were like, look, we'll help y'all as much as we can, <laughs> but there's some deep issues here. And you know, had you, this is what they advised us. Had the two of you came to us for premarital counseling, we would have told you, do not get married. Y'all should not even be together. That is what our, <laughs> that is what the pastor. And okay. That's like the eighth divine intervention lady. You literally had 
Like at this point, Jesus Christ himself could come into her dreams and be like, hello, I am Jesus Christ, savior of mankind. I died for your sins. Please, you are out of your fucking mind. Break up with this man. His name is literally Legion. You're calling him Legion. It is a biblical reference to a gaggle of demons. What are you doing? It would be like, like it, it, it, it, she, Jesus would be like, listen, remember when we killed the baby? Remember when you had a miscarriage? Remember when your tire popped? Remember when you had a miscarriage? Think about all the times we gave you out. Yeah, but Jesus, unfortunately, is not six foot four. So she's not listening. <laughs> His wife told us in marriage counseling, if you two had come to us for premarital counseling, we would have told you y'all should not even be together, let alone get married. But here we are. So we will help you guys as much as we can. But the pastor's wife was like, I don't have a good feeling that y'all are going to make it a year. Part 24, who the fuck did I marry? So remember, we're in April. Um, we're now moving towards the end of April. And he still did not show me his um, savings account. I saw the checking saw the chase savings so he decides that we should start looking for a house again because my lease was up in august and i made it very clear that when the lease is up i am moving i wanted to move to cobb county so um he was like you know we need to get the ball rolling i didn't want any parts of it didn't want any parts of it he found a realtor this time it was a woman it was a woman um and he's cheating i believe her name was amber i think her name was amber so he found a realtor and um Kind of, we, you know, he told her what the budget was. Amber started finding houses. So please understand, or you don't really have to understand, but um, I believed, I believed he was a sane, rational human being. Sane enough that you would not sign a, an offer on a home if you didn't have the money. That's what I believed. So when we started working with Amber, Amber, I believe, showed us three or four houses. It was not nearly as many as the other realtor, Scott. So one of the houses um, absolutely loved. Ugh, I love the house. She keeps loving um, houses really that she can't to buy. An offer on that house, and I'm going to post it on the screen, the house. Love that house. It was just absolutely beautiful. And once again, he wanted to put in an all-cash offer on the house. But before he could put in an all, he had told Amber, I want to put in an all cash offer. And what Amber, well, the woman, was smart enough to say is, okay, let's just go ahead and take it one step at a time. Let's go ahead and get your pre-approval stuff together. She said, I work with a great lender who, if, you, if you're not already pre-approved, um, he can get you pre-approved, no issues. Um, and then if you want to do an all cash offer, then we'll go ahead and get the proof of funds together. So that way we can submit it all with your offer. Jesus. Y'all already know what happened. Because you remember what happened on the last house with Scott. Um basically legion last four houses at this point we're on house fucking four man at this point i can't even be mad at him i mean this is like fool me once fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me but like fool me eight times oh my god i'm now saying j cole lyrics i just realized okay fool me like eight more fucking times it's you know i don't know what to do at this point it's just like Keep doing it, I guess. Fuck it. Jen was like, well, I can get you whatever you need. That's fine. But I really don't want to submit proof of funds unless they accept the offer. Amber, and I don't know where she is. I don't even know if she'll ever see this video. Um, yeah, they could have locked in a 2% interest rate and they fucked up like your boy, okay? Well, I didn't get a 2% interest rate, but mine was pretty, pretty low. All things considered. Anyway, let me keep going and I'll explain why that woman has a special place in my heart. So Amber was like, you know, I totally understand. Um, but this is how we're going to do it. <laughs> um, I'm going to need that paperwork. Okay. And um, we'll submit it with your offer. It, she, she just simply was like, yeah, this is how we're going to do it. And so he did not submit the paperwork um, when she had asked him to. And I remember I was driving to work and I stopped at a quick trip on Upper Riverdale Road in Riverdale, Georgia. And Amber had called me. It was it was in the morning. She had called me. Um, and I believe with all my heart that Amber 
knew something was up, but she also knew I did not know what was up. So she called me and she was like, I just don't understand. Like if he has the paperwork, like you can submit the paperwork. But the issue was the Chase paperwork that I had was from a year prior. So my understanding was that it pretty much was no good at this point. Um, so she said, he, all he has to do is just email it to me or take a picture of, she's like, I just need to know that he's able to back up his offer. And I said, I totally get it. Um, and she was explaining some stuff to me. She was like, you know, he needs to do X, Y, and Z. And so I said to her, I remember I said, I don't know what's going on. I said, um, I'm going to get down to the bottom of it, but I don't know what's going on. And no, so you're not. let's put a pause on this whole thing. Let's put a pause on looking at houses. Let's put a pause on um, getting his pre-approval letter because I'm not sure what's going on. And she got quiet. Oh, I know you and don't she know. she said, okay. I said, and I know this sounds weird. And she said, no. She said, that is actually very smart. <laughs> she said, um, <sighs> do your research. And if I can be of assistance, call me. She said, whether you buy a house with him or you buy a house on your own, I will be more than happy to represent you. I don't know where Amber is today. But that one sentence, I felt like, I felt like just woman to woman, she was basically telling me something ain't right, baby, something ain't right. And I mean, before Amber, the pastor's wife said it too, woman to woman. Now you need open. It seems like anyone that comes in contact of Legion, if he's sitting down and they don't know he's six foot four. They immediately are like, oh, this guy is a fucking broke boy. He's he's a bum. He's a bum ass. Get the fuck out of here. Like, no, he is. He's a scammer. It's like. Also, yeah, woman to woman, I'll take that. I'll take the percentage off that sale no matter what. Yeah, guys, I'll be more than happy to work with you. Um. If y'all get your shit together, I'll work with both of you. But whether you buy a house or not, do your research and then let me know what I can do. That was our conversation at a quick trip on Upper Riverdale Road. So I got off the phone. Um, that was the last time that we worked with any sort of real realtor. That was the last time that we looked at any sort of house. Um, and I don't know. I don't remember exactly what happened. Yeah, Amber was like, hey, do you know what arena football is? Because, like, he told me what it is. I immediately Googled the salary. I realized he can't put a cash offer on this house. <laughs> That's what we just finished the house arc. I know, dude, this is a, the most compelling anime of all time. Then after that meeting that day, I do know that when I went home, I simply told him, I don't want to look at a house right now. Um, I said, I think it's okay if we rent. Um, we'll just find a house in Cobb County and just rent um, for a year. And let's, and let's build, you know, save some more money. Let's just, um, let's not worry about buying a house right now. And basically what I was trying to do was save face because that was the first time with Amber that I actually was embarrassed at the fact that we're wait, we, he and I, because I felt like I was complicit in the fact that I'm going to look at houses with him. I felt like we are wasting these people's time. I did not mean to waste your time. I clearly see my time as being wasted, but that doesn't mean I need to waste your time. And I felt embarrassed at the fact that we wasted her time um, coming across as serious buyers. When time came to put up or shut up, nothing was put up. And I knew nothing. I had nothing to add to, the, to, to, add to this because we're talking about a $650,000 house. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't make that. I don't make anywhere near that. So it, was, it just became one of those situations where I was trying to save face. I was trying to save face with my husband and I was trying to save face with Amber. And so I did say to him, Let's just rent for another year and then let's see um, at that time where we are, if we should go ahead and buy. So now is when shit is about to get real. Part 25, who the fuck did I marry? So we weren't looking at houses anymore. We were not working with a realtor anymore. The end of April, I had decided that I wanted to look for another job. I did. The reason I want to look for another job is petty. Yeah, it is. I wanted to look for another job because I was pissed off at the fact that, um, I had basically was dependent on him to help with the car note. So I wanted to look for another job where I could afford life all by myself, including that car note, basically where I would make more money. I told him that I was going to start looking for another job. He laughed and his exact words were, you're not going to leave Georgia State Patrol. He was like, I swear you love the niggas more than you love me. He laughed. So that fueled me even more. 
So I was hitting the pavement hard trying to find another job. I was applying to all kinds of places. Got a phone call um, from my current job. So this is how I ended up in my current job. Got a phone call um, they, and they had sent me an email with a background packet. The background packet was long and extensive, but in the background packet, it asked for my spouse's full name, my spouse's date of birth, and my spouse's social security number. So I showed it to Legion and I was like, I need your social because, you know, I'm applying for this job. It's a great uh -oh. job. It's way more money. Um, and, you know, we're talking about moving anyway to Cobb County. So this, you know, this, this is a God thing. They're going to steal the vote. <sighs> he didn't oh, my God. This is going to tie in. This is going to tie into the election. Chat. It's going to tie into the election. This is how they stole Georgia. Oh, my God. I knew there was a compelling finish to this. Oh, my God. It's coming. It's coming together. That's right. He is a, he is a false, he is a fake voter. Did not want to give me his social. I explained, I showed him the paperwork where I was like, look, because we are married, I, I can't lie on here. So help me. <laughs> um, so he writes down his social security number on the background packet. And um, I eventually turned it in. I scanned it, saved it in my email and, and sent it in. And he put a fake social security number for a person who's like a serial rapist or something. That'd be really funny. And <laughs> On accident, he puts a fake social security number. It turns out it pings like it's got a rap sheet the size of fucking Mount Everest. I looked at it one day, be just going through it, just making sure I didn't really miss anything. All T's were crossed, all I's were dotted. And I looked at his social and something about the social seemed different than the social security number that I remember seeing when we did our marriage license. And so for those who... You remember in the previous part, I said I had ran his social security number from the marriage license. Nothing came back. So I thought that I had written it down wrong. Basically, what it is, is that the first three numbers were different on the background packet than what was on the marriage license. Bro is really Saul Goodman, though, for real. Like, this is... If you don't know this, here's a little trivia. Your social security number, the first three numbers... God, I love con men so much, though. Like, whether it be George Santos or this fucking guy, no matter how petty... No matter how small, no matter how minor the con is, it's still so goddamn compelling. The Tinder swindler, you know what I mean? Trump. Pretty much are dictated by the state you were born in, the state that issued your birth certificate. So he was born in Pennsylvania. So his social, the first three letters, excuse me, the first three numbers of his social security number should be attributed to Pennsylvania. Yeah. Pennsylvania, shit. They probably got like five, six different numbers, uh, three digit numbers that your social security number can start with. So the social that was on the marriage license, the for example, thief. Um, was probably one, two, three. What was on the background was four, five, six. Both of those social security three digit prefixes are issued through the state of Pennsylvania. Again, this is an example so I can make it clear. So when I saw his social on my background, I immediately knew that was a different social than what I saw on the marriage license. Um, and when I compared because I, I had found a copy of the marriage license that we turned in because I had filled it out on the computer. So sure enough, the first three numbers were different. The rest of the numbers were the same. So one of two things, either when I ran his background, I did in fact put in the wrong number or the number on the marriage certificate or the um, background packet is wrong. So I decided that I was going to roll the dice and take the social from the background packet. Again, this is the background packet that I had to fill out to get my current job. I was trying to get a new job. Okay, so I took that social and I ran a background check on it. What came back on this particular background were, was all the addresses that the social security number, I guess, had been um, attached to. So all of the addresses, the states were Georgia, Rhode Island, Pennsylvania. What I did not see California. was California. So I thought that oh was my weird. God. I thought, okay. Oh my God, is California fake? Did he never go to California? Oh my God, did he never play arena football? Oh my God. Oh my God. If he never played arena football, it's over. He's not six foot four. Maybe this is not a complete background because clearly he went to San Diego State. It's on his resume. It's on, it's on quite a few things. Social media, he didn't have a LinkedIn, but it was on his social media. So clearly he had, he had been to California. So maybe I just need to do a different background check. Did you also see a to know photo? during this time, he, um, he, I think I told you guys he had hit his leg at work. So I'm not gonna lie, I wouldn't believe, I would not believe this man if I saw Instagram photos of him inside of San Diego State University wearing San Diego State colors. I would still be like, nah. I don't think I could ever believe a thing that comes out of his mind, uh, out of his mouth. 
there's there's just nothing he can do to prove his innocence at any circumstance. No shot. What was happening was it was getting more and more difficult for him to walk, like put pressure on that on that knee. Um, he was still able to go to work. He was he was still leaving at six fifteen in the morning. He was still coming back between three thirty and four o'clock. But I clearly could see where he was in pain. Um, he would elevate the knee, ice the knee. It was it was getting worse, and I was constantly like, "Go to the doctor. Let me take you to urgent care so that they can look at this knee because you shouldn't still be limping and having a hard time um, putting weight on that knee." And every single time he was like, oh, I don't you know, believe it's, that it's fine. I have a doctor's appointment on Wednesday. The doctor just told me to ice don't it and to that. elevate it. Um, this, happened, this is an old football injury. It happens all the time. It used to happen a lot when I was out in California. So I'm mentioning this knee issue for a reason. That's definitely fake because California notoriously has dry weather and therefore your old injuries won't act up. So that part is definitely fake. When I go to a more humid area, I have I have more issues like nagging pain and shit. Nope. Nope. He's, he's lying. He's fucking lying. Um, but back to the background. So once again, when I ran the background the second time with a second social, it showed me states of Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Rhode Island. And that is all this. That's all that I saw in terms of addresses. I didn't see anything for California. So by this point, we're moving into May of 2021. Things are starting to reopen. One of the things that reopened was San Diego State. So I called San Diego State. I called the registrar's office. Registrar's oh, office. Oh hell um, no! Someone did answer, and there was there was um, instructions on how to request a transcript. Um, I was able to try to request it online. You needed the person's the student's name, and I believe you also need their social. And when I typed it in, it said no results found. Um, I believe that I sent an email asking, you know, this person is, is saying that they were a student there. Can you verify it? The response I got was there were no records found with that social security number. So I'm like, okay, I asked him about it. And in part 26, I'll tell you exactly what his response was. Oh no. Part 26, who the fuck did I marry? At least so she's starting to confront him. him. What's the deal about San Diego State? He was like, what are you talking about? And I said, um, why is there no records of you there? <laughs> I just came right out and said it. Without missing a beat, this man said, well, I was a private citizen. Oh my God, he's a sovereign. He's a libertarian. He's a libertarian, folks. Oh hell no! What does that mean? And what he said is that when he started at San Diego State, his father paid money so that. Okay, it's important to say this with a straight face. His his father paid money so that his name and social would not be publicized, and he would be considered a private student, a private citizen. Um, he said that he had a card where. All he had to do was show the card. He does not have to give his name. He does not have to give any information because he had that card. He said, so San Diego State would not public, would not have any record of him, but he was in fact a student there. I said, and you claim that you played football. He's like, I did play football. I said, so you're saying that the school did not publish your name anywhere and they were in violation of NCAA rules? And he was like, why are you asking all these questions? And I said, I'm just curious. I'm just, meh, meh, I'm just curious. You're saying that you were a private citizen, but yet how did you, how were you in compliance with NCAA if you were a private citizen and they did not publish your name on any roster? So that was his excuse. He was like, all I can tell you is that I was a private citizen. My dad paid for it. Okay. So now I know that San Diego State has no record of him. Now I know that his social security number, at least the one that's on my, back, my background packet, only shows that he listed in, he, excuse me, only shows that he lived in Georgia, Rhode Island, and Pennsylvania. Okay. So at this point, the pain in his knee is getting worse. Uh, it's getting to the point where when he would come home from work, he would take a shower and immediately get in bed, elevate his knee. He was, he was not even eating um, the way that he used to eat. It was getting to the point where at times, um, if you remember when I told you all about the miscarriage, they gave me pain meds because I had taken that pill. But the pain meds I was allergic to, so I couldn't take them. But I still had them. So the pain in his knee was getting to the point where he would take one of those pain meds just to get through the night he was constantly in agony constantly kind of tossing and turning so much so that in may why would he lie about playing at sdsu they aren't even good at football it, to be fair that's like the perfect place to lie about then i mean i don't know enough about sdsu football or college football in general but yeah it'd be better to lie about a fucking shitty team than like a really good one you know what i mean
day he moved into the guest bedroom because I couldn't deal with the tossing and turning thing. And he just said he was more comfortable there. So what, what at first was a, oh, I hit my knee at work, turned into, no, it was an old football injury. This has happened before. Turned into, you know, it's painful for me to walk on it. Turned into, it's, it's actually hard for me to work on it. Um, but he was, he was still going to work at 6.15 every morning and coming home between 3.30 and 4. So um, it is, again, I'm just giving you guys the chronological order of how all this happened. So at this point, we're not looking at, we're not looking for a house. Um, I still have not seen the two savings account. I'm pretty sure there's no money in those savings accounts. But again, he was going to put in an all cash offer with Amber, the real realtor. So I really didn't know what to believe, but I, I believed what I saw, which is I saw that that background is not showing where he went to California. So at one point in May, it was close to mid-May, he calls me from work. He calls me from work, calls me while I'm at work and tells me that he got a phone call from his stepson. The phone call from his stepson, the stepson was crying and was just absolutely distraught. And I'm at work in my office like, what's going on? And he says to me that the stepson informed him that his stepdaughter passed away. What? That she died from COVID. The stepson, found, this is the story. The stepson found her in her apartment because they had not heard from her for a couple of days. And she was unresponsive. He called the ambulance. Bro, this dude's whole family is dying of COVID. Like the entire family's gone. Every single person. He was like, when COVID first happened, he was like, oh my God, this is such a good opportunity for me to milk it. I can just keep making up family members that are dying to COVID. They pronounced her dead when she got to the hospital. So he was calling to tell me that she had died. Um, and he was also calling to ask me if I would object to him giving his ex-wife $2,000 towards the funeral. As I've stated before, and I, and I still am this way to this day. I don't play about death. So when he told me that she died, I immediately went into the, all right, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, whatever we can do to help, let's help. Because surely no. The craziest part about this con is that he's not really like getting anything from her. It's not like he's like milking her for money. Because like usually when you have an elaborate scheme like this, it's not just purely to satisfy your pathological, narcissistic desires. Like, he's literally paying the rent. He's paying the rent. He's like, in a way, he's pure evil. He's lying for sport. And he's even paying a price for it, too. Which is crazy. He's not even having sex with her no more. He just got married to her and he's just still like, man, I'm having so much fun. I just, <laughs> I'm about my business. Like, and my business is just fucking habitually lying. <laughs> it's so weird. It, it actually does not, it's not about the money. It's about sending a message. No, seriously. It makes no sense unless he's like, secretly a murderer or something and he needed like a second life to get away from it all or something like it makes no sense for him to be doing this he's just like such a demon it's content for him body would make that up so he again he was like are you are you okay with that he's like we're married and the agreement was that anything over five hundred dollars would be a discussion so two thousand definitely and i said yeah i said that's totally fine I'm, I'm fine with that um he was upset because again he was close with the kids and my heart went out to his ex-wife it did because i i can't even imagine i cannot even imagine so part 27 who the fuck did i marry so here's where we are at and here's what we can establish number one I ran an initial background check on the social security number that was on our marriage license. Skipping the recaps. This the states. It gave me addresses and it also one of those names was his background. I did a circle that she was associated with with him because we're here, the ex-wife. Oh. One of those names was his ex-wife. I've always known he's he's always told me the name of the ex-wife. But now I see it when I ran his background. Ex-wife is real. We've established it. She was not there. So the address that it showed that she was associated with, with him. Because remember, his story is, we got married in San Diego, we lived in San Diego, we divorced in San Diego. 
Men lie, women lie. The U.S. federal government with your social security number does not. So um, he said. That's what you think. They're coming after him because he's a sovereign citizen and a unique talent at SDSU, lady. He was always in California. His social security number never showed that he was in California, according to the background check. It did show that he had lived in Georgia at an address associated with the ex-wife. So try to find the ex-wife, could not find her on social media. So I looked in the metro counties to protect her identity. This, I am going to not divulge a lot on this part. I looked in the metro counties in the, um, the open record courts. So typically, you know, you can look in like superior court or magistrate court or probate court. So I looked in open records for the different counties, metro counties, metro Atlanta counties. Let me be clear, metro Atlanta counties. God damn. And I looked under her name and I found where they had filed for divorce in a metro Atlanta county. So when he said that he filed for divorce in San Diego and that he was married in San Diego, I was able to find, no, according to the state of Georgia, you were married here. You were divorced here. So oh my I looked God. under her name, found a record, found a record for divorce. And okay, it let's pause here for a moment and reflect. Imagine all of this is happening and you have like complete proof that you are in this house with a dude that has been like serially lying to you about everything. And now you're married to the dude and it's like, like that's so, that's got to be a little bit terrifying. Because think about it. You don't know anything about this guy. And he's just like not a reliable narrator of his own story. Like, what is he doing? Is he a murderer? Why is he lying like this? I, I just, like, I don't know how I would just go about my life. Like, if I found out all of this stuff, I just, I don't know what I would do. I would go crazy, I feel like. Did show his name. So now I clearly see on my computer that there is a Metro, count, Metro Atlanta County court that has a divorce record in the state of Georgia between him and his ex-wife. So I did what any rational person would do. Because this is still kind of COVID time, um, well, not really... It had nothing to do with COVID. Let me take that back. Because of the parameters of the court, you can only do the open records request in person. I did what anybody would do. I told my boss I had to go. I grabbed my purse, grabbed my keys, and I drove to the court to do the open records request in person. The open records request was for the divorce documents. Go back in the story, in the series, and remember, I went over, I did a background on the ex-wife. I told you all exactly what was told to me. He a chatter pointed this out, and it's terrifying, and I didn't even think about this. But like, yeah, what if you take out a fucking life insurance on her? Because he's he's like not super smart. You know what I mean? He's dumb enough to like take out a life insurance on her and then Google how to fucking poison your uh, wife secretly type shit. You know what I mean? I'm just saying like that's. You're not wrong, Chatter. I feel like there's there's motive there for sure. He's dumb as fucking shit. It's actually insane he got this far. It makes me question everything. I mean, I don't know how he got this far. I mean, we do know how he got this far. She was really motivated. Met her in California. He married her in California. He divorced her in California because she cheated on him. He filed for divorce. She tried to get spousal support. It, it, turned, it was going to be a little ugly. He was helping her with the kids. That was the story that was told to me. So went to the court, filled out the paperwork, got the open records request for the divorce decree, for the divorce records. First thing I see. He didn't file. She did. Second thing I see, they didn't make it more than six months. I see the, the date of marriage. I see the date of the date of uh, dissolution. Six months. Second, uh, third thing I see, he was served in Metro Atlanta, which means that at the time of the divorce, he was living in Metro Atlanta. Had nothing. California was never mentioned. Fourth thing I see, he filed what is called a pop pauper affidavit. If you don't know what that is, I'm going to do my best to explain it real quick. Basically, he filed an affidavit with the court saying that he is so poor, he could not afford the fees to pay for a divorce. He couldn't afford a filing fee. He couldn't afford a service fee. That is what a pauper affidavit is for. All of this is in um, the divorce documents. She had filed. I love terms like that. Like, that's so old school. Dude, the pauper affidavit. 
pauper means like like it's an old school term for being like really really poor that's such a funny i don't know i just i find it really funny that like yeah here <laughs> I need a purpose affidavit, my lord. <laughs> she said it was irreconcilable differences. She was not requesting any money whatsoever. Um, and both of them had signed a pauper affidavit. He was served in Georgia at his previous employment. According to the divorce documents, he was served at like a grocery store. That is what was listed as his employer. And it had a date of when he was served. So I see all of this in one day. I also see where on the divorce documents, she listed her name, her address, and her phone number. So I did what any rational person would do. I wrote down the phone number. There was a 50-50 chance that the number was already disconnected. She could be like me, I'm one of those people. Honey, you can sneeze at a 27 degree angle. I will change my number so quick, you ain't even know what hit you. You can talk to me at five o'clock and at 5.05, my number has been changed. So she could have been like me and the number is not even active. Or she could be like some people I know who have kept their number since kindergarten. Either way, I wrote the number down. I um, left the court and I immediately went back to work. And the same friend who helped me when I had my miscarriage, I told her, I was like, I got this phone number. This is the ex-wife. She was like, girl, you better call. You better I do call love, and, and find. I do love that like she went from being almost oblivious to the point of delusion to like, like a flip switched at this point. And now she's like, nope, now I'm Sherlock fucking Holmes. Okay. I'm going into like magistrate court, finding fucking information, doing deep dives and shit. I do feel like she is now like kind of almost at this point invested in the drama of it all. Like it's not even self-preservation. It almost feels like she's like locked in. Like she likes the mystery. And out from her, because can't no, I think she says to me, can't nobody tell you what is going on quite like the ex-wife. So part 28 is the phone call that I had with the ex-wife. Part 28 of who the fuck did I marry? <laughs> so I got the phone number, went back to work. Um, my really good friend was like, you better call her. You can use my phone. But you know what I've learned from this? If you're six foot four, one, you can get away with an insane amount of shit. And two, you have to keep slinging the dick. Okay. You just, you have to, like, if he kept slinging that dick, that good dick, he probably would have gotten away with this crime. Cause like, what genuinely started, what genuinely started the shift was when, <laughs> was when he just stopped fucking her. When she was like, things went south real quick. But call her. So I called her. Um, she answered. Let me use aliases. Um, and the conversation went like this. May I please speak with Barbara? This is Barbara. Barbara, this is Shirley. Shirley who? This is Shirley Jones. I am the wife of Legion. Silence. Then she starts laughing. And she said to me, and I quote, if you were calling me, then I know it's bad. I chuckle and I said to her, I'm not trying to bother you. I'm not trying to disrupt your life. I, I said, I am literally coming to you on some woman to woman shit. I said, because you were probably the only person who can help <laughs> she and she she listened she was she was gracious and she said um she said what is it that you need to know or what is it that you want to know and i said i understand that you and my husband talk and communicate um and she was and she immediately said what no we don't and i said he's cheating okay i told you um she said one thing you need to know about legion she said whatever he tells you it is a lie and she said when he Again, let's go back to part one. I told you guys that when he introduced himself or when we met, we actually had matched on two different sites and he was under two different names. One was an act was like the actual birth name. The other one was a nickname variation of that name. That's the name I know him by. So for example, if his name was Matthew, he had a profile under Matthew and then he had a profile under Matt. I would have known him as Matt. So 
she said to me, she was like, I don't even know who Matt is. She was like, that's not even his name. And so I knew what his actual government name is. She was like, no one calls him Matt. She was like, that must be his new, um, his new personality. Bro, bro. I do love the consistency of still calling yourself Legion through it all, though. Because, like, he did. His name is actually, like, people know him by Legion, including his ex-wife. Like, he literally was like, my name is a villain name. I have adopted the villain name. This is me. Everybody fucking knows him as Legion. Which is crazy. Like, he changes personalities and whatnot. But he still calls himself Legion, which is crazy. God damn. If he's a straight villain. Or she, she was cracking a joke, but she was like, anything he tells you, you need to know is a lie. So I just asked her, I said, what was your experience? I said, because I can tell you the story he told me. And she, and she stopped me right there. She said, whatever. No, told she you doesn't about. call. No, it's not just that she calls him Legion. People know him. She said, guys, I've been so fucking locked in. You have no idea. I've literally paid attention to every minutia for the past fucking four hours. Okay. She said, Everybody that knows him in the real world knows him by Legion. She did not say, like, she said, regardless of what his, like, name is, and this is not his name, everyone knows him as Legion. As in, like, and it seems like she, her, even her ex-wife knew immediately who the fuck it was, when she said her name was Legion, I'm Legion's wife. Which means that's not what she says. She said her friend, no, she calls him that. No, she said her friends, you're wrong. That's the name she used to tell the story. When he switched from calling him to her ex to Legion, that's what she said. No, I thought, I thought, she, no, I don't think it's a placeholder. Am I wrong? Did I misunderstand that? No, it does matter. No, I think that's his, like, nickname. Because that's what she calls him, is derogatory. I feel like Legion is a devil fucking with a human being has to be. No, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure she said that's her nickname, too. It's not a placeholder. It's a lie. She said, let me guess. He told you I cheated on him. Let me guess. He told you that I wanted money from him. And I said, yeah. And she said, yeah, that's a complete lie. Um, so we had a conversation where she told me how they met. Um, they didn't meet online or anything. I said, well, were you guys ever in California? She said, no. She's like, he, She was like, that man ain't never been from past the East Coast. So I said, okay, um, so you guys are, are we getting raided? What's happening? Johnny raid. Yo, what's good, everybody. Um, I hope you had a good stream. I'm my fucking, oh no, hold on. Let me filter the followers because it's going crazy. I thought we got, I thought we got like botted or something for a second. Um, so welcome Raiders. Uh, we are currently watching who the fuck did I marry? TikTok, the full story. We are four hours and 19 minutes in and, uh, we're learning a lot about the story of this, this woman who, uh, married a pathological liar. Okay. The, the story of a woman who married a pathological liar and was invested. It's apparently a, a an incredibly, incredibly fucking popular story on TikTok. People have like watched through all of these, epi uh, all of these like one by one part 
like 80 part story from a Rolling Stone article. There's a fucking literal Forbes article written on it. There's a Rolling Stone article written on it. Um, tomorrow, uh, I will be collaborating with Johnny and Jake where they are going to emo fi me for the record. For those of you who don't know, um, they're going to come over and we're going to do some emo related activities. I'm, I'm going to go through my, I'm going to go through my emo phase, which is not a phase. It's a lifestyle. And, uh, yeah, very excited, very excited for that. Hell yeah. Are you going to... You gonna paint your nails? I I'll paint my nails. I used to. But yeah, we are we are uh currently in the midst of this gripping tale. One of the greatest one of the greatest tales of all time. An incredibly compelling story. All right, let's get back into it. I've always been in Georgia. And she said, yeah. She's like, we got married in Georgia and we got divorced in Georgia. And that's when she asked me, how did you even get my number? She said, because I want nothing to do with him. I don't know about So how shave. did you we get my number? I told, and I said, I'm going to tell you the truth. It ain't going to make me. I'll be the only emo boy with facial hair. I've done it already. I've shaved one time for a, a cosplay and it was, it was uh, devastating. Look good. I told her. I said, I'll think about it. I'll think is, about this it. This is what happened. And this is what led to me doing research. And this is how I got your number. And she laughed. She was like, wow. She said, she was like, normally I would be freaked out. She said, but under the circumstances, she was like, wow. Okay. Um, she said, yeah, if you're calling me, then it must've gotten pretty bad. She said, so what did he promise you? And we talked for about 30, 35 minutes. She asked me in that phone call. She said, look, I want nothing to do with him. I have not spoken to him since our divorce was finalized. She said, so I would just appreciate if you keep me out of whatever's going on with y'all. And I told her, I said, I give you my word. I will never tell him I spoke to you. I said, I give you my word. I said, this, this, this conversation is for me. It is not for me to use in any sort of legal litigation, nothing. This is for me. And, um, I said, I, I said, I don't plan to call you again. I don't plan to be a disrupt, a disruption in your life. I just needed to know how bad is it? And she was, she paused and she said, is bad. She said, I don't know what all y'all got going on. She said, but if it's anything like what it was for me, it's bad. So we talked a little bit more. She was very encouraging. She was like, girl, do not blame yourself. She said, um, I went through that and I, I had blamed myself. She was like, this is not on us. This is on him. Um, she was like, he is a master liar, a master manipulator. She said, I ignore the red flags. So she was like, do not feel as though this is on you. We talked about, um, the ex, there's an ex-girlfriend that shares the name that shares the same name as his aunt. She and I talked about her. She said, um, the reason why they broke up because the ex-girlfriend, I didn't know this. The ex-girlfriend had reached out to her about six months before he met me. And so <laughs> the ex-girlfriend lives in, um, lived in Douglasville. On Legion's driver's license, he had a Georgia driver's license with the Douglasville address. What he told me was that it was the address that his sister, because remember I told y'all his sister Shantae lives in Douglasville. She's a nurse married with two kids. So he told me that the address on his license, it was his driver's license, was to Shantae's house. The ex-wife is telling me, no, that's the address for the girlfriend, the ex-girlfriend. He had moved in with her and he created this whole narrative with her. She found out, um that he was lying and she what is the out. motivation and so i guess after she kicked him out she then um reached out to the ex-wife kind of the way i did for confirmation and so the ex-wife was just telling me whatever that man has told you it is a lie she said i got out before it got too bad um she said because once i knew he was lying i was out she was like because he's never going to change <laughs> um and so, again, conversation went on and on. And so finally, we were getting ready to get off the phone. And before we got off the phone, 
I said to her, I said, if everything is a lie, I said, I have one question for you. And she said, sure. I said, how is your daughter? I said, how was your daughter? Why would, up. why would you believe that they even had a daughter at this point? Come on now. Part 29, who the fuck did I marry? So I asked her, how was your daughter? She said, my daughter's fine. And I said, okay. She said, what did he say about my daughter? And I will be honest with y'all, I didn't have the heart to tell her. So what I said instead was, oh, no, it was, you know, with everything with COVID, I think he mentioned that she might have, um, she might have had COVID or was exposed to it. I downplayed it bad. I wasn't going to tell that woman that he said her daughter passed away. Um, so she did, I said, you know, obviously I'm, I'm glad to hear that kids are fine. She, she said, look, whether you stay with him or not is your choice. She said, he ain't going to change. He ain't going to change at all. Um, she said, this, th this is what he does. She said, you're not the first. You're not going to be the last. She said, he did it to me. She was very, very encouraging because she was just like, you do not blame yourself. She said, you know, we both ignored red flags, um, but it is not your fault. She said, this is on him. And so we, you know, once again, I thanked her for her time, got off the phone. I took the long way home that night. Um, I, I could not be around him. <laughs> I could not be around him. I had to figure something out. I had to, I had to figure some things out. So I just, I, I took a long way home. What does that mean? It means that I purposely... <laughs> I mean, blame yourself a little. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, it is kind of wild. Legendary lick, but there's no... Oh, legendary dick. I was going to say, there's no legendary lick there because there's no lick. The only lick is just like, he's doing the reverse. Like, there's always these like stories of like, um, dudes who, I don't know, like steal money from women and shit. You know what I mean? Like they'll they'll go around girlfriend to girlfriend that kind of thing. But basically like he's living in her place but he's paying the rent. He's paying the rent and he's paying for the groceries. He's paying for everything. So like it doesn't make any sense. Like he's he's manipulating her. And he's fucking around with her, but he's also kind of, I mean, he's like paying for everything. It doesn't, like, what is his motivation? What is he getting out of this situation? Do you understand? Like, it, there's not, I feel like at that level of expertise, con man behavior, you should be, like, there should be a secondary reason, or rather a better primary reason other than like, other than avoiding the top of the hour ad break, which comes to the top of every hour, you know what I mean? Like, because he's probably using her Twitch account and she's subscribed. And you can also obviously no longer see those ads if you subscribe as well. For $5 or for free. Bro's really locked in 10 10 all night. Oh, you know I am. Junta DNA, thank you for the 10 tier one. Give the subs. Allowing 10 people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. My mom was listening with me and you got her with the ad break and she got mad and left. No. Honestly, I probably could have taken oh 75 to 285, but I probably took 20 to 75 to 285 to 675, kind of like I just took the long way home. Um she loves driving. A couple of days later, because I really... My, we my know that already, though. Spinning. A couple of days later, at this point, I'm turning into the FBI, CIA, and Homeland Security all in one. Literally. I'm... I'm trying to find everything. Um, and he's cake, carrying on his five, business as usual. People. Nothing changed with him. He had no idea that I had spoken to the ex-wife. He had no idea I had gone to the court and saw his divorce um, documents. He had no idea. So, a couple of days later... I decided to look up his mother's obituary. Look up the mother's obituary. And um, down at the bottom where it talks about, oh, she's preceded in death by, and it lists all the people, the family members that died before. And then it says, leaving behind to cherish her memory. It lists the husband, his dad, 
her husband, excuse me. Let me start over. It lists her husband, which is Legion's dad. It lists Legion's brother that lives in Philly and his wife. Because again, this is a 2000, she passed away in 2015. So it lists Legion, the, the brother in Philly and his wife and daughter, her granddaughter. It lists Legion. No, bro. And his wife, I think it was like Latoya or La, La something. La something. Um, it did not list the ex-wife I just spoke to. And it clearly said Legion, his wife, Latoya. Then it listed the brother in Nashville, his wife, Jane, or whatever. So it's I'm thinking short, to myself, there's two things I was thinking immediately. It's Number one, short a sister and another brother. Yo! Yo, he made up a brother and a sister. And we found out another wife. This man is the expert. He is the wife haver. Bro. Um, who is Latoya? Never heard that name before. Never heard that name before. So I was thinking, who was Latoya? And then number two, where are the two sisters? Shantae and Kim. Shantae lives in Douglasville, married with two kids. Kim lives in Augusta. And I believe he told me she worked at like Procter & Gamble. So wh why aren't they listed on here? Because apparently, uh, go back to the video. I posted it on there. I gave y'all background on the family. He apparently was one of five through both parents. Brother in Philly, older brother, younger brother in Nashville, an older sister in Douglasville, and a baby sister in Augusta. So why is it on his mother's obituary there's only three three children named? Where are the, where are the two sisters? So I'm even more like, what in the hell is going on? And then I started thinking to myself, where, why wouldn't they list Shantae? Like, they talk all the time, so I know that they're close because he talks to Shantae all the time. So I, I really was confused. By the way, yeah, shouts out to the chatters that made me stay the fuck in this and not script through the crucial family lore. This is literally One Piece. Okay, you know how in One Piece will be like, oh, that's a side character. Who cares, right? And then like 11 episodes, not even 11, 111 episodes later, you're like, oh my God, I remember that side character. Now he's like a major, playing a major role. It's literally some Oda shit, dude. Straight up. You can't miss a fucking moment because... Even on the recap, she's like leaking shit that pays off 30 episodes down the line. That shit's crazy, dude. I totally understand why this was so goddamn compelling on TikTok. And got like each one of these got like 6 million fucking views, by the way. Each one of these videos that she dropped got like 6 million views on TikTok. It makes so much sense. Is that a lot on TikTok? That's a lot everywhere. Six million is a lot, okay? What do you mean? Is that a lot on TikTok? Again, keep in mind, I'm trying to give y'all insight into how I was thinking May of 20, uh, excuse me, May of 2021, because I still, still didn't find out a lot of stuff at that time. I found out enough to figure out, okay, it's not a question of if he's lying. That, that, that was over. It's not a question of if he's lying. The question now is becoming, what else is he lying about? So we had the phone call with the ex-wife. Now I see an obituary that apparently there's another wife. I know on our marriage certificate, it only states he had a, one previous marriage. I had zero, he had one. So this is how I'm thinking in my head, which is, okay, what am I, what am I missing here? I know we've established that he's lying, but who, who the fuck is Latoya? Like, I'm really trying to understand who is Latoya. Um, and again, he's he's hobbling around the house, limping, and I'm I'm in our bedroom. Well, in the by the way, her memory is not insane. It's because she literally audio journaled throughout this entire process, and she's going back to her audio journals. It, it she she literally was audio journaling and like suspecting that there was something that was off for obvious reasons. So, for that reason, she was able to like have phenomenally accurate retelling of events even through all the traumatic stuff bedroom just i mean i could not get on google fast enough to try to figure some stuff out so um see the mom's obituary study it and at this point i'm now trying to figure out okay what's the game plan what is the game plan and that's where we are about to get into the next part. Okay, part 30 of who the fuck did I marry? So I'm going to use this as a clarification video. So we're going to use part 30 as a stop 
let's clarify some things. Um, I've done that before on a previous set of videos, so I think it's just important to do that so that way I can try to address some of the things that I have seen in the comments, um, both supportive and just downright mean. <laughs> but let me clarify some stuff. Number one, it is important to remember that I am telling this entire story of how in a logical order of, but you have a playlist. Um, and don't worry about watching the video as soon as it comes out because everything I'm trying to say, please, and then just watch each video. Did not go to the other video, but that also tell you this of the divorce yet. My family and my friends did not know what was going on between Legion and I. They did not know. My family only knew we've met this guy. He's dating our daughter, our niece, our cousin, our granddaughter. He seems to be a really nice guy. He seems to really love her. Um, from what he has told us, he's done well for himself. He played football um, and he has worked at this company six, seven years and financially he is in a good place. From what we understand, he just moved ahead. They did not know. I'm fully aware that when I tell this story, I look stupid. I'm aware and I made my peace with <laughs> it. But at the time, I did not want to look stupid. So it was important to me. This shit's on letterbox, dude. I mean, it's like literally longer than fucking I mean, it's a drama. It serializes five hours. To put on a, everything's great. We're really happy. We're looking for a house and everything's going well. Knowing full well that behind scenes, I couldn't figure out why he wasn't showing proof of funds. They did not know. So I say that to say, I see the comments about how my aunt gave me horrible advice when I called her about the sexting on Facebook. And I want to clarify something. She did not tell me to stay with him. She did not tell me to leave him. That's not her place and that's not what she would do. She simply was in shock that any of this had happened and did not know what to give me advice on. The one thing that she did say was, look, he's not your boyfriend. Meaning it ain't as simple as, oh, we just gonna break up, pack your shit and go. Cause you married him. Ma is the most ride or die chick I've ever met. You fuck with me, you fuck with her. And she is straight Jersey. So I said, and I, I love her for it, but I needed to, it's not fair for me to leave it out there as if, oh, she just was like, I mean, go home and deal with it. No never in a million years. So I just want to, I want to clarify that. I also want to clarify about my mom. So my mom lived in Arkansas. And when she came to visit in April, this is, we were already married. This is her first time physically meeting Legion. My mom will tell you, she had no idea anything was amiss, but there was something that nagged her a little bit. She didn't know what it was. And my mom is the type <coughs> where she's going to get on her knees in prayer. That's who she is. So for her, it was like, I don't know what it is. He seems like a nice guy. He seems to love my daughter. Um, there, Because again, there was no arguing in the house. The house was peaceful while she was here. Even though behind the scenes, we had just came off of the whole sexting incident with other women. So for her, it was like, I don't know what it is. She did tell me later on that it seemed as if I wasn't as happy as she thought I would have been. But again, she took it to the Lord in prayer. And her prayer was, God, protect my child. I don't know what's going on, but protect her. That was my mom's response. So she did not know. She did not pick up um, or over. They did, though. The Lord did. He tried. The Lord tried many times. The good Lord, the holy Lord tried so many goddamn times. But after a certain point, it's like, if you're not going to listen to God, even God's going to take a back seat hear something that was going on while she was while she was here she had a conver uh, candid conversation with legion and legion kind of came across as it's i miss my mom I'm, he missed his own mother and so he called my mom mom and um doted on her again putting on a, sh a charade and so for her it was like you know bless his heart that's <laughs> that's what the lord literally sent a man of god down from the heavens to directly tell you by way of the man of god's wife that this man was a bum OK, like he was breaking like religious rules and shit. I'm willing to bet a pastor in, in all of his history of marriage counseling has never fucking straight up and like, yeah, divorce is probably a better option here. The entire the entire goal of like getting marriage counseling from a pastor instead of a therapist is because they won't tell you that. You know what I mean? And even then. Even then she's like, nah, it's fine. The Lord on the seventh day sent down a unique deity, one that you do not expect, a fucking realtor. And you still said no. The Lord sent you a motherfucking realtor to be like, listen, sister, woman to woman, this shit's not working out for you. And you still said no. Her name, Amber, praise be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
that's what she said. Bless his heart. Um, but no, she did, she did not know the specifics. Nobody knew the specifics. They didn't know the specifics until we're talking May, June of 2021. They knew that we were looking for a house. They knew that the house fell through. They did not know about the proof of funds. They did not know that he wouldn't show me the savings account, the offshore account. So I just want to say that because to me, it would be irresponsible to not clarify what family and friends knew um, because they, these people have always been supportive of me, always had my back. I just simply did not share with them the things that I felt like were red flags because again, my mindset at the time was I want to be married and what if he isn't lying? And, you know, I was making excuses for him to myself. So I definitely would have made excuses to family. Another thing I need to clarify. And I saw the comments on this about how a VP would never date someone that looked like me. And to the person that wrote it, that wasn't very nice. Um, Fuck I, need that to, person. I need you all to understand the relationship started. Fuck that person. In March of 2020, he had came, he came into my life as regional manager. Okay. That is how he came into my life. Then eventually he got promoted to VP of production or operations, some VP of something that was later on in the relationship. He showed me the paperwork where it, it was basically a memo from HR. You know, you've now, your new position title will be VP of pr production. We'll just say production. Your salary, I don't remember the exact amount because it was a very specific amount, but it was over $200,000. It listed some of the benefits that he would have. Um, he would have an office. He would be getting an executive assistant. Yeah. He's the VP of Thousand Island Dressing. He's the, <laughs> my man was like, I've been promoted. Look at this. VP of Ranch. Here's the piece of paper that says I am now the VP of Ranch. That's where we get David from. If you don't know who David is, please go back and watch the series in order. He would be getting an executive assistant. He would be getting use of a company helicopter. He would be getting a company <laughs> car. Dude, the HR saying you will be able to use the company helicopter is so funny. Oh, my God. You should have known right then and there. What do you mean? VP of Mustard don't get the fucking company helicopter? What are you talking about? That is where we're introduced to the fact that he was starting to shop for a company car that could not be more than $90,000. That's what he told me. I didn't see this in the memo, the amount of the car, but that's what he told me. So that's where you get the car shopping for the Range Rover, the Jaguar, the... Um, yeah, bro's not getting on a fucking helicopter with an Invicta watch, okay? They're not letting you get on the helicopter. You're gonna be like, take that shit off. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> yeah, he went he went and got the explosion sale in Victor Watch. Rock bottom price. <laughs> Bro, if your luxury watch is Invicta and you go to the website and it and it advertises the watch as rock bottom. Your man does not have cheddar. <laughs> yeah, he's got the popper prices. <laughs> popper prices. Uh, oh. the, the BMW, he even test drove a Mercedes uh, GLE, I believe. So I'm just trying to, again, bring some clarity to this so that way we all can... Bro had the fucking watch that you get from putting a quarter in to one of those like gumball machines and it drops it luckily if you're lucky enough. Understand what's going on and hopefully this just makes a lot more sense for everyone. All right. Part 31. Part 31. Who the fuck did I marry? So I found his mother's obituary online. It then told me um, it listed the broke less. listed his brother in Philly and his wife. It listed Legion. And then it said his wife. I took the name from the obituary and I did a Metro Atlanta court search with that name. I found a divorce record. <sighs> I found a divorce record with Legion and the same woman's name that was in the obituary. Um, in that divorce record, it looks like he's the one that filed for divorce. This would have been around 2016. This was after the mother's death. He filed for divorce. She was the respondent. I think that's the correct um, terminology. Both had a temporary protection order against each other. He had one against her. She had one against him. The divorce ended up getting um, granted, finalized. Then it looks like he went on his way. In the course of the search for her name, I discovered that at one point in time, the two of them had lived in Rhode Island. So that's the connection with Rhode Island because for the longest time, I could not figure out was, who lived in Rhode Island. Um, that's where that came from. The two of them, he and this woman, lived in Rhode Island um, several years prior or a few years prior. Um, I could not find the obituary for his dad 
um, I, I searched and I searched. I could not find the obituary for his father. For whatever reason, I just, and I knew the, I knew his grandmother's name. I just randomly decided to do a Google search of the grandmother's name. And still hasn't Googled arena football salary, by the way. Just saying, listen, I'm on your side, lady, but you still haven't Google searched arena football salary. It would have cleared shit up so quick for you from the jump. You would have been like, wait a minute. What you make McDonald's salaries? Like, what, what do you mean? You got offshore accounts. I'm just saying so close yet so far initially nothing came up because I was looking for the grandmother's name in Philly nothing came up I looked for the grandmother's name down here in Georgia found um a record but it was not um it wasn't quite clear what was clear was that she had died several years prior so what I found was um, a different website where it was like a like a legacy.com type thing. So I believe legacy.com holds old obituaries. Did a search for her name, found a match. That is when I discovered that she actually had passed away in July of 2008. Read the, read the caption of the obituary and verified that in fact it was his grandmother. She, because at the bottom of it, again, obituaries tell you a lot. It names um, who who she leaves to cherish her memory. So it lists all the different family members. It lists the brother in Philly. It lists Legion, no spouse, and then a brother in Nashville. Once again, it did not list the two sisters, Shantae and Kim. So I'm even more like, Because they okay, don't exist. Clearly. Because they're not real. They don't exist. Um, Something, you know, is, is, is up when it comes to Shantae and Kim. Because, but what I do know is that he has... Um, talk to them multiple times in front of me. So I'm not sure what I'm missing. Maybe some family feud happened. I, honestly, I don't know. So that is how I discovered that when he told me the grandmother died from COVID and he was crying, boohooing and all that shit, she actually had died in July of 2008. I found this out the same time that I found out about allegedly, and I say allegedly because I'll explain, allegedly the first um, wife, or at least what I think is the first wife. So while all this is going on, Legion is almost bedridden from what happened with his knee. And I need to take a moment to address this issue with the knee. Again, the story started, he hit his knee. Then it turned into, um, it was an old football injury. And this has happened before. He's going to the doctor. The doctor's telling him to ice it and to elevate it. He oh eventually my God. moves into the guest bedroom to be more comfortable. I'm going to make this statement. This is probably the only time I will make this statement. He was not lying about the injury that he had. I don't know where the injury came from, but what I do know was he was not lying in the fact that he was in pain. You could clearly see that he was in pain and the pain was becoming debilitating. Please understand what I'm saying. The pain was debilitating enough to where he was taking my pain meds from when I had um, the miscarriage. And then also it was hard for him to walk. He was not eating. So this is what made me believe this, whatever was going on with the knee, there was more to it because he was not eating. When I met this man, he was a size three X. At this point in time in May, he's down to a 2X. He is not exercising. He is not doing anything mobile. He's simply not eating. Yeah, so, he's addicted to Oxycontin is what's going on. That's it. Like he's just, he's just abusing opiates. There definitely was something going on, something concerning. Honestly, I thought it might have been cancer. But he kept saying, no, it's not that. It's from a football injury. It's from a football injury. I said to him, the next time you have a doctor's appointment, I want to go. It was that bad. Um... And he kept making excuses like, okay, fine, I'll make the appointment. Yeah, she should have taken a life insurance policy on him, not vice versa. I'll let you know what it is. Cool, I will take off work. I want to be at that doctor's appointment. Because whatever is going on with you is serious. To the point where you are losing weight rapidly within a two-week span. So now we can go ahead and enter into June. Um, when we enter into June... I have verified, read the divorce documents for not one wife, but two wives. I have called San Diego State, verified they have no record of him. He claims he was a private citizen. I don't believe that. They're saying there's no record of him. I have pulled his background. It is showing that you've lived in Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, and Georgia. When I look at the addresses, it is tied to at least two women, both of whom I'm showing divorce records on file that you had. Um, I've also verified that your grandmother actually died in 2008 and not in 2020 from COVID. I know all of this as I'm going into June. His birthday is June 17th. So all I've been doing is just trying to figure out. Remember, by the way, this point, she was supposed to go to London with this man. I'm so locked in. I'm so locked in. I'm dude. I'm fucking I'm remembering shit. I've forgotten formative memories from my own personal life at this point. OK, first kiss. 
gone. Why? Because I know about Legion's story. Okay? She's supposed to be going to fucking London. Staying at that expensive, bougie-ass hotel. Fuck! What is it? What is it I'm going to do? I spoke to the pastor and his wife. I believe it was actually the pastor I spoke to because I knew the pastor um, previously before he did our marriage counseling. And I told him what I found. Mine blown. Mine blown. Had no idea. He knew something was up. He knew that Legion was not really trying to make this marriage work. He had no idea all this was going on. So he asked me, are you wanting to stay or do you want to end the marriage? I said, oh, absolutely, I'm ending. See, this is what I mean. That's why you don't go to the pastor. Even then, the pastor's like, after you told me that this man is a fucking, like, expert level crook con man, do you still want to stay in the marriage? Like, what do you mean? Oh, hell yeah, I'm ending it. I, I, I, I have to. I have to end it. Um, I have no idea who that man is in my guest bedroom. Not to mention, on top of all of this, he had lied about the death of the ex-wife's daughter. Part 32. First of all, the pastor should have been like, bro's name is Legion. Get out. You know what I mean? He calls himself Legion. That's weird. That's weird. That's that's evil. That's demon shit. You know? What's happening? You, you don't get the biblical references here? What's, what's going on? Part 32. Who the fuck did I marry? All right. So, we're now in June. By this point in yeah, June... Yeah, pastor was like, oh, he's a Gemini, sweetie. <laughs> It was destined. It was destined for doom from the start. Um, I have been offered a new job, accepted it, put in my two week notice at my previous job and was going to be starting this, the, the new job later on in the month. So when he laughed where I told him I wanted to get a new job, that laughter fueled me to get a new job. <laughs> so here's what happened the beginning of June. He's at this point, he's completely bedridden. When I say completely bedridden, what I mean is, um, I'm trying to clarify this so it makes sense. From what I see, he is going to work, but he's calling out a lot more. Okay. So he had already left the condiment company. Okay. Here's the call is uh, obviously he doesn't work for, he's not the VP of mustard, but I assume he's doing something that's like a menial task. Like he, he, he has to be like on his legs and stuff. I think that's why he has a recurring injury. I think that's what's going on. I don't know if it's like construction. I, I'm thinking possibly a, I thought like distribution center, but. I was working for Apple. So he's calling out quite a bit because the pain is pretty bad. So he's don't spoil hardly it. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil hardly. it. Chatters don't spoil it. For example, it. if I were to say, oh, I ordered a 10 piece wings. He's eating two. And that's it. That's all I would see him eat. Well, I was going to work and coming home. The house was the, in the exact same. Damn, bro's not even eating the condiments. How can you keep the lie up that you're VP of mustard if you don't eat the condiments? Um, place that it was when I left. Nothing in the kitchen had been moved. Nothing in the refrigerator had been moved, which led me to believe that he had not left the bed from the time I left to go to work until the time I came home. At this point in time, he's drinking power aids like it's water. I mean, I'm buying cases of power aids. Um, and that seemed to be the only thing that he was taking in. So if he was a 3X when I met him, he's probably at a 1X, maybe a 2X, depending on the clothes. He's lost a lot of weight because he's not eating. So that's the reason why I say he wasn't faking whatever was going on. I think the knee, the issue with his knee was a symptom. That was not some football injury. That was not, um, oh, I hit it at work. It wasn't that. Something else was going on. I had kept asking him to, you know, let me know when you have a doctor's appointment. I'm gonna go with you. I'm gonna go with you. And um, he just kept saying the doctor, to, he's, he's calling the doctor and the doctor told him to just keep icing the knee. But I knew better. What was happening was I didn't care because of all the stuff I was finding out. So beginning of June, he is in a bed, um, sleep, and I get his phone. I ain't gonna lie. I, I got his phone. He had a work phone and he had um, a personal phone. It was the work phone that he had from the condiment company that apparently was never turned in. Follow me. It'll all come out. So he still had the work phone. It was deactivated. But he did not wipe the phone, if y'all know what I mean. Take all the data off. He did not do that. So I look through the phone, and I see this would have been text messages. Text messages between him and a woman named Peaches. I go back to the beginning of the text oh. messages. This is on the work phone. This is the beginning of June of 2021. I go back to the text messages on, excuse me, the beginning of the text messages between him. Georgia Peaches, baby. Oh, God. Georgia Peaches, baby. The best. And Peaches. Yes, that was her name. Peaches. 
As a hooker. I'm reading the thread because he's not that asleep. So I'm in the bathroom with door lock reading the thread. And what I can tell is that he met Peaches on POF. If you don't know what POF is, it is Plenty of Fish, a dating website. He met Peaches. This would I saw the messages in June. So he met Peaches around February. Um, Met Peaches from POF. And apparently Peaches um, was, you know... There's no nice way to say it. Apparently, Peaches was was a prostitute. So, be, the reason why I say that is because in the text messages, she's listing the prices. So, yes! he asked for a hand job. This is in the text messages. She told him it would be like forty dollars. He asked how much would it be for oral. She said, "Locked in, baby. Um, it would be sixty. Locked in. Fucking locked in." Forty dollars for a hand job in this economy? Shit is cheap. What the fuck's going on? God damn! Whoo! Oh! Oh my God! Are you not valued? <laughs> um, because it was sixteen eighty. One was the price with a condom. One was the price without one. So no messages after that. She sent a picture. He sent a picture. No messages after that. So in other words, these messages were not back to back every single day. There's breaks in between the messages. So like a message was in March. The next message is in April. A message in April. Next message is like two weeks later. So um, he's asking her the prices. Next message I see would have been from a few weeks prior to the date of this. So this was the beginning of June. This The message is from sometime oh, he beginning kept of May. Going. Where he is thanking her and says to her, you know, thank you so much. That was really great. I hope I can see you again. Wow. It's cordial. It's good to think, listen, all things considered, Legion, not a good guy, okay? But at least he's thanking his sex worker. You got to thank your sex workers, and you got to thank the bus driver, okay? Congratulations to Legion for at least keeping up that. <laughs> Bro, actually respect sex workers. Yeah, he's polite. He's a polite John. Then there's messages where she said, hey, basically, she was at a, she was at a new spot. She must have moved. So he said, okay, I'm going to come through. I'm going to come see you. He's asking her to confirm the address. He was like, is it the house with the brown trash can with a white car in the front? She says, yes. So I'm thinking he was actually in front of the house when he's texting these messages. Told you, told you, told you this motherfucker was cheating. Told you. Okay, there you go. Told you. Just, then again, he does whatever he does. And he sends her a message a few hours later saying, thank you. That was great. I'm reading all this. Um, and I will tell you guys something that you may or may not understand. Some women may or may not understand it. The cheating didn't even phase me. Didn't even phase me. I didn't cry. I didn't. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. At this point, it's like, this is a, the character that you married is not a real person. I feel like at this point, the cheating is just icing on the cake. This is not a toy for you, ma'am. <laughs> She's so um I did not feel like what did I do wrong I was relieved the reason why I was relieved is because up until this point I kind of struggled a little bit on whether or not God you know I know I know Lord you hate divorce but I can't I just I, I can't stay with a guy that lies so when I saw the cheating stuff I was like oh shoot thank you Jesus okay because I know my father in heaven is gonna forget the fact that I'm gonna divorce him for infidelity go ahead by the way yeah I am uh, I am now Reaffirm once again on my other lock where I say she is the most Japanese wife that you can find in Georgia. Down to the fact that he's like, yeah, well, you know, he's he's uh he's paying sex workers. <laughs> it's fine. I'll, I'll, Jesus will forgive me. Um, so I was I was I was relieved to be honest with you. Like, oh, okay, <laughs> I got grounds now, bitch. Um, that's how I felt. So saw the messages, forwarded the messages to my phone. Um, or excuse me, I took, I had to take my phone because the phone was deactivated. So I kind of had to do a little ghetto, hold the phone up, take my phone and take pictures of what I see on the phone um, so that I would have proof on my phone. Then I put the phone back and continued on. Now in the next part is the day that he gets kicked out. And I will tell y'all what happened. So there's more. Apparently there's another two hour here it is part 30 so we got more parts okay but here's what here's what i'm gonna watch this for as long as i can it's boys night with my brother but i'm fucking i'm so invested i'm not gonna end it yet 
But I will eventually. You, USPS Tuan. Three, who the fuck did I marry? June 17th, 2021. So, you guys have been on this ride. You now know exactly what information I did have. The morning of June 17th, which was his birthday. Um, he was in the bed as usual. Power aid bottles all over the place because I wasn't in the mood to clean. Um, and so I went in his room. He was awake. He was watching YouTube on his cell phone. He watched a lot of YouTube, watching um, these two guys that always were fixing Jeeps on YouTube. Um, and if I saw them, I would know exactly who they are, but I can't remember their name. It's a popular show on YouTube. Anyway, so I go in there and I, I just calmly sit on the edge of the bed and I was like, can we talk? And he was like, yeah, what's up? I said to him, I said, Legion. Obviously I called him his name. Legion. I said, I'm gonna ask you something. I just want you to be honest with me. So he starts, I can already see in his eyes, he's about to get defensive. And I was like, calm. Because this, this is the tone I had. Calm. I said, um, you never went to San Diego State, did you? He rolls his eyes and he's like, I already, I said, calm down. Watch your tone. <laughs> I said, you never went to San Diego State. I said, you never lived in California, did you? And he said, of course I lived in California. He's like, I fucking showed you the house I had in California. He said, I told you about San Diego State. I was a private citizen. My dad paid for me to be a private citizen. Private citizen. Said, he really thought that narrative was good. He's not even expert level at lying, dude. He's like fucking failing charisma checks. He's just like not good. Like she had no defenses for her persuasive for his persuasive skills. Okay. Because he wasn't even trying that hard. He was like, oh yeah, I'm a private citizen. The fuck? Okay. I said I called San Diego State. And he looked at me. His eyes were like empty. Like he wasn't shocked. He wasn't like, oh my God. He was just more like, okay. I said they have no record of you. I said they have no record because you never went. You never been to California. So at this point, I'm very calm and I'm just stating. I said, You never been to California. I said, I bet you've only lived in Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Rhode Island. At this point, now there's there's a little motion behind the eyes. And I said, I don't think that this is going to work. And he said, What, the marriage? He was like, So what you saying? You you don't want to be married to me anymore? And I said, I don't want to be married to you anymore. I said, We need to go our separate ways. We tried, but we need to go our separate ways. The way that I'm talking to you all is exactly how I was talking to him. Um, and so he was like, that's not what marriage is. Marriage is, you know, you you you have to fight for what you want. I said, I don't want this. And I don't want to fight for it. You have said, to fight you, for it? I don't want this. <laughs> Bro, you're a bum. Fight for what? Your broke boy Invicta watches? And your bum ass knee? The fuck out of here, dude. You ain't Derrick Rose. Get the fuck out of here, bum. And so he was like, I'm not giving up on the two of us. I said, you don't have a choice. I said, I think that you should call your brother or your sister now and i think that you need to pack a bag and i think you need to get the fuck out of my house and he was like you know i don't really have time for this you know i don't feel well. i said i don't care you need to get out of my house again the way I'm, i know y'all are gonna be like she's so dramatic and in real i am actually a very dramatic person but the way that i'm talking to you guys on this video is exactly how i was talking to him in the beginning of how this started so i said you need to call your brother um or call your sister because she's, she's in douglasville and you need to go stay there you need to get out of this house today She's got like addresses, social security numbers. She's like, this is the address that you need to go to. Okay. Here's a, here's a Greyhound bus ticket that I got for you. Get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> she knows. She knows now. She knows everything. Basically what happened was um, at first he refused. He wasn't moving fast enough for me. Um, and so he called his aunt and his aunt was on speakerphone. Let me preface that. She was on speakerphone. And so she was like, you know, what's going on? And he was like, my wife don't want me no more. She she claimed that I'd be lying to her. I ain't never lied to her. When I heard this, what's the analogy I can give y'all? When I heard him say to his aunt, I ain't never lied to her before. Something in me snapped. The best analogy I can give you. Do y'all remember that movie, Carrie? When she was at the prom and everyone was laughing at her. Um, the blood had, had fallen down on her. And there was a moment where her eyes just went wild. And you knew something was about to happen. You just didn't know what but y'all had pushed her too far. When he said to his aunt, I ain't never lied to her. I snapped. The calmness left. The amount of rage that was in me. I could have fought every member of the Kansas City Chiefs and beat every last one of their asses. <laughs> I could have fought every member of the Atlanta Falcons and beat every last one of their asses. I'm not a violent person, but I was, I was, the, I was there. That statement, I ain't never lied to her, took me there. I went off. I, I went off. I went off so bad that I, first of all, every part of me was shaking. I called my mom. My mom was on speakerphone and she's in Arkansas. My mom's a praying woman. I was cussing like a sailor. 
my mom finally said, um, you know, put him on the phone. So I gave him the phone and I'm standing there and I'm looking around the room. It's, it's the scene that I remember is the Angela Bassett scene in Waiting to Exhale when her eyes are darting around the room right before she grabs everything to put it in the car to set it on fire. I was more so looking at what weapons were in the room, the lamp, the TV, the dresser. <laughs> I was, I was looking, I mean, I was, while she was talking to him, my eyes were darting around the room because if he did not get his ass out and get his shit and get up out of my house, um, it, it was, it was going to be bad. If I've never in my life been on TikTok and said, thank you, had it not been for the blood, y'all, I, I, I know this is going to sound dramatic. I know this is going to sound like, girl, you, you so funny. You don't understand. Had it not been for the Lord on my side, had it not been for the fact that I know I got a praying mother. I know I had a praying aunt. I know I've had a praying grandmother in heaven because I'm telling you, I clearly saw what was getting ready to happen had he not gotten up, got his shit and got out of my house. So I'm trying to calmly say this because... I'm trying to calmly tell this story because the rage had taken over me. The pure, unadulterated rage that I felt when he said to his aunt, I ain't never lied to her after I had discovered only 2% of the lies at that point. Just 2%. So it was enough for me to be like, you know. There's 98% more lies after this? Are you freaking, what the hell? There's, I mean, I know there's two hours and 39 more minutes of this, but God damn, dude. You need to get your stuff and go. <laughs> So my mother gets on the phone and she says to him, you know, Legion, she called him by name. Um, she said, I am not there to control my daughter. She said, in the name of Jesus, get your stuff and get out of that house because I think she might kill you. Get out of the house. She's on my phone. His aunt is on his phone. His aunt said, nephew, come home. Home for her was Philly. She said, I'll send you money. Come home. Leave that house right now, she said, because I think that that woman is about to kill you. Let's go. Let's just go to part 34. Let's all just take a deep breath. Part 34. Dude, I love that there's shadows in here that know what's going on. They go, big reveal on family front incoming. Okay, everybody chill. No spoilers. Who the fuck did I marry? So the aunt told him, I'll send you money. Come home. I'm, I'm yelling in the background, by the way. I'm not standing there calmly. I'm yelling. I said, oh, he got money. Yeah, you got money. You got money in that offshore account, right? You got money in that Chase account. You got money to drive. So do what you got to do. I, I told him, and I'm not going to repeat some of the stuff I said because my mom might see this TikTok. But um, I did tell him, I was like, if you don't get out of this house, you gonna, actually what I said was, you have two options. You're going to leave this house voluntarily. Or you gonna leave this house involuntarily? And he tried to get a little—he tried to get a little nook if you buck. He tried, and that's when he was—he was still on the bed, still laying in the bed. And he was just like, "You ain't gonna do shit. Like, don't talk to me. Like, you don't lost your fucking mind." Da, da, da. And I calmly got close to him. I got like this close, and I literally said, "I will beat you like the bitch you are. I dare you to try me." I said, "I will literally beat you like the male bitch you are." And so when I yeah, dude, it's because he's in bed, dude, six foot four with a bum knee. And all of a sudden, it doesn't work no more. The six foot four confidence went away because when he's laying in bed, he's like four foot tall max. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's just, he's as tall as the bed at that point. That's crazy. When I said that, his eyes were like, I said, I'm not even playing. Because at this point, I'm, I'm, I'm rocking like back and forth. Y'all, again, I'm not some hardened tight chick. I'm not. I want the soft lifestyle. But I have been pushed to the point. So I'm rocking. I'm walking back. I'm pacing. So finally, his aunt was able to get through to him. I had called my, aunt, my mother, my aunt. I had called the pastor. I had called all these people. Because I did know that I was in a very dangerous place. Not because I'm scared of him. At this point, I was scared of me. I don't know if this has ever happened to someone where you know your own, you know yourself. You know that... You got a line. I was over that line. So I'm not going to lie. Her faith in the Lord is very powerful. Cause like, I don't understand that. I've never been a particularly religious person, but after all of these trials and tribulations, I would have been like this Lord stuff. Maybe, you know, the, the, the Christian conservatism angle would have probably jumped out of my body. It would have left my soul at that point. You know what I mean? It's just crazy. It's crazy that she's still, she's still on that. I had enough wherewithal to be like, okay, okay. You probably gonna go to jail today. You probably gonna go to jail. Um, you probably gonna have th that job in the morning. Like I, I was there. And again, this is not to sound bragging at all. This was, this was a woman who I, I could not believe that even with the, the attempt of me trying to give him one last opportunity to tell me the truth, he still lied in my face. I, I was at my edge. So I pulled, I yanked the covers back and um, I told him, I was like, get up, you know, get, get the fuck out of my house. Again, I'm saying it calmly on here. It was nothing calm in the house when this happened. So I'm throwing stuff, throwing stuff up against the wall. Um, I, I remember I looked at the lamp. He looked, he looked at me looking at the lamp. And I think that's, I think something in him 
realized, okay, I, I, yeah, I'm in pain, but if I don't get up, she, she's going to do something with that lamp. So he does get up. He is still on the phone with the aunt because the aunt was pretty much like, keep me on the phone. She did not want him to hang up. <sighs> he throws some stuff together. Again, keep in mind, he has all his stuff in the house. So he basically packed like two bags worth of clothes. Um, and he's limping around and I'm standing in the hallway watching him like a probation officer. So he's limping around. Um, and I'm looking at the condition of the bedroom. This is when I noticed Legion have been semi bedridden. Remember I told y'all that because the knee and other stuff. I look at these bottles of Powerade because he had been drinking Powerade so much at this point. He was not getting up to go to the bathroom. He was drinking the Powerade and then using the empty bottles to pee in. Okay. He definitely is so like, there was about six bottles. Around the bed. and I was like, addicted what is this? to drugs for because sure. Again, I hadn't really been going in that room. I was busy being CIA, FBI, and Homeland Security for the past two weeks. So I was like, what is this? He was like, I'm gonna throw it out. He grabbed the trash bag, put the bottles in there, and I said, what are in those bottles? I said, tell me. And I said, I think I started like twitching. Like, tell me, there that is not piss in those bottles. He was like, I couldn't make it to the bathroom. I was in too much pain. So at this point, I'm even more like, yeah, get the fuck out, get out, um, get out of my house. Dude, he's piss maxing. House. So. I helped him while he was packing his bags. I went downstairs. I took the house key off of his keys. Um. I went back upstairs. He had his two bags. I grabbed the two bags. Yes, I did. I grabbed the two bags. Oh, you got to call a locksmith. No way. You got to call a locksmith. You got to change up every, maybe even move at that point. He's coming back. Ain't no way. You think he only has one set of keys? No shot. I had opened up the garage. I had already popped the trunk for his car and threw the bags in the car. I did that because I was like, you're getting out of this house. You're getting out of this house today. You can't come back. You can't come back ever. So I, he, it took him about... About two hours um, from the time of I will beat you like the bitch you are for him to actually leave the house. Again, I'm calm telling you all this story. It was not calm in the house. So he eventually puts on some sweatpants. Now I can fiz I can really see how much weight he's lost. But he puts on some sweatpants. He puts on a shirt. He's limping down. He's like, you really going to kick me out on my birthday? I just looked at him. I just looked at him. Opened the door. He went through the like even the birthday is fake raj got into his car called you know his aunt was still on the phone and she was like i'm gonna send you some money and, the, and that's the part yeah, happy birthday like, bitch <laughs> clearly he has the money like you ain't gotta send him money he doesn't even have to go to philly he can just go get a hotel for now i don't care what he does he's just gotta leave his house so he ends up getting in the car driving off my mom calls and she's just like you know is he still there i said no um like, i had not told her what all he had lied about even in the midst of me being angry and me going off i never told him that i spoke to the ex-wife i never told him i knew he was lying about the stepdaughter because then it would've, he would have asked how, you know, what made you say that? Um, so I did keep my word. I never told, I never told him I spoke to her. So he eventually left. I text a friend of mine. I text my landlord. I said, I have an emergency. I need to know if it is okay to get the locks changed. Landlord was like, that's fine. Um, my landlord was super cool. Shout out to Mr. Patel. Um, I went to Home Depot, bought brand new locks, text my, text a friend of mine, asked him, when you get off work, can you please come by my house? I need the locks changed today. So he was like, oh, okay, what's going on? I said, I'll explain it later. So to give you a timeline of June 17th, when I asked him about San Diego State and I told him that I know you've never even been to California, that was about 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. By the time he left the house, it was maybe going on noon, 1 o'clock. So this happened pretty quickly. Um, if, you're at, if you're wondering, why did you even ask him? It I, I already knew that I wanted out. I knew that. But for some reason, a part of me was like, let's just see if he'll be honest just one last time. No. And it sent me into a rage. And then he lied to his aunt saying, I ain't never lied to her. And that sent me over the edge. Um, so by one o'clock, by one thirty, he was gone. By two thirty, um, I had done a pretty good job of cleaning up the, the bedroom. He had thrown away the Powerade bottles, um, so I didn't have to touch those. I stripped the sheets. Anything that he touched in that bedroom, I stripped the sheets, threw them in the trash bag, threw them out in the trash can. And so it, most of this was adrenaline, adrenaline switch because I hate packing, I hate doing all that stuff. I went on Amazon, I ordered oversized large tote bags because I was packing up all his shit. Part thirty-five. Who the fuck did I marry? So I packed up all his stuff. Okay. The reason why I packed up all his stuff is because so I had a three bedroom, two and a half bath town home. One room was the guest room. Obviously there was a master bedroom. And then we had a TV room that he had made like his Philadelphia Eagles man cave. I was going to put everything that belonged to him, pack it up and Red put flag, it in Eagles the TV fan. room because the plan should have been that he's going to come back and get all his stuff. Okay. So that's why I did it. Um, and honestly, it just felt good <laughs> to pack up his stuff and, and go through it freely because when he packed in a hurry, he left obviously really important things. He left all his Invicta watches. He left all his WWE championship belts. No, not his Invicta watches. That's got to be a cool $113 for eight. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, not his valuable possessions. No. My man had WWE belts and Invicta watches. He's literally a 14-year-old. Okay? This is crazy.
Yo, he got a good rock bottom deal on Invicta.com. If you know anything about WWE Championship belts, you know those things are expensive. He left all his Jordans. He left um, suits. He left uh, Cole Haan shoes. He left all that because he it was such a hurry for him to leave. So all that was still in my house. Um, so around 2.30, I think I, I wasn't even at a place where I could start crying. I was just too angry, still shaking, packing everything up, packing everything up. One of the things that he left um, is a photo album with all the pictures of his mom and dad and his siblings growing up. Now, I had the thought of I was going to have a burn party and I was going to put it on Facebook Live. I was going to burn it with my friends and drink and dance and play music. But um, it's his deceased parents. I do have a heart. So I put that somewhere special, meaning I put it up in the closet. Um, he t had told me that he was going to come back and get his stuff. And so I just did not, I, I didn't throw anything out unless it was like I, something I knew was trash. Other than that, I put everything up and kept it, you know, in the TV room. So that's June 17th. Also on June 17th, I had already ordered his birthday cake. I had ordered the birthday cake like the end of May because it was like a special birthday cake. So I also had to go get the birthday cake <laughs> from the bakery in East Point. Um, and I took it to my family's house and we ate it. Yes, I had left the house, um, went to my family's house, filled them in, my aunt, my little cousin, and my grandfather because my mom was in Arkansas. So I went over to their house, filled them in on what was going on. They could not believe it. Although my grandfather then told me, he said, he ain't look like he was a football player. He was like, I didn't want to say nothing, but he ain't look like he was a football player. <laughs> Gotta love grandparents. Um, so we ate his birthday cake. Went back home. Um, the friend that I had called came, changed all the locks. Changed. I changed the security codes. Um, effectively, he would not have been able to get in that house. So that is what happened on June 17th. So now we can fast forward. He he would text me and he would call me that he got to Philly. Apparently, he drove through. He left Georgia and immediately went to Philly. So he immediately went to Philly. Um, and he did text me and said that he made it to Philly. And he was staying at his aunt's house. I know that this is a short part. That's okay. Because what we're doing now is... I went through how we met. I went through how we dated. I went through how we got married. Um, now I'm taking you all to June 17th. The week after June 17th, he's in Philly. He still would call me. He still would um, text me. The conversations we were having the week after June 17th, so this would be June 18th up to the 24th. The conversations we were having had to do with divorce. So who's going to file? And he was like, well, I don't want a divorce. I'm going to fight you on it. Are you? Really? Are you going to fight me on the divorce? Um, I didn't know anything about filing for divorce. I don't think it works that way. Also, why is she still talking to him? I just don't understand. Like, just cut it. Cut him out of the life completely. I'm just saying. It's like... What is this? Arena football salary? <laughs> Interest is peaking right now, boys. Interest is off the charts right now for arena football salaries. Oh, but I refuse to stay in a place of ignorance. So I um, went online. There's a website that you can go to where you pay like a $200, $239 fee. And you fill out basic information and you choose your state, you choose your state and they will um, process, not process, but they will make all your documents. All you got to do is print it out and take it to the court. And it is step by step directions. We didn't have any property with each other. We didn't have any kids with each other. So by the state of Georgia's standards, this should be an uncontested divorce. So the conversation that last week, the week of June 18th to the 24th was about divorce. What stuff do you want to keep? Well, I'm going to come and get all my stuff. I just don't understand why you couldn't talk to me about it. I said, there's no room for talking because you've been lying to me since day one. Um, but even still, keep in mind, as of June 17th, June 18th, June 19th, I did not know what I know now. So the lies were really only like 5% of the whole story. So June 24th or 25th is when I had printed my documents. <laughs> and I'm laughing because at this point in time, I've read y'all's comments about how that man will print out stuff. I know. But um, I used the website, typed all my stuff in, got my documents. And then I went, um, I took a day off from the job because I was getting ready to transition into the new job. So I left work early, went to the courthouse and filed for divorce. I filed, I paid. Um, and then I already had the documents where he would have needed to sign so that um, it could then be entered into for a divorce settlement agreement. So going into part 36 or 35, I know there's so many parts, going into the next part. She needs to get those Invicta watches. She needs to fight tooth and nail for the Invicta watches. She retains the Hassan Abbey subscription so she can avoid the ad breaks at the top of the hour. You know what I'm saying? Like, she needs to. At the top of the hour, there is a three minute ad break for those of you who aren't married to her and don't have a joint Twitch account watching 
And you will see a three minute ad break at the top of the hour. Sorry. Those watches pay for that seven hundred thousand dollar house. Oh my god, are you still watching it? Yes, I'm still watching it. Uh, dude, it's too compelling. Thank you, anonymous gifter. Thank you, Trev Tennessee, for the five get the subs. There's, no, I mean, it's just so, so much, so much happened. She found out that he was like cheating on her with a prostitute from like the beginning of the relationship almost. Or the beginning of marriage, I think. Um, he. I think we suspect he's like he has a crippling opiate addiction and it's like whoa whoa don't do that I don't want her thinking that's a chew toy yeah and she's she's filing for divorce is where I can tell you guys what happened with him because he drove to Philly I gotta and pee. he was in Philly for about a week maybe three to four days then I get a message on Facebook Messenger from a woman claiming to be his cousin. I can't go pee. God damn it. Oh, Jesus. So the cousin tells me, actually, I can tell y'all. So the cousin tells me that he's there. He's telling the family that I kicked him out. He's telling the family that I kicked him out after he walked in on me having an affair. That I stole his money and I then kicked him out. Again? And the man I was having an affair with, he said, was a law enforcement officer who used his. This guy is a one trick pony, man. He just keeps. He just keeps doing the same thing. Anywhere he goes, he's like, man, it's so crazy that my fucking ex-wife cheated on me. Duty weapon to threaten him to get out the house. This is what he told his family. And the cousin was reaching out to me. She found my, she found me through a search on Facebook and was reaching out to me because she's like, we know he lies. So I'm just trying to figure out what, like, is this true? Because he's up here asking us for money, asking to stay on oh, our couches. Oh, no. Like, his family is like this bum. This fucking... Dumbass, he's like constantly lying. We hate him. What's what's going on? Then she explained to me, we didn't even know he got married. So this is the first time we're hearing about you. What do you mean you didn't know he got married? He talks to his brother every day. She said, who told you that? I said, I've heard him talk to his brother every day. All his brothers. She said, all his brothers? How many brothers do you think he has? I said, he has four brothers. I named them. She said, he has two brothers. She got. She said, he has the twin and he has the older brother. I said, twin? Who is the twin? Oh, are you for fucking real? There's a twin? Yo! Yo! Oh my God. Oh, it was so worth not pissing for this. Fuck. Oh, be for fucking real. This is literally a movie. I can't deal with this. What the fuck? Bro. Oh my God. There's not one Gemini. There's two Geminis. You're hiding a twin. I already ran the top of the hour ad break, bitch. You missed it next part where we discover the real family tree part 36 who the fuck did i marry the family tree please fasten your seatbelts and put the tray tables in the upright position in order all right the cousin i'm not gonna name her the cousin had reached out to me on facebook asked me to please give her a call so this conversation was on the phone yes i was actually speaking to her she informs me again about the whole he's up there he's telling everyone that he walked in on me cheating on him it was with a law enforcement officer and that the law enforcement officer um, used his duty weapon to threaten him to get him out of the house. The reason why I'm, I'm particularly mentioning the fact that he said it was law enforcement is because he was trying to get a family member, like one of his cousins, to call the agency of the law enforcement officer and file a complaint, which in hopes would then start an internal affairs investigation. He's so dumb. He's like, that. that's not how this would work. First of all, thin blue line, that shit's not going to work at all, okay? They're not going to give a fuck. Secondly, even if they were to conduct an investigation against who? You're just going to make up a guy? You're going to make up a... Okay. Guy's being so cute. She's pushing her toy onto my lap. Okay, okay. Chill. Oh, man. Go get it. Yeah. 
So female cousins on the phone with me. She's telling me everything that he is telling them. She's like, look, we know he's a liar. We don't fuck with him. We, he's been a liar since a kid, but he's also family. She said, we didn't know at all who you are. So I thought that that was interesting because I was like, you didn't know who I was, but his brother knew who I was. And so again, that's when I said to her that, um, I was like, I've talked, you know, he's talked to his brother every day. So like, why wouldn't the brother tell y'all that he had gotten married? And so she said, what brother? And so I told her the brother's name and she said, he told you that? I said he was having the phone calls in front Robin. of me. So at this point, what the cousin said was, she was like, okay, I'm going to confirm that with him. She was like, he lives up the street, so I'm going to just confirm that with him. She was like, because I'm pretty sure that they, that they have been beefing for a while. I was like, I can only tell you what I saw, what I heard. That's that's all I can say. So then when she asked me about, well, how many brothers do you think he has? And I said, he has four brothers. Again, I listed all of them. This woman was like, he has two brothers. She said he has the twin, and, she, and he has the older brother, the one that he was on the phone with every morning, blah, blah, blah, blah, blah. I said, twin? Who's the twin? <sighs> So this is where she explained to me. She said, the parents, mom and dad, had the older brother. The um, older brother is uh, about five or six years older than Legion. Legion and the younger brother who lives in Nashville, they are twins. So when he kept saying the younger brother, my younger brother, by two years, it's his older brother by 20 minutes. They are twins. I have seen a picture of this brother. Yes, they do very much look alike, but they, I didn't know they were twins. It doesn't even matter. I didn't know they were twins, um, but definitely they had the same mom and dad. So she was like, no, that he's older. he's older than Legion by 20 minutes. They're twins. She said, so the parents had three boys brother in Philly, the older brother, and the twins. She was like, who the hell are these sisters that you're talking about? So I tell her, I was like, Shantae and Kim. <sighs> she said, I don't know who Shantae is. She said, Kim is my daughter. Kim is not his sister. Kim is my daughter. And she said, that's his cousin. She was like, and they haven't spoken in about 20 years. So no, that's not his sister. He does not have any sisters. And I said, well, then what about the other two brothers? She was like, what other two brothers? I said, the brothers from his dad. She was like, you mean to tell me <laughs> this man is going around telling people, I know somebody's gonna quote Nicki Minaj lying on your dad, mama, but Try not to. Um, she said, you mean to tell me this man is walking around lying on his dad, saying that his dad had kids outside of his mom? And I kind of stuttered like, yeah. She's like, he does not. She said, I have no idea who those two men are. She said, those are not his brothers. But if y'all remember, I've met those two. And he introduced them as, you know, man, this is my, this is my brother uh, John. This is my brother Matt, you know, type thing. And so they both were like, oh, my sister is good to meet you. It's good to meet you. Remember that because obviously I do eventually talk to those two men again. So she says to me, the family tree is mom and dad, the three sons. She was like, there are no sisters. She said, I don't have a clue who Shantae is. She said, Kim is my daughter, so that's just their cousin. But again, they ain't spoken 20 years. I said, okay, and then there was the grandmother. She said, yeah, she named the grandmother. She was like, yeah, she died in like 2008. I said, yeah, he told me that she died in 2020. And that, you know, all of you were coming down for the no, memorial service. Said, and she's just like, she died in 2008. 2008. I said, then there was the uncle who also died from COVID. She was like, which uncle is that? I told her the name. She said, he's been dead since like, shit, 2010. I said, okay, what about the cousin nicknamed Junebug? Everybody got to, if, if you're not African-American, we all know a Junebug somewhere. Um, and she just was like, oh yeah, you know, you know, cousin Junebug. She was like, man, that's, that's crazy what happened to him. And I was like, what, you, what, what do you mean what happened to him? Because I know he has talked to his cousin Junebug on the phone, like, few, you know, a few months prior. He was like, and so she said to me, she said, yeah, he had passed away in like 2016. So this is now three people that she's naming that I recall him having either a story about or a phone call with. And she's telling me that they are all passed away. So this is when the conversation kind of changes and she's like, you know what? She said, let me speak to the older brother um, because he probably wants to talk to you. She's like, you probably should talk to him and a lot of your answers, a lot of your questions will get answered. She was like, this dude's been lying ever since he was a kid. She was like, oh, she said, literally, we don't fuck with him. I remember her saying that verbatim. She was so adamant. She was like, and when he showed up here out the blue talking about how his wife cheated on him with a law enforcement officer and how the guy took his gun out and threatened him to leave the house. She was like, we knew something was up. She was like, that's why I had to find out who you were and reach out to you and find out the truth. I said, there was no other guy. There was no law enforcement officer. And she was like, yeah, because he was telling us where to do work and how we should go ahead and file, like help him file a complaint so that this dude could lose his job. I said, there is no other person. I said, I kicked him out. That was me, all by myself. No gun, just my fist. Um, and so she said, you know, he tell, he's telling us that he had gotten married. And then she was like, apparently y'all had a baby. So she was like, so you got a kid with him? So I had explained to her. I said, no, I said I had a miscarriage back in July or excuse me, back in June of 2020. And I had to have surgery in July. So she was just like, girl. So she started like really being encouraging and was saying, you dodged a bullet, honey. She was like, I don't wish this. She's like, I know he's my family, but I don't saying. wish him on no woman. So we, we've had each other's number. She was like, if you need anything, please feel free to call me. She was like, I've had my own issues with him. I've had my own issues in life. But she was like, get your divorce and be done with him. Then she said, I'm going to put you in contact with the older brother. The next part is me finally talking to the older brother that he had been talking to every morning. Part 37, who the fuck did I marry? So at this point in time, I have filed for divorce. Um, I paid for the filing fee. I'm representing myself uh, pro se, and it should be an uncontested divorce. During this time, Legion had driven to Philly, lied to his family, and said I had cheated on him, um, that he caught me, and that the guy I cheated on him with was a law enforcement officer who used his gun to threaten him to get out of the house. None of that was true. 
at some point while he was in Philly, he ran out of options in terms of where he could stay. Family members did not want him to stay with them. Um, apparently a lot of bridges were burned according to the female cousin I had talked to on the phone. So he left Philly, left Philly and went to Augusta. Yes, what you were hearing is correct. He drove from Georgia to Philly, stayed in Philly for about three, four days, left Philly, drove back to Georgia, went to Augusta. Keep in mind, if you have lost your notes at this point, he was raised in Philly and did high school in Augusta before he went to California. So he has family in Augusta. So at this point, he's on his way to Augusta to stay with a new set of people. The reason why this is important is because what I have is a divorce settlement agreement. That divorce settlement agreement has to be signed by the two of us, where we are basically telling the court, look, this is what he's keeping, this is what I'm keeping. I need his signature. You don't want me to do. Let me repeat that. I need his signature, because I wanted a very quick and painless divorce, as much as it could be. So by this time, this is now around June 25th. So around June 25th, he's now in Augusta. He had left the house June 17th. So between June 17th and June 24th is the trip to Philly, then leaving Philly, coming to Augusta. Um, my aunt and my little cousin get in the car with me <laughs> and I drive to Augusta with a, with a rag on my head, some sweatpants and a tank top because it's July, so it's hot. Um, but we ride to Augusta. I had spoken to him. I had said, you know, Thanks. I just need you to sign this piece of paper. And he was like, you know, I'll, I'll get to it when I get to it. No, no, no. We're going to get to it. Yeah, honestly, just forge it. Like, he's such a serial liar and a con man that, like, who's going to believe him when he says he didn't actually sign it? You know what I mean? Just fake it. Who gives a fuck? YOLO. Everyone's on board. The fucking, the judge is going to be watching this shit, like the TikTok series. Everyone's invested. Rank them, Legion, West Dome, Caleb, Tinder, Swindler. I would say Legion is top. Especially because, like, Tinder, Swindler at least is, like, like, he had a purpose. Like, he had a motivation. He was an international con man. West Dome, Caleb is not even a thing. Like, it's just, he didn't even do nothing. <clears throat> Legion just does it for the... For the game, like he just, he, that's what makes it real weird. Le you know what it is? Legion is like, um, Legion is like the real scary serial killer, right? Like the type of dude that you don't know. Like a lot of murders, there's like a motivation, but the guy you got to look out for, the type of murderer that like really breaks your brain is the guy who just like walks into a random place, walks into a random house and starts chopping motherfuckers. Like. He's basically doing that, but instead of chopping people, he's just chopping hearts. It doesn't even make sense. Like, there's no rhyme or reason for him to be acting this way. If Legion lied on the marriage license and the marriage is invalid and can just be annulled, Yeah. All right. This is where we're going to end it for now. I'm going to bookend it. I want to, we're, I, I'm not, I'm so invested in this, but I have my buddy is here. My brother is here. I got to spend time with them. I feel bad. I will finish this tomorrow. Tomorrow, I also have, uh, tomorrow, I also turn emo for those of you who don't know. Uh, that's going to be fun. We've got a big banger of a stream lined up. Holy fuck. That's just, I don't even know. I'm going to be thinking about this a lot. Uh, part 37 is where we stopped. And I don't want you motherfuckers to go and watch it and then come in here with a whole bunch of random nonsense, spoiling this shit up. No, I'm not going to do crime watch right now, Chatter. What the fuck's wrong with you? I'm going to bed. No, I'm not going to bed, but. But anyway, I love you guys. And what a journey this has been tonight, huh? What a journey this has been, huh? Anyway, love you all. And I will see you tomorrow, okay? Peace. So people hate 
Sunny Los Angeles, California says her song. The starlight to the starlight to the dark it just begun. Street. 